Hey guys, welcome to this video and today we're gonna cover all of the topics that you should know in JavaScript. This tutorial is fully beginner friendly and I'm going to go in the full advanced. I'm not going to talk about the topics that you will never need in JavaScript but I'm only going to mention those topics that you will be day you, you know uh, work, that you will be working daily or any in any projects so mostly we're gonna be talking about those things and I'm not gonna mention every single function every single thing because that's like you know reading reading a book that doesn't make sense well you only need to get to know about the functions that you will probably want only when you have to you can Google search them by yourself and we will get started in the course because we don't want to waste much of a time so here are a few things that we will be covering through this video we're gonna talk about the variables and a few prototypes and the prototypes are probably a uh, few you know kind of like a JavaScript inbuilt functions that helps us to convert a str uh, you know, string to number or a uh, number to string and uh, many more things like that and then we have the selectors that helps us to manipulate our HTML or we can say manipulate our DOM we can you know use JavaScript and uh, we can uh, access the HTML elements and then we have the loops we have so many loops do while loop while loops for loops for each loops and then we have arrays you're going to be using working with arrays a lot of times in the while well, your website development journey so we're gonna we will be knowing about arrays also then we have the api integration so this is the important parts that you need to know about in the javascript because in the api integration is must this is you what we use to uh, you know have a to post uh, you know respond to post data to the server or get data from any server or any website or any anything like that we're going to be using learning fetch how to use the fetch uh, method in javascript we will not be using xgos or xhs because those were all methods now we are going to fetch also we will be talking about the event listeners that's going to help you make your website actually work that means if you click on a button it's going to do anything and only by having the event listener function there so it's going to like email on add event listener on button and when someone clicks on this do this when someone hover over this thing do this when someone has the mouse out of the uh, website do this you can do something like that and then we have functions functions are not not more of a thing but they just make our work much more cleaner and much more easier the thing about we're gonna put every single thing on a single you know we're gonna define every single thing on a single thing we're gonna do every single thing uh, without any function like normally that code is going to be very much complicated and you will not have much of much of a choices to do much money of the things so that's where functions come in place also functions let you to use async uh, to uh, get the async uh, power what do you mean by async uh, let's uh, suppose that you're using the fetch function to get some data from the server but the server takes six seconds to return you any data and uh, your when the go to when you go to open a website all of the JavaScript code is read you know uh, straight from up to down they will not wait for any uh, for anything to load if there is no response uh, when they are reading the JavaScript lines uh, they will just show you uh, error or promise pending something like that so what we have to do in that case we will be using async await async await probably says the javascript wait until this function is not loaded and what we can do we can use async await or we can also call them as like a uh, callback functions if this thing has not yet loaded don't load this thing we can do something like that and then we will we will be learning about local storage and uh, we can also say we there is also another thing called a cookie we will not be learning about cookie right now and uh, because I have mentioned a video about SQLI and uh, no JavaScript but we will be using local storage so local storage is used as a website's brain like a, as a mem website memory storage so in the local storage you can stay store something like you know uh, if a user has registered has logged in in the website when he comes back to the website he should not you should not ask him to log in again you should store that thing in the local storage we can store it like you know user has uh, law has logged in is equal to true so every time user comes back to the website it should be logged in 
and you also can make something like you know note taker website so the user is going to put any notes in the website and then what's going to happen if he closes the browser if he comes back to your website the notes will still be there because they will be saved in the local storage and the data will not go anywhere unless until the user will not clear his browser history and uh, that's where it goes and the es6 es6 uh, for now the javascript has reached a high level but there's not much of a change es6 was a good change and uh, what we got in the es6 we got these spread operators spread spread operators that means basically dealing with the arrays and it helps us a lot uh, while writing array uh, things you know related to the arrays so it's just related to the arrays stuff and then we have css what do we mean by css using javascript you can also change your css properties like if user is not logged in please make the balance display to none or if he's logged in please make the display uh, to block or flex or whatever you want to do and then at the end we have attributes so attributes are like you know you can access attributes of any elements like elements value is equal to stuff you can access the value of the element or the class of the element or the id of the element or so many more things and uh, that's all we're going to be covering throughout this series throughout this video this is going to be a crash video but, uh, but i promise you guys this is all you have to know while you're working with javascript so without wasting time anymore let's get started with this video so what are we, we are going to do we're going to make a new file new folder called uh learning javascript so let me put this thing in the middle all right let me just put it here now let's open this empty project so we're going to be opening it in our code editor yes we're using visual studio code in this case so one second all right i'm gonna be closing this one so if you have not installed the visual studio code yet well go ahead and install and let me mention some of my okay one second let me mention my extensions so i'm using auto rename tag x extension which helps us to write html more faster while you don't have to close the tags by yourself i'm using beautify to predefine my code um using the bracket pair colonizer so that you will know that's where you actually are in the code because sometimes while you write so many loops you get confused that in which loop you're actually working in so that helps in this case you can see they will light up the closing bracket of uh, the statement that you're writing and this is very much better and then we have the code stacker theme and this really looks good i like it personally you can choose to use it or not and then we're using fly, uh, fluent icons for getting these icons here and then we are using javascript es6 code snips this helps a lot uh, it makes other things much more faster so probably we will not i'm not actually going to use this these snips but you know you can just come here in the uh, you know well in the documentation and you can read them and it will make your work much more faster i promise you and then we have the live server that we are going to use to you know, run our website in live server that means basically we're gonna have all of the code uh, it's gonna run all of our you know code available in our folder on our website on a you know on ip address of 127.0.0 127.0.0.1 so then we have the material icons this will make our website this will make our, our icons much more our, our you know we as usual today code icons much more cool and i will prefer you to use this one because look while you're coding you should also love your coding so it makes the things much more better and then we have the thunder client so the thunder client is actually to mess around with the api stuff but we are not going to use the thunder client because this is the for the backend and we are not dealing with the backend yet but you know okay it all makes it will all make sense when we are going to deal with the backend but still we just keep the thunder client because we're gonna use some we're gonna be dealing with some apis throughout the video all right see now let's open up our normal one and let's close this one and uh we're gonna do what we're gonna make a normal file called as index.html now with the exclamatory mark you can get these things already and in the title we're gonna say learning uh, variables 
Now, this is going to be for the variable function because we will be learning how to deal with the variables and uh, you will really like this one. So, let's see. Learning underscore variable. You cannot have spaces in this one. And uh, I will always prefer you to make your code much more clean, much more specified. So what we can do, you can make a JavaScript folder and inside the JavaScript folder you can have a learning variable.html. You can see we have the learning variable underscore variable dot HTML, not the HTML dot JavaScript. So I'm actually changing this quickly by pressing F2. So we're not going to put anything in the HTML yet because first of all, we need to get the concept of variables. Well, yeah, with that being said, let's dive, yeah, you know, dig into this stuff. Let me try to explain you. In total, there are three types of variables, but actually there are only two types of variables. So I will explain you like that. So first of all, the variable that we all know about is the var. This is a normal variable. In uh, JavaScript, you have to mention the data type of the variable. That means if it's, uh, it's going to contain a number or it's going to contain a string, or it's going to contain a, a array it doesn't matter you just have to define it as variable but the problem with the variable is that the variable are being you know if you're going to define a variable here like the variable hello and then we're going to have some like for example we're going to have a function function uh someone now in the function we in, uh, i know you don't you're not familiar with the functions but i'm just taking an example because I'm not prefer you to use variable now, and this is old thing. And uh, well, now if you're gonna have here, you know, use the hello, you can see that how we can we are actually able to access the hello. And um, let me mention actually, you know, a cool example. Here, yeah, well, let's say we have a. Uh, I'm gonna have this here. I just did this by holding Control and down. You can see, I have here the variable hello. Now, while I'm defining another variable hello. Let me just do like that. Now let me just pull console.log. Hello. Okay, one second. So you can see I'm console.logging one uh, hello. Alright guys, so I'm back and uh, now let me explain you this uh, the difference between variable and let one. Perfectly, okay? The console.log. Let me explain this the console.log also. So the console.log means that you're you know you're printing uh what will you want to print to the console of the website and what is the console actually you might ask well let's go back to our html and uh, let's actually connect our javascript slash javascript slash learning variables and when i start the live server here so i'm actually going to explain every single thing perfectly now okay now when you press f tool or click right click and click inspect you can see we have a lot of things here we have elements sources Console application network, performance, memory, security, lighthouse, cookie editor. You will not have the cookie editor. <laughs> so, in the elements, you're actually going to see your HTML code there. You're not going to see your JavaScript or CSS code here, that if you might have a different, you know, external JavaScript and external CSS, you're not going to find that here, but you're going to find your HTML here. And then, here in the sources, you're gonna find all of your files that you uploaded on the server, or whatever files are running in the front end, or whatever libraries you connected with. So in the console here, you can find like if you have said uh, if score is equal to ten, con uh, is equal to ten, player health, uh, you know, play level should increase, but you have not defined score anywhere. They, the the uh, the website doesn't know what is score. So it's going to show you errors here and you can also you can do like console.log something like console.log5 let me just show you an example so I'm going to go back here console.log5 now if we go come back here you can see where being showed 5 so actually the console.log helps us to you know actually check if our things are working fine and you can do uh, console.log 5 plus uh, 10 and that means 15 so you can see we're getting 15. We're actually using. We will actually be only using the console the log to check if our code is working fine. But when your website is done, just remove all the console the logs because you don't want your user to see any of your, I know, console log stuff. And here on the right hand side, you can see they will actually show you where this console the log is located. 
So I will not prefer you to console the log like the score of your web user here because here is going to be the exact location where it's going to be printed. And if the user goes here, you will see the console log here. Let me just show you. It's gonna be like uh, let score. I'm gonna explain the let right now. So let score is equal to ten. Console the log score. You can just define like the variables here. So it's gonna console the log whatever value the score has. It can be this for now. It's an integer. That means it is it it has a uh, you know number. It is kind of like you know it has numbers starting from uh, negative, positive, including zero. So let's go back here now let me just go to console you can see we have 10 but now if you go to here you can see we're, we're having the access to our score what if the user actually the user is able to change the score in the website itself I'm gonna I'm just uh, taking you know precautions I'm just taking telling you these things if user saw the score is 10 what if I'm gonna make it 100 now if you save that go back to console it's not actually going to show anything but when the user types the score all right, one second. So for now we have the let score is equal to 100, but 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 you can see the score is not actually updating. Well, it's not updating only because the score has been updated by on on the you know website itself. And here it's going to update only when the website reloads and if after reloading and whatever JavaScript uh, the website reads first of all is going to show that here. And this score is only going to be defined when you know you know you know you are working with the function in the website itself. And let me just show you an example that how you can actually you know manipulate these things. Let me okay. Let me just uh, tell you one thing. Whatever change you do, uh, you know, in the sources or in the website itself, the constant the, the you know the value in the constant the log. Like let's say the score was ten on the starting, and you did some played some games, and the score actually changed. But when you're gonna console the log the score, it's not going to be changed here because the console reads all the JavaScript code only one time. It's not going to read it uh, every single time when this something updates, unless so unless you're going to run the JavaScript on the website itself. Let's say score is equal to ten, and uh, we're gonna say uh, new score is equal to score plus ten. So we can see we have new score is equal to uh, score plus 10 and uh, we actually not doing something cool and I know you might have been a little bit confused because I'm not defined a lot of things to you but I'm going to define them right now so now you have got the basic idea how we use the console log it helps us a lot but when your code is done just remove all the console logs it's not a good practice now let's talk about the why you use let and not use variable okay so let me explain that thing to you let's say I'm console logging x so now let's go back to browser. Okay, what they're saying? X is not defined. So for now, they're saying X is not defined. But if I go back to my VS code and I'm saying variable X is equal to 10. Well, now this time I'm using variable. Now as you can see they're showing me undefined, but they're not showing giving me an error. Look, if you're going getting, if you will be getting undefined of any for any, you know any of your variables that means the code will continue to run it's not going to the code your code will not stop at that process which means if your score is undefined you are still going to proceed your functions and uh, the data will be sit still submitted to the server unless you're putting some you know extra checks like if the score is not equal to string is not equal is equal to number or not but that makes the process much more hectic now let me ex let me show you what if it was a let what if you're gonna say let x is equal to 10 Let's come back. You can see, cannot access X before initialization. What well, the let what ha helps? Or why the let helps in this case? Let will not actually let you to access the X even before it's you know mentioned somewhere. Uh, okay, so you might have understood understood this thing. Uh, why why we will we should always be using let and why we will be using let. And another thing to mention uh, about the uh, changeable variables and the constant variables for now we're not going to talk about the you know uh, we already talked about the you know variable we will not be using variable anymore and we will be we will be only using the X now let me mention something you can see we have said X is equal to 10 
where console logging x now i'm saying let if you're gonna do like x is equal to now 20 now you want the x to be 20 and you want to console the log that i think again let's come back you can see the identifier higher fire x has already been defined that means if you want to change the value let's say the x is the score for now because score is going to be much more easier for you to understand if you want to update the score of a user after he has done something oh you don't have to you know define that variable again by saying let you just have to you know mention the name of the variable and say the value and we're gonna do console the log score so we're gonna get two scores first of all we should be getting 10 and then we should be getting 20 so you can see we have getting 10 and then we are getting 20 and this makes the things much more clear so you can actually use let to update the user score and uh, you can define it another time and make it 30 make it 40 make it billion that doesn't matter but what if you have something like we have a uh, server id what if you have something you know that's much more important for you that you don't wa want anyone to change or that you don't want the website itself to change let's say you have server id and the server id is something you know that you're getting the data of the user from let's say the server id is 10 and we're gonna you know do server id like that and uh, we, with the server id is 10 and you can see the server id someone and chain do, did something someone uh, changed a few values in your web website and now he actually made the server id to be 20. you can see how much problem that can be that means your website is not going to work because some of your important variables that you don't want to be changed has been changed only because you're using let so what should be done in these cases where you don't want the variable value change to change even though you have you might have tried somewhere you might have accidentally put it tried to change the value of the thing so instead of using let we use constant so constant will make that variable a constant variable that means even though we're defining somewhere the new value for that you know variable it's not going to be changed now let's go back here you can see uncaught type error assignment to a constant variable that means if you're going to even try to change the value of a constant in the future or in the somewhere in the code after you define the constant you will not be able to do that because you cannot assign a new value to constant after it has been assigned before but what you can do now let's say we have a constant of old, old score let's say the old score is some score that of the user that was saved in our database now we want uh, now let's say we have this old balance to make things much more clear okay now we're gonna say it like a balance so the user balance is uh, 10 that we actually don't want to change but let's say user added uh, something you know pretty much a little bit more money in his balance and you want to update it so how do we actually update it while well, we cannot change the value of the constant well in that case what we, we do we will be making another constant variable and that we're gonna call that new balance so we can call that new balance and the new balance will be equal to the old balance plus 10 or whatever value you want to be added to that uh, old balance to that old balance so we're gonna say now we're gonna console the log the new balance and the new balance is also constant that means if you try to change the new balance New balance is equal to 20 and uh, we're gonna say console dot, dot log uh new balance now another time so you can see like that let's go back here you can see we had first of all 10 that means our old balance and then we added the old balance to the new balance that means we got 20 and then we try to change the new balance as it's a constant but they're showing us you cannot change that actually so i hope you i hope you understood these basic things that we should keep in mind well as well using you know working with the uh, variables we have two variables one is a uh, unchangeable variable and another one are changeable variables and if and even if the variable is unchangeable you can do this thing to actually you know change the variables or define it something else like you can have a minus multiply or you can ha even have a you know different thing we can also make the strings so i talked about the integer only now let's talk about these strings so in the strings actually in the variables we are going to talk about not only uh, the integers, we only also are going to talk about, talk about a lot of the arrays and uh, many more things. So now let's go to strings. Let's say we have a let uh, name is equal to uh, Eldoni. Now if we want to console the log my my name, 
if you're gonna do console log mining, if you're gonna come back here, we're gonna say we have Aldoni. And to make the things much more easier for us, what am I gonna do? I'm gonna make it like that. Have it like that, and I'm gonna put it here. Okay, so I'm gonna. S so actually, you should not use the name like that because the name has is actually defined in the JavaScript itself. So they might should use something like that. So you, you should not. I never use the name like that. So one second, I'm doing this thing because I will be giving you code down in the description. So that is going to be much more easier for both of us. Now let's say net first name is equal to Eldoni and the console dot log first name okay so what we got we got Eldon in there okay so I'm just trying to hide this stuff but we cannot hide it okay never mind so you can see what we got we got Eldon here so now what if what if I try to do something like you know I have let last name also let last name is equal to bro and what if you want to you know add the first name to the uh, add the first name and last name together you might think if i'm going to put a plus sign it might cause some issues because in the integer while they were integers they were adding the values together and what they're going to do in the string in case of strings so let me just show you that what they're actually going to do you can see they may add the strings together they are not going to add anything uh, with the into inside the strings i will give you an example you can see they added the strings together and we had not put it any spaces so they did not add it any spaces for adding the spaces what we can do you know you can add another one you can add a, an empty string so you can see they have added a space because we have added like first name plus and a string with a space plus a last name and uh, what if we want the elderly to be in one line and the bro to be in another line for that we can use the slash n property and this is backslash and this actually you know uh give it actually works as a br tag in uh, html that means break it actually breaks the line at that point and it's gonna have the bro in the next line so it's also useful in so many positions so many places you will be using this uh, backspace and uh, in, in a lot of places uh, probably well you actually on you actually understood that how we can use this thing you can use the first name as Eldon we can put the last name as bro and the console log stuff so you might be thinking why I'm actually you know using the console or why I'm not actually getting into into the website stuff because before getting started with the website you should have basic uh, JavaScript concept clear and that's what we want we, we don't want to be started raw we want to start good you, you need to have good knowledge about JavaScript before we're starting now let me just comment that out and now let's come let's say let first number is equal to 1 and let second number is equal to 2 and when I say console.log uh, first number plus second number alright so second number so guys I want you to say that what they are going to show are they going to show 3 or are they going to show 1 2 I want you to think one second I hope you got the answer now let me uncomment this thing and you can see they showed us 12 because while the I uh, know well they are they are strings they are not actually going to add these things together they actually know going to combine them together they are not going to see what the value of it is it's an is it an a uh, number or is is the is it a string because that will not make sense uh, you can see adding f with f what will they give they will give you uh, g no they will not give you g but they will give you ff that means the combined version of the strings so you might you have already understood about how we can use the strings and uh, how we if we only if you if we put the numbers in the, inside the strings it will still show you one two it will not add them together so you need to that, keep that in thing mind and let me show you you can see let third number is equal to five and if you're gonna add plus a uh, third number if you're gonna add third number three they're gonna say show one two five and let me just add another one let's say this one is fourth number so i did this by pressing control plus d that means it duplicates the upper line with the lower line now let's say we have the fourth line also now this one is also is let's say eight and we're adding this one to fourth number what's they gonna show you can see well they're actually not 
adding the things together. They are not actually adding the 5 with 8, but instead of that, they're showing us 58. Well, you might be confused about this thing. Why actually are not they adding the things together while they both are numbers? Well, they are not adding them together because we cannot add the things like this, like that. Okay, you saw what the, what was the difference? The difference was the brackets. You can see, normally, they're reading every single thing as a string. Like they say, first of all, we got the first number plus second number plus third number plus fourth number. And even if you have if you have two strings and then uh, numbers, they are, they are going to consider the numbers as an string itself unless until you want you want them to specifically you want specifically the you want specifically to get the value of the third number plus fourth number and it will not work if you're gonna put the first number plus second number they're gonna still show you the same thing okay okay one second okay i hope you understood that very well and uh, like i mentioned you can see it doesn't make chan change because well, you like look by putting the brackets here. We're specifically telling that please add the third number with the fourth number. But while we are not mentioning the brackets, they're gonna say add third number, with fourth number, and add first number, second number, third number, fourth number. So they're actually adding it like one, two, five, eight. And this is the mistake that many of you might do in the future. Like if you're adding few things, a few strings and uh, integers together, you might do this mistake. So you need to be specific. You need to mention the brackets there. So that you don't get any error and you should not be confused and uh, i'm going to talk about prototypes in which we're going to mention how we can uh, convert a, a string to integer and uh, an integer to string and it will not change no if not it will not convert f to one or two it will only work on with if there is some numbers if there is a number only numbers in the string and there's only okay it doesn't matter for the integer because you're not going to be string in the integer so you can also put exclamatory marks, you can also put spaces, you can also put different kind of stuff in the string. Alright, so I hope you got that thing. Now, what we're gonna do, let me just comment that out. Now, we're gonna talk about the arrays. So, well, I'm gonna also, when I'm going, going to give you code, so let me just mention that. I'm gonna be mentioning the strings. Okay, we actually start with the strings part from here. Well, I'm trying to explain you as a, at a beginner level as much as possible. So I'm hoping that you all guys are understanding, uh, understanding the things, variable and uh, integers. Okay, so now once we got the integers and the uh, string stuff, now let's talk about the arrays. So what an array? What do we actually mean by, mean by arrays? So an array is a variable that can contain so many. Uh, type data uh, so many so much values so many variables in itself now let me say something let me mention something now let's say let uh, storage is equal to now let's say the storage okay we're actually gonna man I'm all I didn't talk about this uh, semicolon yet because we're gonna talk about this in the future it's not much of a thing you don't have to mention uh, semicolons in in in, in, your, in your code it just makes it much more hectic, so just remove it, okay? I'll explain you why and when you should use semicolons, okay? We know we will not be using semicolons. You might have heard in the previous, you know, in the old JavaScript, we, we need to use the semicolons, but in the new JavaScript, we wouldn't have to use semicolons. So now let's say in the storage, uh, we will be having the, uh, you know, the, two, the two, two, two things. Let's say in the, in the storage, we are having let item one is equal to uh, 12 let let price 1 is equal to 12 and let price 2 is equal to 15 okay we're saying the price 1 is equal to 12 and the price 2 is equal to 15 and you want to store both of these prices in our storage and uh, how you you might think that how you can save this thing inside the storage because if we're gonna do the let storage is equal to price 1 plus Price to what else there can be done? We can only think of this thing. If now we're gonna console the log storage, you can see we got 27, but we don't want 27. What we want instead, we want the storage to save both of these, uh, the uh, both of the elements values specifically. We want them to be, you know, we can access both of the values. We don't have to go like uh, price one and price two, we don't have to define it like that. We just want to have both of these values without defining the variables inside the storage 
and that's where with arrays come in hand. What can an array do? Array has is just like you know, uh, the right kind of like you know square brackets, half square brackets. So you do the, they look like that, and they get the uh, values inside. You can see we have an empty array here. They're gonna show you the length of the arrays and three prototypes. So yeah, we can use the, you can you know use the prototypes from here. You can just do the things by yourself. And like I told you, we will not be talking about every single thing, but still. It all will make sense when you will get to understand about all of these things. Now, inside the arrays, what actually we're gonna be having? Now, let's see. Inside the arrays, we have price one, and how do we gonna how are we gonna just go like price one plus price two? Okay, they are also going to show us twenty seven. Well, it will not make sense because we will not be using a plus sign. Instead, we will be using a comma. So now, in the comma, we can say they are showing we have two items in our array. The item at index 0 is 12 and the item at index index 1 is 15. So whatever item is at uh, first position will be called uh, will be known as the index 0 and whatever item is at uh, second point and third fourth fifth will be called as 1 2 3 4. You might think that we should be getting like you know storage the first item should be, the first item should be index 1 that's price 1 but it doesn't work like that. In JavaScript, it's read by zero. That means the first item will be at index zero, and we're gonna thing. We, I'm actually gonna show you that how we actually gonna mess up with this thing while we are doing stuffs in the loop. So it all makes sense like that. And in the land, they're gonna show you that how many elements are in the uh, array. Now let's say we have another one. We have the price three that also has fifteen. We're gonna say uh, price three like that. And now we can see we have three elements with the length of three. We have zero position twelve. First position 50 and second position 50. And while we are doing this, what else can we do? We can just directly define the numbers here. You can see we're directly defining the numbers. Now, if we remove this thing, all right, you can see we don't have to use the price on price to price tree. Well, instead of that, we will be just getting the no values 12, 15, and 15. And you can access them. Well, how you can access them? Well, because for now, they're actually showing you something like that, and you cannot actually use this thing like that and instead you need to put a bracket like that here also and then you need to mention the index you need to mention which uh, value or which thing of which of the index you want to access now let's say i want to access the thing that is located on index one that means here this is the one the zero one two on index one okay we got 15. now let's say we want the element that's and we want the value that's located at index zero that's 12. This is zero. Okay, we got a twelve. So you got a uh, point that we can do things like that, and you also can add variables in here. You can add integers in here. You can add a fifth, uh, someone in here like that on index two. That is someone. You can add. Uh, you can even add functions inside the arrays, and it will still work fine. And to make our uh, you know arrays much more better or much more definable, much more shape, what you can do, you can just do like that. We can just make it like that so that what this actually is going to help you it's actually going to help you make our array much more our array structure much more better and another thing you can do inside the array you can have objects in the array so what do we mean by objects now let's say you're getting the 12 value from somewhere let's say let uh, price 1 is equal to 12 and uh, so we have price 2 and then we have the name name is equal to elderly all right i'm just uh, making the things much more clear here so now you're not going to actually define it like you know price one price one and uh price two and then uh, we're going to define the name well the issue with this thing is that while we're calling something we can call them like this or what we can do okay so we only can call them by you know by the by the indexes but what if you have put it a lot of things in your array and you don't know you can you, you don't want to count the on which index what is located where in that case we use objects yep the array has objects so you can if we can you know these objects are just like variables but in inside the they work inside the arrays let's say the price one we're gonna name it as uh okay another thing to mention here that if you're going to put these things alone like that and and you're gonna put like you're gonna define like dot price one it's gonna show you undefined and it will not work because you cannot call them like that without defining 
them to uh, uh, some of the variables that we have defined before. So what we can do instead here, you can do like uh, price first like that and you need to put this thing inside a, a string. Okay, so you need to put this thing inside a string and uh, you need to wrap up. Okay, okay. So for using the objects, okay, okay, let me just be clear here. For using the objects, uh, while you're, you know, while you're, you, uh, you know, working with the arrays, you can just put it like that. But if you want to use the objects, if you if you don't want to do like uh, one, two, three, blah, blah stuff, we can define objects by, you know, actually wrapping every single thing. Okay, no, actually like that, but actually like this by wrapping all of this thing in the COVID, in the curly brackets. But now what I want to actually change now is that if you just type, uh, no, we need to define the uh, variable here. Now I'm going to say uh, first price. If you're going to say like that, okay, it doesn't matter. So now I'm going to say if we're going to define the first price. Okay, we got undefined. Okay, once. Okay, so actually, when we're the when when we're working with the with the objects, we cannot define it like that. We cannot define you know we're gonna put these big brackets. So we are only going to put the big brackets even only if we want to have a lot of objects inside this one. So this is the first object, and the value of the first object can be called by first price. Now if I'm saying first price, and they're gonna show us twelve. And now if I'm saying price two. You can say this told us 15. Well, the thing they, is that they told us 15 is that they are giving the price to the name of price to it in itself. And now let's say if I'm going to call the price one or price one, they're going to show me undefined because I have given the price one name as first price. Because in uh, in your variable, you can have, you know, uh, a score incoming stuff and you can just, you know, let's say I'm name I'm going to rename this as score incoming. Is equal to 15. Now, if I have your score incoming 15, you're not going to write all of the story incoming, but instead, let's say, okay, we don't have actually one second. You can see it all works fine like that. Now, if in this for the store incoming, what we can do, we can say, like, you know, we can save it like store score. Now, if, if we call the score only, they're gonna show us 15 because the value of the score incoming has been saved in the score and if you're not going to define you know if you're not going to define any uh variable or any kind of like object for the name it's going to actually you know it's going to save the it's, it's going to make a var variable like this it's going to make the variable inside the javascript itself but it's going to say, save that name as the name itself it's going to have it's going to become like you no know, name double dot name name call that name it's going to become like that if you're not going to do this and this is a good thing if you if you don't want to change if you want the name to be similar and it can help you you know to write less code and be much efficient while you're writing code now let me mention you let me show you if i'm gonna put the name here you can see aldoni and to mention that javascript is actually you know uh capital you know they actually are very serious about the capital the letters like the capital letters small letters because you can have the name here and you can add another name with a small n, Eldani1. If you want to say name, you can see they're going to show us Eldani1. Well, that is the thing you need to be you need to keep in mind that uh, uh, you know JavaScript is really serious about these things. It doesn't things it doesn't uh, it will not leave you if you're not going to do the, follow these steps. And you can see why we are putting columns, col you know, commas everywhere, and because it is important to put commas if you're, if you're not going to be called put commas they're gonna see unexpected identifier then I'm actually going to understand that what actually you are trying to do so we need to define different you know values to the different array variables in inside the array this is actually an array but the uh, this kind of array which means this array contains the objects and uh, if you want to make arrays like with the covered brackets you're not ex you cannot actually access the indexes now let me just show you that one okay now if i'm trying to access the first index of the array i cannot actually access that because this is not an actually array like array okay one way else we what we call this one uh one i think this is also an array this is, this is a type of array which will not let you to access the variable you know access 
uh, any of the you know, element any of the thing inside the array by using the indexes but you can access that by using the name or by using the objects that were stored inside the array so there are two types first of all was a normal array one let me also mention that that storage is equal to price one score incoming and that name you see there's the big name so it's going to be make more sense I told you before don't use name like that so you can see these both will do same work but the difference is the first one uh, uh, will work okay one second <laughs> something has been will work on like this in the while defining you are defining the indexes so stories has already been defined okay one my bad so it's just like that you know I can just do like I can just commit it out by putting pressing control plus slash okay you can see 15 and then we got the first dot first place well the dot first place is not defined because we're using this type of array and if you're gonna put the covert brackets then we can ac actually access the you know names actually the objects inside the array and uh, that's how we actually do the stuffs and I'm going to go deep inside the arrows while we're actually going to work with the arrows I know the for now it might have been a little bit more you know confusing stuff for you but let me just show you you can actually use this you know use the brackets inside this array to actually mention you can actually actually use it like that you can actually use it this one like that but what you have to do in that case you can see let me just uncomment and comment this one you can see first for now they are showing undefined because we're using this big brackets and we're using the cover brackets but the thing is you need to mention here the storage at the index of zero now you can see they are showing 12 well the thing is that we have only this like you know this is actually an object inside an array so they are actually accessing uh, this is only there you know we have only have one object inside our array you can see we have this own object like I told you it, it just you know it just looks like you know we have the string we have the number and we have this object it's located at index first so whatever way you're going to access it for the index first with like first name you can access the object you know uh, the variables inside this one the first name uh, the score and you cannot access the first name of score outside this one you cannot define that like variable or let or constant because they are only going to be like that and you cannot access them outside like here now you're going to say console.log uh, first name first price it doesn't make sense because first price is not defined and you cannot access them like that and let me show you if we're going to have uh, another one that's going to be have a value of zero and if I'm going to say this is located as, as at index one dot first price it doesn't make sense because it doesn't have any it is not an object it's just an integer if you want to say like at index one what we have we have zero and then we can have another object with the properties like you know uh second price uh s score now i want the object at index two which means because first we have zero index here we have first index we have now now the second index you have the object at second index and uh, you can see they are written as uh, the whole object but we want the the second price of that object that gives us 12 and that is actually price one that means it is 12 in by itself so you can define objects like that and it makes your things it means you know actually working with the arrays working with the stuffs much more easier and much more better i told you this was not much of a difficult task thing to understand and i hope you have understand the basic things this is not much of a thing you need to you know deal with you need to have this concept because this is a must know concept and you will be using this in the future a lot i know that and uh, well we i hope you got the things we also need to talk about the prototypes and we also going to talk about the prototypes in uh, the arrays also so okay the variables kind of part of was uh, completed i guess it took us in like 45 minutes but I told you, man, your time is worth it. Now we're gonna get into the, into the prototypes section. Okay, so so now we're gonna make we're gonna have the prototype. So for that, I'm gonna make another one file by clicking here file uh, learning uh, proto uh, types of JavaScript. I'm not gonna mention a lot of prototypes, but just the basic things. You know, the ultimate basic. I guess I will be mentioning one or two because you can check on Google a lot of them. There are a lot of you know prototypes. I know the people uh, when I was watching the tutorial myself, people some you know teachers were telling me a lot of 
Bruno Dimes, and I was really confused about that because I cannot memorize all of this stuff. And let me just tell you, while you're learning to code, you don't have to memorize anything. You don't, you know, just get the concept. And then when you are doing something, you don't know how to do it, just Google search how we can, you know, how we can convert that string to integer. Just Google search. They're going to show you. I have actually it is done. Let me show you how to convert a uh, string to integer in JavaScript. You can see in JavaScript we have the parsing function is easy to convert string to an integer. You can see how easy was that? You can use the parsing to convert the string to integer. You can see parsing. We gave it some number. It's some integer uh, string. It's going to convert that thing to an integer. Let me show you that. You can see. Okay, they're actually putting the brakes. You can see first of all we have the we're in, uh, converting the 10.0 10 point zero ten point uh zero zero uh to an integer. We're getting ten. We're converting the ten point three three to integer, we're getting ten, and we're converting three four four five six six to integer. We're getting three four because it doesn't make sense. Like having spaces between four, five and six, they will be declined. And then we are converting the 60 with the spaces in integer. And integer doesn't care about the spaces, so they're gonna show you 60. We can with 40 years to integer, they're gonna show you 40 because there is 40 and integer, and we have the years as a string, and it's like it's not going to you show you the years. And the thing is that you can see they have got the none, uh, none also because it, it will only read, you know, it will only show you that string, the integer that's there on this starting. If there's years 40, it will not show you, it will just show you none. But if there's 40 years or 4500 years, it's gonna show you 4500 years. It's gonna show like that, but the thing, the integer should be together. It's not. It should be like. It should not be in a type like you know, 34, 45, or 66. And then we have he was 40 years and he got none because the you no know, JavaScript detected uh, the string first and then the digit and it was able. It was not able to understand actually how it works. So you can see we have the parse integer, and we have stuff like that. And now I hope that you understood the things. And now I guess. We might be actually working inside the console itself because it's going to be much more easier for us to do the stiffs and uh, inside the console log itself. Okay, first of all, let me just go back here. So now we are talking about the prototypes. Now let's say let this string. This is called to uh, L Uh Let string is equal to one, and then we're going to say console dot log string and then we have a uh, string 2 now we're gonna say console log like string 1 plus string 2 what we're gonna say what we're gonna see here we can find we have 12 but what if you actually want them to be added to itself to themselves so what you can do in that case like you might be wondering um, I actually I know I don't didn't want the numbers to be a, a string, but I accidentally they became a string. Or for prediction, you want them to be string because you don't want someone to like you know on the console like okay the score uh, plus like they're gonna make a function. I want to explain the function later on. I told you function. Uh, someone is called the you know, score uh, plus ten, and they're gonna run it like that, and they wanna they're gonna run the function someone is actually okay the score is not defined but i'm just showing in a normal and it's actually going to add the 10 value to the score if it, it was an integer <coughs> so you can do this for a prediction like you don't want anyone to change something like that but when you want to deal with this thing you don't want to deal them as an integer itself you want to deal them while they they have be they are number actually so basically there are two things that you can do to make this thing happen actually and I'm gonna show them on the console itself because now we can access the string one and the string two itself. Now, you might have realized that uh, they're showing us using the parse integer, but there was an easier thing that you can do that means using the number function, and that actually makes sense. You know, having a number function, yeah, it does make sense. So, uh, the actually the parse in. Let me just show you the parsing. Parsing actually has two. Things it actually has the two things. Okay, the parsing it actually you know uh, da, 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 actually has the two things. First of all, you have the x and the b. I mean, this, you know, they are showing you an as an example. So do, 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 do. that's not a good example they're showing here. Okay, so filtering it doesn't make sense. 
Okay, so we have do 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 we lose on thirteen. I pass in these are two fifteen. All right, so well, the pass integer actually has contains two of the numbers. So I will be talking about the second number in the future because we don't need to this one. While talking about the prototypes, we need to only mention. We need to only talk about what we need for now. We want instead of showing this thing twelve, we want them actually to show three. We want the them to add with themselves. So what we can do to do that, we can do like you know. Uh, we can make we can either make a uh, let adding uh, adding a string uh, is it called to uh, string plus string two if I'm gonna console the lock string right now it's gonna show us the same thing <coughs> well now what we have we can what we can do here you can see for now uh, these two are actually the string itself we can use a number function and to use a number function what we have to do we have to pull that number and we have to make it make both of the values inside the bracket now you can see it did convert the string from a uh, string okay so the difference between a string and integer on the console log you can see the string is normally printed like string and the number is normally printed like is printed in the blue a little bit blue uh, kind of color so you can see it actually did convert our numbers, our you know our both one and two strings to number, but it actually did not add the values together because it still it just converted you know whatever we got com by them combined it just converted all of them, all of that stuff inside into a number. But what can we do to actually add uh, the both of these strings with themselves? Well, we need to make both of them were numbers uh, specifically. We not we cannot make. Uh, the value you know we can combine form of both of them we need to make the both of them a uh, number specifically you know different we're gonna say like that number string two now you can see we got three because now it's having the string one as a number and it's adding the first string one as a number and with the uh, second string two as a number now we can see we're doing this thing and we're getting this thing but the thing is Let's say we're, we're gonna have this one as a uh, string four. What if you okay? One second, I wanna make a string four. Like, oh, uh, how you can you know you don't have to do this thing if you want to, to add another thing uh, with the, the string four in the future. Now you can see for now they're adding the values together. Now if I'm gonna only show uh, like uh, class is equal like that, it converted the string to number. So now it's an integer. Well now what if I'm gonna say let a uh, string let string uh string five is equal to we have to define a number. We're gonna say let string five is equal to string four plus ten. And if I'm gonna console log string five, you can see we got twenty-two because we already converted the values of the string four to a number. What where is going to be here? String one, string two, string three, all of them will be converted inside a number, whether they are strings or not. They're gonna kind of get all of the you know string you know the string whatever uh, all of the you know numbers from them and they're gonna be converting them all of them inside into a number whether they are strings but it doesn't work with arrays well it doesn't work with arrays because the arrays have so many things within them so it doesn't work with them but you can you know go like you know if you're gonna specifically uh, target some of the basic some of the specific stuff like let array val is equal to one and two and i want the second index of the array that means the one array one you can do like that and now you can see we're actually getting the number string number four and adding that to here or okay, one second into one on the string zero one second. so we have the string okay i'm actually adding a comma i need to add a plus okay so one thirty one okay, one second my bad that yeah, I don't have to mention the semicolon like I told you before. So you can see I'm adding the variable one, two, three, two, two. Okay, so okay, one. So you can see we have getting we're getting one, three, two. But but why are we getting one, three, two? Well, what if we only have the string four here? 
we're getting 122 that means this has one this has one value and this has two value you can see where I'm getting the index at one that means we're getting two and now if you're gonna have like plus 10 that means 122 plus 10 means 132 so that means you can also use arrays inside this thing and you can also use the object type arrays of course if they are have number in them well it all will make sense so you have understood how we do like that and the same goes for the integer and we have like let int is equal to one and the let integer two and never save a uh, variable like with the basic number, like integer integer uh, string let, let, let's say let into one is equal like that into is equal to uh, two and I will make function you know I will when I will talk about the function I will mention that you should never make functions like you know number because it's an already inbuilt function of JavaScript itself so never make a function name like that you know, function number or string okay so the another thing you can you can have done to use this stuff is using the dot to, to number at the end of the thing but it's a little bit com little bit complicated so I already mentioned the thing that is uh, much more clear for beginners and uh, you will only be using this stuff okay now let's say okay, comes on the log <coughs> int 1 plus integer 2 now you can see they're adding the values uh, with themselves but what if you don't actually want the values to be added in themselves whatever the reason be you want them to you want the console the log, log to show 12 how we can do that well if you're gonna put you know cover this one with the string with the, make them inside the string they're gonna say you show you int 1 int 2 okay they're gonna show you like int 1 int 2 but what if you wanna do something like, like that you know wanna have you wanna have a uh, 1 and 2 you can convert them to string and like it uh, and the same goes for this thing like if you wanna come on kind of have the whole of them covered with a string it's only gonna change the color that means now they're string and now while they're string if you're gonna define it in another one let integer integer 3 be equal to like that and let integer 4 is equal to integer 3 plus 10 and if I want to do like console log integer 4 you can see we have 3 and 10 well we have 3 and 10 only because we are getting the first string which means we are converting the integer 1 and integer 2 value inside the string that means 3 and it's adding if we'll, it will be adding 10 to the string that means it's going to show us you know 3 and 10 it will not actually add this uh, integer 3 with the 10 but it will actually combine the results now what we actually what if we actually don't want to may add the 1 and 2 with themselves we can actually have them uh, a string for both of them you can have some string string that means we are getting 1 2 1 0 1 2 and 1 and 0 so it all makes sense now it's pretty simple thing that you can actually do and uh, I will be mentioning a few more things okay I, I didn't mention a thing about uh, while working with arrays because for now we are not actually working with arrays but well I will be working with arrays there are a lot of cool steps that we can actually do with arrays you can actually you know add the uh, you know values of the array dynamically and uh, you can actually delete the uh, things from our array dynamically and it's pretty easy I want to say pretty useful things so now let me mention a few things about an integer now let's say let integer 1 is equal to 10.0000001 let's see we have an integer 1 with the name of that one we're gonna actually gonna come to the log integer 1 what we get <coughs> we get 10 point uh, 10 but the a thing is you're gonna say I don't actually want that little bit one thing there I only want the 10 well what am I gonna do about that thing well the thing is you might think okay why do we actually have to write values like that well let me show you that this is a thing we're gonna say let integer 1 is equal to 0 0.1 and let integer 2 is equal to 0 0.2 integer 1 plus integer 2 okay so this is it was an error you know glitch in JavaScript that the many people you know free, Oh, that was viral in the internet. You can see where if we're adding the 0 0.1 to 0 0.2, we're getting getting this thing, and it only, it only happens with the 0 0.1, 0 0.2. Don't worry, it will not affect any of your other numbers. 
is uh, something um, problem in the very in the you know in the internal uh, JavaScript stuff like that in the in internal binary stuff. So now, what if you want to put this? It's, you want to have a you know you want to have a let score is equal to integer one plus integer two, and you want to uh, you want to uh, do something with the score. Let me let me show. For now, we want to actually only show the score. Are we going to show the user that he has zero point three? Uh, 15 times 0 and 4 coins or are you only going to show him you have user you have 0 0.3 coins well in that case what we do we use a dot to fixed uh, thing like dot fixed uh, uh, function so we're going to use the dot to fix well now we are using the dot to fix here what you need to mention by default the dot to fix will actually remove all of the decimals all of the values of the decimals so if you're going to defi define as 0 that means it's not it's not you know it's only it's going to delete all of the values of the coming of the decimal because we are getting for now 0 0.3 so it's not going to show us anything and if you only want the string to have it have the integer no decimal you can just dot to fix without anything is going to be zero by default and if you're going to put one that means it's going to show you one decimal after the uh, one uh, value after the decimal after the dot that means it's three and now if you're going to put two it's going to show you 0 0.30 and now if you're going to put 5 it's going to show you so on as much the value is if you're going to put handwritten it will only show you to you know it will just continue showing you more of its stuff that we actually have in there you can see we didn't knew that it, the string has a lot of stuff like that and if you're going to be putting it a little bit bigger okay you're going to actually add it to 10,000 or 1,000 because there's a limit but you can see if you mess this up you're going to have a much better much bad result so just keep in mind just you can keep a zero or for now we're gonna use the, the one because we only want 0 0.3 to be shown to the user so in this case like that you can use the auto fixed uh, and it actually is a good thing that you can actually use and uh, it's going to help you do your work much better and nothing else so these were the things and let me let me show you actually these were some of your other things okay so you can go like in a console log uh someone i'm mean, i'm just showing an example let someone is equal to one someone dot you can put a dot and you can see uh many things like you can get the value of the precision it doesn't make sense i know dot to string like i told you dot to expon uh, exponential so dot exponential we actually convert the value to exponents exponent type okay let me show you that exponential native code so okay so it doesn't actually make sense i know that uh, okay it's actually going to convert your value to an exponent if you want to have it to 11 here it's going to have one point uh, e okay 1.56 e plus 3 is going to actually convert your thing into an uh, exponent so you have a lot of stuff in that we will probably we will not be using that to exponential but in case if you want the security you can actually convert your numbers to exponents so that the user cannot actually do something is you know caught up in the action so i'm actually uh, actually i'm going to do like that and uh, this is one integer and let's say let someone is equal to our string what we function what the pro prototypes function we get someone dot we have a lot of we have a character add so the character add actually you know uh helps us to actually check the first like let's say it's you know it actually works as an uh integer you know actually as an array with the indexes so by default, uh, character add is going to show us the index as zero. And if you're going to put the character at zero, that means it's going to show us s and character at one. That means the another one, the character add located at the number uh, at the index zero one. That means t. We're going to see we're going to get a t. Now let's say character add number five. Well, it doesn't make sense. It is okay. It's g. One, two, three, four, five. Okay. Now let's say we have character add six. Well, there is not much of a length of a character, so you're gonna get nothing. Well, it was character add. Okay, let me just put it five so that you will better understand the thing. Let me just duplicate it and uh, let me just do like that. And you can also get the you know, character add length. Dot length will actually help you uh, to check the length of your character, like how many characters your string has. For now, we have six, and if you're gonna put a space. It's gonna be seven if you want to put w it's gonna be eight so that's how it reads the thing you can also put like you know length like that you can actually not define it it's not a function it's just a prototype 
So we have like length. It's gonna show you a six. So we have the length thing. We got the length thing. I'm just you know showing you basic things. We have the concat will actually add the two strings with themselves. Like concat, we it will contain uh, two strings. Let me show you. Okay, they're gonna say string one and the string two. It's gonna add them together. Oh, well. Okay, last index of. So it's gonna get the last index of that value. Okay. Last index of is a minus one. Okay. Last index of search string string. So you can get like this last index. Okay. Last index of someone. Is okay. <laughs> one second. We will not be using last index for now. Uh, I will explain this in the future. But I have a little bit forgot about this one. You know. Okay. So we have the thing like that. We have replace. Okay. So replace is a good thing you will be using a lot of times and uh, we will also be using slice uh, we might use split but probably we will not be using split okay we will be using okay the dot lowercase to lowercase to uppercase these two things actually helps a lot, as a lot dot to lowercase will actually know dot to lowercase will actually convert all of our string inside in, into lowercase for now there it's lowercase by itself so it doesn't make sense but if you're going to change this one to dot to uppercase it's going to make a small string to a capital string so you can see how cool is that and if you want to say dot replace it's going to contain two things the first thing is that what you want to replace with what i want to replace str with ste sting you can see I replace str with ste. You can do like you can change the thing, things in a in your string, so you can replace them like that, and it's pretty much fun and pretty much easy to do. And what was I talking about? Uh, to replace, you can also use this trim. We will be talking about the trim in the future because we might be using you know uh, working with the trims with the trim. Okay, uh, dot include is a good function. That include will actually have a string. So you can see for now without includes nothing. But that is it's 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 only gonna show you the boolean, <coughs> the boolean thing that's gonna be either false or either true. Well, actually, the dot includes is going to return you at the value as zero or one. Zero means false and one means true. You can see uh, if someone includes nothing, then it will show you false. Well, actually, it doesn't include nothing because it has string. You can see if it includes s, does it include s? Yes, it does include s. Does it include e? No, it does not have E. You can see it clearly doesn't have E. So why are you just telling me to check if it has E? Well, it doesn't have E. Okay, my bad. Let me just check 67. Well, it doesn't have 67. Uh, the dot includes will work in, in all of the situations, but sometimes it doesn't work. So you need to do, check dot index of 67. Okay, it's gonna have like S. If his uh, index is there, it's gonna show you like normally or it can see a string. It does have the string, or if it doesn't have, it's gonna show you written minus one. So what's the difference between having dot includes and the dot index of? So dot includes will work in every situation, but in some situation the dot includes doesn't work so because of an issue. So you can use the dot index of. It will return minus one if the value was false, and it will return zero if that value was true. Okay, so well, yeah, this is pretty much. Uh, it's for this chapter and we talked about the variables the string like that and uh, I Think you got a lot of concept about prototypes Well, I was talking I was going to talk about the product uh, in the arrays in the prototypes, but Well, uh, we have already mentioned the arrays here specifically. So we'll be talking about arrays in there Okay, guys We got the selectors, but 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 we will not be using selectors right now I don't think you are prepared enough to use the selectors. Uh, but instead, what we're gonna do, we're gonna do like you no, know, go step by step. We're gonna use the selectors here. I'm gonna put the functions uh, on after the arrays. And I'm gonna put in the ESX of the the async function. So these are the things that we need to call in the JavaScript so that we can actually, you know, work with our website part all right guys so we have the dot index of as in string and the 67 ste blah blah stuff like that so we got this stuff 
product section done now what we need to talk about are we going to talk about loops well yeah we are going to talk about loops and uh, I think you're pretty much prepared for the loops because in loops we are mainly going to you know do steps with the arrays and after uh, talking about loops we're actually going to get to the arrays and uh, that's going to be fun now let's say uh, learning loops dot javascript and uh, what we are going to do is here in the learning javascript running this thing to learning loops dot javascript so yeah it's going to be connected fine okay now let's talk about loops why do we need loops well the thing is that we need loops to do to you know make some automatic thing so that the javascript is going to do the thing by itself now why do we need it the question is why let's say if you want to show <coughs> hello on the console log 10 times what you're gonna do console log uh, hello and you're going to you know uh, paste it 10 times 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 it's gonna show you hello 10 times but don't you think this is a little bit shitty thing what if you have a lot of stuff to do are we going to do stuff, things like that you're gonna copy paste no you're not going to do like that so what instead we're gonna do we will be using loops and uh, there are types of loops so there are while loops so the while loops are actually the uh, loop that contains uh, some condition like you know that actually that actually contain a condition if the condition is matched the loop is going to continue and if the condition was not matched sometime at some time if the condition was not matched what the while loop is going to do it is going to exit but the thing with while loops is that you need to you cannot have an let me let me just show you the thing like we have while loops it's a while loop statement we have the condition inside the condition like we cannot run the loops forever because it's going to crash our browser it doesn't know when to stop and what's the condition let's say in the condition we have i is equal to zero and if i is smaller than 10 okay now the problem with while loops is that you can see i try to mention i try to define the variable i and i'm going to say i is smaller than zero but the while loops only take the condition it doesn't care if i is defined or not but the loop but the browser does i'm showing you here it only takes the condition so i'm gonna say let i is equal to 10 okay so you can also define like i without defining the i like a let i but the problem with that is that if in the future you're gonna say let i is equal to 10 let i is equal to 20 cannot x i before initialization this is the issue that you're gonna get in the future if you're gonna do like that and another thing you want to say i is equal to 10 i is equal to 20 so the new value of the i is going to be read as 20 and we should not <coughs> do stuff like that so it's going to be much bad so you can just like let i is equal to 10 but we will not use the let i is equal to 10 while you're dealing with the for loops but i'm talking about the while loops the while loops only take the condition okay while i is smaller than uh, okay i is have value one so that means the while loop is going to continue like nine times because we're saying while i is smaller than 10 just loop it so what actually the loop does here it's gonna have a statement it's gonna run the statement as many times as many times as the condition is not has not yet matched but if uh, we are going to run this condition right or thing right now without you know putting saying i plus one or adding something to the i what actually is going to happen our browser is going to crash and it's going to run the statement unlimited times because the i value is never increasing it's always become being one and the statement is never condition is never you know is returning false so it's getting like that you can see my browser is already refreshing because of this thing <laughs> god i guess it, it died like i told you you never do this okay so the browser can crash like that you can now we need to exit this one live server we need to start another live server <coughs> okay my bad so okay we have hello here so now here what we are going to do so while we're working with the things like that we have the while loops condition we need to have you know like i plus i plus plus so i plus plus is actually going to do what now our browser will not crash like that it will load so i plus plus is actually going to add one to the i 
add one value to the i itself so how is actually i plus plus going to work i plus plus it just like you know okay so let me mention the this basic stuff i think you're not uh clear about this thing so let me just mention it that let me mention it that here when i say let i let s is equal to 10 and I'm gonna say s plus plus. What we're gonna get? We're gonna get ten. I wanna say, okay, s plus one. Well, you can see we got ten here, but now if we're gonna say s, we got eleven. Well, the thing is because the s plus plus actually will be returning ten, but actually s plus plus <coughs> adds one uh, one to the s, which means one number to the s. And s plus plus will work as you know, s is equal to s plus one. It just works like that it will do like you know s is equal to s plus one that means s plus plus or you can use s minus minus it will return as 12 but it actually becomes if we want to say s it actually makes it 11 it just works like x is equal to s minus one and this is the easy thing to do but in the using the s plus plus you cannot actually you cannot actually add two numbers or five numbers or ten numbers whatever you want like but you can do like s is equal to s plus five it just makes it 15 you can too much of a stuff with just defining the thing like that and 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 to mention while you're doing s plus plus or minus 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 it's actually going not going to actually you know, change the uh the value of the error variable at that specific time you can say like you know we have uh, here let uh someone okay we're not talking about the function right now but i'm just gonna take an example okay let me show you that here if we have let let something is equal to one and then uh, let s is equal to 10 and i'm gonna say s plus plus and then i'm gonna say console the log s now you can see we got 11 in this case but but the issue with this not there's not actually an issue but sometimes happens what when you are making complicated functions the s plus plus might not give you a good solution but we should always use s++ only or s++ thing but sometimes if some is issues come what you can do you can just like you know s is equal to s plus one and this will uh, be the same thing while we're dealing with this, something like that so now you already understood the condition that means s++ will actually increase one to the uh, one and it will become two <coughs> we can also do like you know console the log i every single time we're running this stuff so that we will actually know the progress Okay, so now you can see 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. Alright, I mentioned 10 so that it will run till 9 because when the condition is met, it will not run anymore. Okay, it just stops there. Well, you can do something like that, and we also need to talk about the if else statement. I forgot to mention that. After the loops, we're gonna talk about the if else state statements because we'll, that should become, you know, included in the loops itself but i'm sorry i didn't include that in the loops itself but we're gonna talk about that things okay already okay uh one second so like i mentioned that <coughs> we need to we can use the while loops like that and they, it's actually gonna show us that it's actually gonna uh, run the statement uh as many times as we want like we're saying i value is equal to zero now it's gonna add run the statement 10 times while we were not actually trying to do this we were actually you know trying to show the hello 10 times you can see they're showing this 10 that means hello was just ran 10 times they just show the same thing 10 times and this is uh, you know a good version of the console so that we will not actually be shown the 10 hellos like that but we are instead going to show that the hello has been run 10 times and that's how while loops work and uh, we are going to talk, talk about the while loops but let me just take a short break I'm going to eat my food and I'm going to come back and I'm going to continue this, this video. Okay, guys. Okay, guys, so I'm back. Now, I hope you already got the concept of while loops. But probably we will not be using while loops. And uh, I don't want to waste your time, guys, you know. Uh, this is not a tutorial while I'm just talking about the do while loops, while loops, blah, blah, loops, blah, 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 loops, that whatever your loops you need. Well, I only need to talk about the things, the basic things. So the while loops, the do while loops are the same loops like while loops, but it has a condition that it's going to run f the the first statement one time 
even if the condition was unmet and another time it's going to check if the condition was met or not if it was unmet then it's not going to run the condition and then we have the for loops and the for each loops so you need to know the for and for each loops both of them pretty well because we will be using both of them so okay now let's talk about the for loops first of all the for loops have three things it contains three things or you can only give it uh two things but you need to have you need to have at least uh, the first of all is going to contain the variable that we are comparing the thing with. What you can do, it's only important for you to define the variable here. You can, uh, you know, you can just define a variable like here. Let uh, i is equal to zero, and here you can say while i is smaller than ten. Okay, okay. So we need to also you cannot just you know, define uh, just like i. Just like i. One second. Let's just read the error expression expected i plus plus if you want to say it's not the issue all right all right right so the issue is that in the for loop you need to mention the variable first of all at the starting of the thing you need to mention the uh, variable itself you know like i is equal to zero What's going to be it'd be the initial value of the your i, and then what's going to happen with the i? You cannot. You need. To, you need to. Okay, this is the important thing. We need to mention the initial value of the i. Or what you can do here, you can just like you know, you can have like i. You can, you can just give it a, this thing, variable name as t, and i is equal to t, and while i is smaller than ten, i should be plus plus. Or you can just remove the plus plus, just have a semicolon there, it's gonna work fine. And you can mention the plus plus somewhere, if some condition is met, then you can do like that. But probably we'll be using plus plus here. And I'm gonna give you the projects in the future, okay? Okay, so while I'm giving you, uh, one second. Okay, so you can see we have the condition here. Now we need to do, we're gonna do the same thing. I consider log hello, okay? Okay, guys, my bad. I actually crashed the page. Running variable, not HTML. You can see we got the, okay, we got the, we got the hello ten times. Same thing, or with this thing, but but but, what do we have? Uh, you know, better while using the for loops. You, while using you're using for loops, you can actually access the indexes. Like you can actually check uh, which number of the or loop you're actually running because you're you know adding the value, and you're actually defining the same value in here. Like if you're in, running a while loop, you need to mention you know t like that, and you can do like that. But while you're using uh, for loop, you can uh, actually say i is equal to zero in itself, so that you you know you know it's it's just like in you know, a garbage uh, thing. It's not defining it itself anywhere. And it's better for memory purposes. It will increase the performance as it will not store the variable anywhere. It's just like you know temporary, and you can just like you know, for i, while i is smaller than let's say, while i is smaller than two. Just run another for loop inside the for loop. I'm gonna say another for loop. We have for of for each and for in, uh, for each, uh, for of loop, and for in for of for each loops. But we are only gonna talk about for each loops because. These are not much of a things to be understood. You can just check them by yourself on the Google. I can tell you this is a quick interview info. Now we another one. You can see we have just a for loop. You can just hit the answer here. Oh my God, that's a lot of stuff. You might think why they should array dot length because probably we only use for this you know uh, for each for loops for only for that purpose. I'm gonna mention why. Now let's say here we need to define the j as zero, while j is smaller than five. J should be increasing. Okay. Now what I'm gonna do? Console the log. Okay. Uh, hello. You can see it was still ten times. Why was it ten times? Because we are we are running actually two loops interlinked with each other. First of all, we're, we are running a loop that's going to run two times. Another one we are running a loop inside the loop that's going to run five times. So it's going to run five times, and another one another time we're gonna run another loop. That means the second second loop is going to run five times, and then the condition is going to match, so the loop is going, not going to run, and this loop is also not going to run. So we have ten in total. We had ten normally, and uh, this is not the actual reason that we are we, we will be using the for loops for. 
because it's okay to use like that. And now, why actually we use loops? Let me just mention that point right here. We use loops to work with arrays. Well, yeah, you heard me right. We use loops to work with arrays, or we use loops to make statements like that to make the more work much more easier. And instead of print copy pasting uh, it ten times, we can do it like that. And what do we mean by working with arrays? So we were actually going to talk about arrays and, and, and after this one. So we are also going to talk about if else statement in this uh, one. Uh, I'm going to talk about if, if else statement in the next one. But for now, let me talk about the for loops. So now we have the for loops here. You can see on the upside we have the for loops. But now let's let array one is equal to some array. First, we have first element like that, first value. We have the second and then we have the third. Okay, we have to mention the semicolon. Okay, we got something like that. I did this by control plus B. Okay. Now, what we want to do, what if we want to access all of, we want to you know, print all of these, uh, all of these va values? What we can do, can we just go like, you know, console.log, everyone? What's this going to show? Let's see. Okay, it's showing us like that, but we want it as a string because there as a string. Can we can we do can we do something like that? Well, we're using the ES6 uh, spread operator. I'm gonna mention that in the ES6. That's all you know. We have in the ES6. This triple dots. You can do it like that also. But but while we're talking about loops, we need to talk about loops. So what we can do? We have two options. Either we're gonna run the for loops, but the for loops are not actually useful for you know if you wanna just show the things to the user, you know. If you wanna show the first, second, and third element to the user, what we're gonna do? We're gonna say uh, the array one. Whatever array we're gonna work with. Dot for each. For each is a loop, and the loop has two things. We are we don't we have not talked about the functions yet. There are two types of function: a normal function and the array function. So you will understand the forest loop much better when you are actually working with the functions. So the forest loop will loop will have a function with two. Uh, what do we say? Two arguments. Either you can have a just you know you can just give it an element or whatever name you're gonna give it this one okay I'm gonna run an error error function and I'm gonna explain the error function after some time so say so console the log element okay what do we have first second third and let me just you know, remove this console the log okay first second third in three statements so the first loops is having a function I did not talk about the functions yet but you will get this thing much much better while we're, we're going to talk about function so we will talk about my for each for each loop when we're actually going to talk about function now let me still clear the basic stuff here you can put two arguments or one argument this one can be element or whatever you want to name it like you know array you can name it like uh values and then we're going to console log the values or whatever name you're going to you want it to have you can show it like that it's going to actually you know, it's going to loop all uh, through all of the indexes in the array, and it's going to uh, you know, this is like, you know, this is like the i with the first i. You can see, it's like you know, we have the console the log array uh, with index of zero, then uh, console log with the array array index of one. It automatically you know adds the one one to the condition, and it runs the for a loop until unless the length of the array one has not completed. And uh, how we write that in the for each loop, for loop, you can see you might have already saw that for loop you can see let index is equal that index is equal to zero i while i is smaller than array one dot length i should be plus plus and then constant element or constant the log array the f that index of array so these both both of these are gonna work the same let me just show you like that like that like that. Everyone, okay. You can see first, second, third. Now you might have, you might have think, thought, like, man, this is a complicated. Now, what if you also want to show that which index it was? You can do like in here. You can do like plus i. It's gonna show you uh, zero, one, two. What to do in here? Well, like I told you, we have, we can give it two arguments. Either we can give it values, or we can also give it index and values. You cannot only give it index or values like that, or you just need to give it an index or values stuff like that. Now we have here the values. Okay, actually the index. Actually the index is going to be of the values. First of all, we have the element, and then we have the index. Or you can say name it as by i. Like 
plus index. We got the same thing, 0, 1, 2. And uh, you can, the value will be the first element, first argument, and or if you want the uh, index also, like which index it is, you can just go like plus index or blah blah, whatever stuff you want to do with index. We will be making projects in the future, so we can know much better about the uh, indexes in the future. So we got to know about the for loops and the for each loops, and this is an actually arrow function. You can also run the for each loop directly without running it as an uh, arrow function. We'll talk about that in a function. We can just make it a, as a function. And it will run the same way, it doesn't matter. So, uh, the for arrow function looks kind of clean, so that's why we'll, we mostly use arrow functions instead of using functions like this. So, well, probably that was it for the loop section. And uh, I know we got a lot of stuff. And uh, we will be doing projects soon, as soon as we get into the DOM part, because that will be much more interesting okay so now what we're gonna do I'm gonna just commit this out and uh, we successfully completed our loop section okay we completed the loops now we need to get in the if else statement guys we're actually continuing in the good part learning statements okay dot javascript now we're gonna run the statements so i'm gonna change this one to learning loops to learning uh, statements Okay, learning statements are pretty much fun because 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 while you learn statements you can actually and I have brain you can add brain to your thing you can actually you know I'm gonna make a basic program I'm gonna say something like that if this is if I'm gonna say let age is equal to 10 and what I want to do I want to console the log something if the age is below 10 i want to consider the log uh let's say you are young or if age is uh you know more than 18 i want to consider the log you're older or if the age is above 50 i want to consider the log sorry something like that so how we do that because that's actually the brain of the stuff if a statement you need to make decisions how we make decisions by using if a statement you, you need to compare the things with them with each other so for that we use the if and then we just start the you know bracket like that and then we have a curly brackets and here in here we need to put the condition what we want to check we want to check if age is e, e, is smaller than 11 that means if age is 10 9 8 7 blah blah whatever we want to console the log you are small does it actually work well yeah it did work because the age is smaller than 11 so that's why they are concerned the logging us you are small because we told them to do that okay so that was with the if statement and you can uh, have unlimited if statements let me just show you if age is uh, greater than 9 console the log your not a kid now we can see we have another if statement so that means this if statement will not actually affect this if statement that means the both these both of the if statements will run separately but what if you have you know some kind of you know validation thing you're actually having different if statements for different thing but if the age is smaller than 11 that means you just want to show the user that he's small you don't care about if something is different or something is different or not so in that case you can see if we're running under the if statement if the age is e equal to 50 okay we also need to talk about the equals things because now we're talking about if now we need to ch ch talk about the you know uh, equalizing conditions we will talk about that right now so first of all we will be using double equal to because only one equal to sign this they is going to check if the you know data type of the variables of the conditions are true or not or you know equal or not you're going to check if the the thing we're comparing the thing with if you're comparing age with 50 with a single uh, sum is equal to sign it is actually going to check you know what it's actually going to check if age is uh, integer and if 50 is integer is going to show us you're not a kid but if you want to put double equal to sign that means it's actually going to check uh the value of the things well, the thing is, thing with the double equal to sign is, 
that even if the let me show you something let s8 is equal to 50 let s h is equal to 50 now we can see in the s h they're actually showing us you're not a kid you're not a kid kid string i'm just showing you know how many things that can be happening there javascript now we can see the double equal to sign actually checks the value if the value of s h is equal to the value of fifth whatever we're checking it with it will not check the data type it will not check if they are both string integers or both strings it will only check if the values are same but the triple equal to sign will make it you know a strict check it will make sure that the only the both of the uh, the variables or uh, the condition is checking with should have a same the data type that means both should have integers or a string and both should have same value so this is you know strict checking mostly what we will be doing we will be only using the double equal to sign because sometimes you might have to have a, a string here accidentally something like that so you don't want to show any error so you're only going to use double equal to sign but it's all mainly preferred to use triple equal to sign to be more secure that you're not checking uh, an integer with a string that doesn't make sense right all right so now we got the basic stuff now we know that how we do this we just make it like that now like we were talking about we don't want to show if age is a, a greater than nine we don't want to show you're not a kid if we already you know if this condition was already passed so what we can do for that in that case we have an else if statement so else if this is going to do what is going to check if this state if condition was met this if if condition is not going to be run and if this condition was not met then this condition is going to run now let me make it something like you know if age is uh greater than 11 you're not a kid you can see because age is not greater than 11 age is 10 so it's gonna check another condition he's gonna say age if is age greater than 9 well yeah age is greater than 9 there's no uh, con uh, question in that so they're gonna show a situation because you're not a kid here they're gonna show you're small now what if both of these conditions doesn't match and you don't know any other condition that can happen you know you're saying if anything happens you want to show that now for that we're going to use only else statement okay the else is not going to have any condition that means if both of these conditions will not uh, will not be true that means both of these conditions will not match it's going to show uh, the last condition that's going to be an else condition i'm going to write an else condition with showing you we can't uh verify you now what i'm saying if age is equal to 9 okay it's not equal to 9 so we can't verify you both of these conditions will not match so now they're going to show us else condition that means we cannot verify you man you're not verifiable so we need to do something else so that we can actually verify you and you can have if condition on the inside the if condition and uh, that is totally possible you can do like you know comes on the log you're small and if uh, we can do something like you know you can do much more stuff like yeah you're not in the age stuff we cannot do much of a stuff but you can see if score is like a uh, score is greater than zero and uh, if a uh, player has a premium is equal to true you actually have a true brilliant stuff like here so you can do something like that now once we talked about this if statement let's talk about how many uh, operators that we have actually in the if statement like i told you about this is a equal to sign that we have then we have a double equal to sign then we have a triple equal to sign it's going to check the data types uh check data type and value uh it's going to uh, check value and this one's only going to check the data type check uh data type and then we have the smaller than smaller than then we have the uh greater than greater than sign then we have the uh smaller or equal to and then we have the uh, uh greater or equal to so you will be using smaller equal to greater or equal to or you can use you know if smaller you know is gonna like be like 
you know, that you know check the data type and check the value just like that so you can do it like that and we have another thing we have the and operator so these and are just going to you know check the statement if it was defined you know we're going to say if let me just show it like that and 11 you're small and uh, sh so okay now let me explain to you this thing let me say if s and s okay, s is not defined so actually the thing what happens here i'm gonna say let someone is equal to someone okay well you can see nothing happened here well why nothing happened here because this and double and operator is going to actually check if uh, the values have you know if the variables have some value it's going to check if age has value and this someone has some value if they both have values like they both contain some value they are not empty uh, then we're going to run the come this console statement we're going to just just run it you know so it is just like that you know it's, it's you know checks if value is present and you need to have two values at least you know, it's going to check age if age is there and if someone is there and what we can do instead of do like that also you can do like that or you can just you know have age mention that we're saying age how why are they showing us your small because they're only going to check if age is defined or not but if we're just going to put age that means they're going to check if age is defined or not and probably it is defined so that's why they are showing us your small or if you want to say if age as some you know you need to put an exclamatory mark is equal, is equal to that means is not equal to if age is not equal to age then show this but age is actually equal to age so it doesn't make sense if age is not equal to s age it will make sense it will show you your small so you can have the not equal to sign equal to uh, not equal to uh, have a not uh, equal to we can have a same thing you know not totally equal to so this is going to be a little bit more you know thing that it is going to check if the if the data types are different and uh, the values are different then it's going to return true and we have another thing we can do like i told you while we are doing something like you know, just gonna just commit it out now let me say we're checking this it's gonna actually check if age is defined or not you can see normally age is defined but we can you can put an exclamatory mark before this and it's gonna do like make a condition that is gonna say if age is not defined if there's no age then run this condition but there is age you can you know it's gonna seem like if age is equal to undefined then run like that it's going to be same as by putting an exclamatory mark before the age so uh, your variable yeah, is undefined okay variable okay you're gonna put your variable is defined if you're only gonna put your variable in there it's gonna say it's defined so it's going to run uh, perfectly and we have our operators and and operators so and the so we have and and our operators it's gonna check if age is not defined you can see it's gonna check if age is defined and the s age is defined only then show you are small okay if age and, and s age are defined then you should only show s your small but if uh, let's say we are running s age that means s age is not defined okay it's gonna show us this error but uh, let's say we're having uh, if s age is not defined okay s age is actually not defined but we don't want to not actually check that if they are defined or not. i'm gonna check if s age is equal to one for an example even the assessment no okay we're gonna run it like that we need to put it like that inside a bracket so 
it's gonna check if acid is equal to one then show this but actually acid is equal to 50 so acid is equal to 50 all right you're small because s age is actually equal to 50. you can put the brackets here to actually you know go into the specific you know actually you know specifically you know check the conditions so we have age if age is defined and that means the both of the conditions should return true only then the condition you know the uh the statement is going to be run so let me just like that we have a that that is not defined is defined and then we have and checks all uh check all statement uh, all statement all condition be true okay so the and is going to uh, condition be true and is going to check like you know if age and s age is equal to like that only then show this but there's another operator that is actually called as r operator so take my bad r operator you need to have two like that two things like that you cannot have only or one standing like that you can have it one but it doesn't make sense you can see all right so two okay so you can have it like that or you can have double these it, it will make your code look much better you can only have one or you can have two it will, it's just you know it's like an r you cannot write r okay wouldn't have r no we don't have r in javascript so you can just put it like that uh, like kind of like a standing bar so it's gonna check if any of those conditions are true. It's gonna check if age is defined. Well, then start this. But if age is not defined and but the s age is equal to two, then also run this. But you want to say if age is not defined and or okay, we need to run or like that. Sorry, my bad. And s or s age is equal to true. Then we're gonna run this condition. So one second, I'm not getting why they're still showing this thing. Is called the true. So it is equal to one second. Okay, so the issue was that we need to have double equal to sign. We cannot have only one equal to sign while we're not defining it inside some specific thing like that. We define it like that. So it actually does what? It's actually you know assigning the value or or to the two. It's extending two to the value of s age. And let me just show you that. Okay, you can see it's actually assigning the value. So in, for the conditions, you need to use double equal to sign. Okay, it's showing us nothing because the condition was not met. If we want to put one only there, it's going to show us nothing. But what if we're going to remove the exclamatory mark from the age? It's going to show us this statement because it was matched. Now the, we're going to say that either the age should be undefined or the s age should be equal to fifty. What it's going to do? It's going to show us your our condition statement because the condition was met. We're showing, showing us an R statement. Now let's add uh, another one. We have the that. Now we have uh, our statement. So we got things like that. Once, so guys, you understood it till here. Now let me mention you something about the loops. Like I was talking talking about, you need to have conditional loops. So conditional loops. Let me just show you that right here. Now let's say we have a for loop for uh, i is equal to zero and i is smaller than five. I should be plus plus because that means I will be increasing and uh, what we're gonna say here we're gonna say if if age is equal to is double equal to is equal to uh, if age is equal to 12 okay so there are two types of the things you can have in the if that's if statement if you if the if statement is only going to have be of one line now let's say we're on we're some doing something like that and we're gonna hear you know some uh, 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 statement of of one line. We're running some statement of one line. Then you don't have to mention these, you know, curly bra brackets. You just you can just run it like that. You can say, if age is equal to twelve, then what we want to do, we want to just be like you know, if age is equal to twelve, uh, we can do something. You know, let's say, uh, we can just know if age is equal to twelve, we can just break it. So what does this? break thing does so if the break will actually you know stop the loop at that point where the age is equal to 12 and uh, I'm gonna say if age is equal to I now I'm gonna mention the age as uh, 10 uh, I have mentioned age as 10 
while the age is smaller than 15 and the uh, age is 7 at the starting point okay so we are just breaking it like that but we actually wanna I wa wanna cancel the log something so what we can do we can just like cancel the log uh, after the break I'm gonna cancel the log I well actually this will not they will not show I okay they actually did show I so you can see we did not actually got the break point when it was broke because the break will actually you know close the function close the this statement so what we can do we can just first of all console the log it and then we can break it okay if I refresh okay so it's not gonna show anything inside that like that okay so now okay so okay now we can see we have two can two you know two condition two statements so we need to have uh, a curly brackets now I'm constantly logging that only that statement when the age is equal to i that means at 10 that means i is equal to 10 and we're breaking the statement and after the break statement that loop will not run more because so it will save our performance it will save a lot of our stuff and the, while I was talking about the semicolons now this is the time to actually mention the semicolons the semicolons I wanted to mention is that if you wanna come we use the semicolons only if you wanna compress the JavaScript uh, what do we mean by compressing the JavaScript? I'm gonna say if it is greater than 50, then uh, we're gonna say uh, then do something, and uh, we're gonna have a okay. We're gonna do let's say we're gonna if it is equal like that, then we're gonna say something, and then we're gonna we're gonna have this semicolon. Then we're gonna say else if. And this else is going to be a different condition. Let's see this. Age is smaller than 50. Age is smaller than 10. You can see I'm putting random st things. Uh, something else. Now you can see while I'm doing this thing, it's allowing me to do this thing because only because of the semicolon. It's getting that is this thing should is actually a new line. But if I'm actually putting them in a new line, I don't have to mention the line break because it that was will detect the line break by itself. So these things is just how it goes. You can just do it like that. You can actually compress your JavaScript and save more space. And while you're only, you know, just like when age is equal to like that, if you're doing something, you can just, you know, specify the break there. You know, you can do like uh let's remember this thing. Remember this thing. Okay, you're gonna say if age is equal to i, that means you're increasing the score. Let's say you're increasing the score, score is something that you want to be increasing. You're gonna increase the score till is the score will not uh, reach the balance of the user. Something like that. You can do. You can do something like that. You can have a lot of things. So I will be making some projects so that you will be more comfortable with this one. We want to break our code like that there because we don't want to run a uh, loop from seven to fifteen, and only if your statement is uh, you know somewhere having true statement, then it should be break right there. So well, uh, that was. Uh, pretty much it for this uh, video and uh, for not actually the for this video I mean this for this uh, you know this one tutorial and there's another thing we have this break thing and another thing is also uh, another thing, thing is called uh, called as continue let me show you that console the log uh, something now you can see we have console the log something we're showing this something three times because after running three times the fourth time we're breaking the statement but now let's say we are using the continue instead. Now, uh, while you, we, we are using continue, it will, once this statement has checked, it will not check it again. It will just, you know, only run these things. It will not check this. If this statement has been matched, it will not check it. It will, you know, it will kind of like a skip the stuff. So, you can do that thing to save more space. No, not actually the space. You can you know, do this thing to get the condition much more, you know, real, reliable thing. Well, probably will never use continue <laughs> because I know it was a little bit confusing stuff. So, just to break your work will be done. You can see it broke off the three checks because the statement was run true and uh, it broke the uh, for loop, and that's and it will work same. Uh, say it will work same for the while loop, but it will it will not work for the for each loop because the for each loop doesn't work like this. You cannot break the chain. You cannot do the stuff that you want to do. So. Well, I uh, well one thing I guess it also works for the follow thing. Let me just see for each. Let me just take a look at that. Okay.
Okay, one, one, two, three, one to five. Well, it will also work for the uh, for each loop. I'm sorry. Dot for each element. Element. Okay, this is actually now. Uh, uh, like I told you before, uh, the what we say arrow functions. I will be mentioning this in the next in the next one. Okay, I will mention after this after the arrays. Okay, that will be much better. So we have arrow function. Now we can say if e is equal to two break. Okay, and also consider the log element. Okay, illegal illegal break statement. Okay, like I told you before, you cannot break anything. <laughs> you cannot break anything in this one. Okay, so it doesn't make sense now. You cannot break for each loops statements. It will loop throughout the whole thing. If you want to have some space, you want to save some performance, you can use for loops. But the for each loops are built like that, and for off and for in loops are same like that. I didn't mention them because they are not needed. Well, I hope you got this point, you got the points. And I will be providing all of the links down, you know, all of the things uh, somewhere around. So you should not be confused probably what what you need to do, where you need to do, how you need to do, why you need to do. And uh, I guess one thing I mentioned to forgot to mention in the learning variables uh, is that the booleans. Did I mention the booleans anywhere? Okay, the booleans are actually no true false. It will return true somewhere and it will return false somewhere. So let's say let's... Uh, uh, let someone that is you're gonna say let is uh, uh, present is equal to true or uh, we can also save it as zero zero is also detected as false by default by the computer so you can have it as false and uh, let is absent is equal to true so you can do like that and uh, these are going to be number variables probably so I'm gonna just let me just copy these two. Let me go. Let me go back to the learning statements. What if we have this, these two here? Okay. I'm gonna say. Okay. So basically, is actually no. We're gonna check. We're gonna say if. Okay. Actually, putting the variable here. Only putting the variable. Your variable is defined. Or we're gonna say is true. Is true. Is not true. Okay. It's actually checking is not true and is true. I want to see like is present. If is present, console the log someone. Okay. If is present, is present. But it is present is actually false. So we need to mention like this exclamation mark. That means if is present is actually a, has a false value or whatever the thing is inside it is actually false or you can see undefined. It's going to re re uh, return the same. Or if it's a uh, present is you know zero, it has nothing. It's gonna return the same. So the false and true means basically the same thing. It's gonna be false or true. And uh, we're gonna if we wanna say if is absent, if it is absent, it's gonna be false. It's gonna say console log someone. But actually it is true. So we're gonna see is 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 absent. Is it called true? It's gonna return something like that. So I hope you got the point. Or we can also say if is absent is equal to one because uh, by default, like I told you, true is de denied, de uh, denoted by one, and false is denoted by zero. If you want to say if is absent is equal to zero, it's gonna return nothing. But if you want to say is present, is present, is present is equal to zero, it's gonna show someone because false are denoted as zero values. So guys, 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 well we had a good journey till now. We have a lot of more stuff to learn. We have arrays, function, async function, ES6 selectors, API integration, email this and local story, CSS attributes. Man, that's a lot of stuff. And I know you are really bored right now. Well, I'm really excited to give you in any project, but with the knowledge that you have currently. Ah huh? Oh I was You're actually not going to be able to do anything. You see? Like I will give you some project, but what will you do? While well, you're not doing something with the HTML that leads to you know that will not be fun I will tell you something to, to make a, a thing like that to make a calculator thing here in the DOM here in the console log but that will not make sense that you will be so bored man ah what the hell is this person saying to me well well what are, what are we actually going to do I think the async function and the function ES6 things I think you might you have might have got a little bit bored so what actually we're we gonna do we're actually gonna start this lecture after this one and uh, 
it's only for you guys because I think you might have got a little bit bored while fucking mode. Only the arrays, only. So guys, I forgot to mention you a quick way to use the if else statement. Like I mentioned, you could you can do use quick if else statement like that. Now let me mention you a few quick if else statements that you can do. You can see where the is present is equal to zero. Let me just show like that, and we can say as if because we're running an if one and one line conditions. We can do like as if if present. Is it called to one? Then console the log. No one. And if it's not that, you can see we have someone because it's equal to one. And we're gonna do like else statement like that. But the else statement is not gonna have a condition, so it will have something like that. We can have it uh, in the con else statement. We can have a console the log. Nothing uh, happens. Okay. Uh, let's say it's actually equal to three. We're getting nothing happens. So this uh, one liner statements it will help you a lot to boost your uh, non quickness encoding. So what we can do, we can just like go like if if you, it's not you can it's not important that you have all of your code should be a one statement one liner. If your if if else if statement is one liner, you can just like that. And if your else statement is only one line code, that means it doesn't have two lines of code. You can do use something like this one. Okay, it will be much more efficient for you to use. And uh, I only didn't want to mention the quick way to use if else statement, but I also wanted to mention how we can use the if else statement without mentioning if this thing happens then do that so what we can do there's a quick way to do something like something that you might be want that you might want to do let me say let score is equal to this make it like that let score is equal to 15 okay so now I'm going to say uh, let uh, check is equal to here in the check what we can have in the check we can have score now we have a question mark that means it's gonna be a first condition it's gonna be a first if condition if score uh, is greater than uh, 20 then it's going to be check otherwise okay if there is score okay no 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 actually this is thing this is the condition okay this is the condition one second okay guys now let me just actually show you that actually about how this thing works first of all you need to put your condition okay this is a quick thing while you have if you are while you are assigning some values to your, any variable or something like that and you want to have a quick if else statement so we can use these things it's like you know first of all put the condition if score is greater than 20 if it's greater than 20 the first the column means if the condition is met true if this condition is true then i'm going to say uh score score is great or otherwise the question mark means else this is a this uh this means if and this means else if this statement was not met then what we should do well if it was not met then one say score is small small okay one second i did the wrong thing the column means s else and the question mark means if okay the question mark means if the score is greater than 20 then show score is great otherwise if this statement was not met then show the score is small and now we're gonna do console the log uh check i'm gonna ch console the log check now you can see the score is small right? because probably it's not greater than 20. now what if it's 151. the score is great now you can see you can do this thing you can have here you don't have to have strings here you can have whatever you want you can have any variable here you can define any variable here you can define anything here that you want but, but this is you know a quick cool stuff that you might want to have you can just have you know if score was greater than this you can have if the score was greater than the last score then the score should be equal to the current score the latest the high score otherwise you can have something different like this you can make the logic by yourself but this is the thing that i wanted to mention you can have a quick statement like that and uh, well yeah that was a quick that was a thing that I want to mention last about the conditions and uh, this thing is actually called it's actually called as a ternary ternary operator so you can you know probably we, what we do we actually put them mention them like this one so it's going to be more specified you can put whatever condition you want to put there and then and ternary operators only has an if and else you cannot have if and else if and then else it only has the question mark and the column so you can have you cannot have multiple statements in there but this is a good thing that you should keep in mind while you're dealing with something that you need to do quickly that you want to sort out quickly 
So that was it for the conditions, and I will meet you in the next video while we are actually going to talk about uh, the selectors. Okay, guys, so here we go, and I'm, I'm back. So we talked about the if else conditions, but we are not only going to talk about the if else conditions because we need to talk about the conditions. There are two types of conditions. One is an if else condition, if else is a good condition, but sometimes you want your you know statement to be more clean and more fast. So in that case, we might you, you might want to use the switch conditions. Well, the switch conditions are kind of closely like to the if else condition, but it will give you more you know it will give you more uh, hand it have more help in, 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 in checking the condition if you want to check uh, conditions of one single thing like. You want to check the condition of score. If score is greater than uh, if score is greater than ten, do this. If score is greater than twenty, do this. If score is greater than fifty, do this. If score is greater than sixty, do this. And an if else condition that may become a little bit a hectic process because you need to write so many if else if else if else else if else if else if. But in the switch statement, these things becomes much more easier. Okay. So what actually do we do in the switch statement? Let me just show you that. First of all, I'm gonna comment this out. I hope you understood the booleans. Uh, already it's not much of a big deal so it's an easy thing you might have understood that very well and I know that you did understood that very well so now we're gonna have the switch statement if you want if you are only going to write switch you can have you can get the switch statement so let me explain to you in the switch statement you might have seen that they are showing a switch statement starting just like an if statement but here instead of putting a condition we will not be putting a condition we will just be putting the thing that we are checking okay uh let's say we are checking score probably okay let me just commit this out so that it's they're not gonna mess with the thing now let me let me say let's score is equal to 10 okay we're saying score is equal to 10 in our case right now well when this score is equal to 10 what we need to do we need to have we need to give the score here okay now we will be providing the score here what the case will handle what the case will have we will say the case will have the value of the score whatever value we have in the score is going to be like of case okay, one second oh if case is 10 if the score is 10 this comes out log score is 10 all right okay you can see the the score is 10 only because we have the score actually 10 now let's say we have 11 score What's gonna happen? They are not going to show anything, but we can have another case, another case of twenty. We can have a console the log of our score is uh, twenty. All right, here you can see we have the score is twenty, and then we're gonna have a score is uh, two thirty. Okay, let's say thirty, and we're gonna have a score is forty. I'm just showing an example guys score is 40 all right so here you can see now if the score is actually 20 okay now the score is actually 20 you can see okay you might have you might have been a little bit confused why are they running all of the conditions if this condition was met well the thing is when the case comes like if this condition was met this case that means the value was 20 and this condition was met what actually happens they're gonna consider the log the score is 20 they're not gonna consider the log this thing because it was not met but it uh, we are actually not breaking the condition right there we're still continuing the condition when we are still continuing the you know the thing so it will not check if the condition is met or not it will just keep running it will just run all of the code below it it will not check any other condition after one condition is met successfully so what you have to do to prevent this thing from happening to prevent you know this kind of issue so what we're going to do i'm just going to add a break we need to add break after every statement like whatever statement is being matched we need to just add a break okay you just have to add a break and uh, why is that default here you might be asking why is there a default we need to just now write the case it can be a string it can be whatever you want it to be and again colon and then on another under line another line you need to have the thing okay and what default it works as a like, you know, default pos in a default thing like let's say we have a score of 21 and they're gonna show nothing because none, none of them conditions are met what we're gonna say on default we're gonna say for the default if nothing is met I'm gonna say control the log your score is invalid okay your score is invalid but what if it was 20 what they're gonna show 
score is 20 what if it was 30 what they're gonna show score is 30 what if it was 40 okay 50 score is invalid 40 okay score is 40 so this is a basic thing there's not much of a thing to understand here here you can use this this kind of stuff you know to make so many if you are if your program has so many conditions like if your website has so many conditions like if the user does this show this if the user does this show this if the user does this show this so you can use the case uh this uh, case in switch case statement to make your code much more better and much more reliable and i have personally used this case switch case statement uh, many times in my uh life so well yeah guys another thing to mention guys is that while you're having the cases here switch statement you cannot actually check you cannot put something like you know if case score is greater than is score score is smaller than five then you're gonna see if like you know score is actually one of the five let's say score is three what you're gonna see your score is invalid or we can say if you're gonna to do like case case score is equal to five and we have year five they're gonna show you your score is invalid because it doesn't take conditions the case statement doesn't take condition it only takes value and the value is going to be whatever value you want for now we want the 20 value here and if you're actually going to have 20 value they're going to show you the score is 20 and please guys keep this switch statement in mind because it's going to help you a lot in the future so that'll be a much better thing for you guys so i hope you guys understood this uh switch statements much better we are i'm also going to talk about the template literals but one second i'm just thinking okay we're getting started with the selectors so i will talk about template literals in the selectors itself because we have a lot of things in the selectors and i know that guys it, this video might be a little bit bigger but just bear with me okay so there we go we have this thing we're gonna make another file for learning selectors.javascript now this is the fun part okay we are not going we are not actually going to deal with the website stuff okay learning selectors itself okay now we're actually learning selectors so to actually mess with the with the elements inside the document what we are going to do we're going to make some basic stuffs okay so the basic stuff is going to contain like let's see we have an h1 so when i'm going to make it like that we're going to make h1 heading this uh, this is our heading okay, now we can see this is our heading we actually don't want the console uh, console right now so you can see this is our heading and we got the heading right there and uh, this is our paragraph right so this is our paragraph and this is our heading now here while you're messing around with the you know while you're using selectors in the javascript we have a few options let me mention all of the options first of all you need to write document dot so when you write document that means you are actually you know having the documents refers to the dom that means your html or css code whatever your website code has is going to have the html css code so document means your website dot and this dot leaves you different functions that you can actually use to access your you know you know your html or C your html code actually your elements to access your elements you have a lot of document the url actual element and the event listener uh, you have i know location dot you have a location document dot location that you know document gives you access to your whole website the location gives you access to the url and we have a lot of things uh, document dot uh, query selector we have a document dot query selector uh, i'm gonna explain all of them okay i'm gonna explain all of them so now let's get started i'm gonna use first of all we will be using document dot query selector so the query selector will have uh, a, a string it's not gonna have a number well that's obvious you cannot have a uh, number in an id uh, number in an id but it should be it will be, be converted in the string by itself later on you can convert the string into id into number by using prototypes like i mentioned before using the number function so that's different thing now the document that query selector would actually you know actually let you to select the select whatever you want to select inside your document so we can you know we can say i want to select the h1 so we have a heading so we are directly selecting the h1 this means we're selecting the uh element itself but by doing the following this method by selecting the h1 itself your website might have a lot of 
h1 tags in and if you don't want to change all of them if you want to change all of them uh all of the h1 tags it will actually change all of the h1 tags well that's uh that's okay then but if you don't want to change that well okay no actually so the query selector will only change the first h1 element i'm going to show you now in, when you click dot okay when you click dog, you have a lot of options. Replace child, remove child, they replace switch, scroll, hide, scroll, bye bye. Set attributes, get attributes. You also have a get attribute as, uh, point and style. We will talk about this style when we are you know uh, dealing with CSS in our website. So the set attributes actually let helps you to set attributes like adding values or adding some custom uh, attributes to your what do we say? Uh, to your HTML code and it will help you. I will uh, explain it uh, after some time. So we have a lot of options. You can see we have on, on touch start, on touch move. We have uh, event listeners. I'm going to talk about event listeners later on. But the basic stuff, the basic thing that we are, uh, we might be, we will be using is dot inner text. Is it called to console the log? Okay. We are actually going to do what? Actually, going to put all of this inside the console. The log. Now let's go back. Let's go here. So you can see they are actually showing us this is our heading. So what I actually did here, the dot, the whatever selector you are using, and dot inner text will actually return you all of the text that is uh, you know inside that element inside that uh, you know selector. That that means the heading H1 selector had the uh, text of this is the heading and it doesn't matter if it will not show you any you know whatever html elements it has whatever tags it has it's only going to return you the text whatever text you have in between them and it's not going only limited to the h1 if you're going to select the body let me show you if you're going to select the body they're going to show us this is a heading this is a paragraph because a body has two texts this is a heading and this is a paragraph so you can select the body using the query selector but let me explain you some you know limitation while using the query selector now let's suppose we have two our second heading now you can see we have a second heading but here we're only getting the first heading like i mentioned while you are using the query selector and you're putting some element in there or you're putting some class or some uh, id in there i'm going to actually show you how we can you know do actually like that stuff like that what actually is going to happen you will uh, the query selector will only select the first element or the first you know well uh, element that's you know uh, available on the top of the code on from it's because the code is being read by uh, up to down so it will just select the only the first iteration of that element and it will not select the second one so what if you want to select all of the h1 h1 elements what if you want to get the text of all of the h1 elements what are you going to do in that case so in that case we are going to do this is a console dialog just to see if the uh, you know inner text is good or not we're going to have document dot query selected all so the query selected all when we're selecting query selected all and we're getting the inner text of them Okay, so probably the query selector all dot inner text will return undefined because we are not selecting only one of the text, we're selecting two of these texts. So it will be added in an array. Okay, let me just explain that this thing to you guys. Now here you can see when we are doing the document dot query selector all, whatever value this is going to have, it's going to add them in an array. Because when you are doing query selector all, all actually you know adds the values into inside an array and you cannot directly access the you know uh, value of the array by just doing like inner text you need to select the indexes like zero dot inner text if i'm going to do like that now you can see they're showing me this is a heading what if i select the index of one that means the put that the element that's available on the position two that's our second element which is this is our second heading so you can do something like that and i'm going to show you how you can you know save these values inside a variable and then use them later on for your things we're gonna do a lot of exciting things but for now let's keep this uh, thing aside because i need to mention all of the possible ways you can select the document and this these are not waste things these are important things to be kept in mind now you might have already familiar with the id in classes and if you have read the html css uh, properly and you should uh, you, uh, you, there are a lot of videos for that you should 
well, I suggest you to watch any good videos like Code with Mosh or something like that. So let's say our heading has a class that is uh, heading one, and to mention that you can have a lot of classes inside a heading, like we have a class of heading one, and we have a class of heading first. That means the both of the whatever the you know values of the CSS you have put it in for these elements, both of them uh, will run. But your I know uh, your element can only have one ID, and then ID should be you know unique. You cannot just you know use two three IDs for a single element, but you can use multiple classes for an element. And we will not prefer you to use IDs multiple time in your uh, document because they should be used specifically for only one element. Because if you're going to use them for one or two elements, they're going to cause issues that you will not actually notice. But later on, you will find some bugs that were going around with your application or with your website. So we have here two headings, heading one and heading first. Well, you might be already familiar with you can add multiple classes into your, you know, head in, into your uh, elements. Whatever element it is, it's not only about H1, you can put literally anything here. So let's say we have heading one. Now, I want to select the heading one. I don't know what the element is. Is H1, is it H2, is it S3? I just want to select the all of the, you know, all of the elements that have the class of heading. Well, while I need to do that, I don't have to, you know, go like, the document dot query selector all, but instead what I can do, let me just uh, remove the console log because I know it's a little bit confusion. So for that we're gonna do document dot get element by class name. All right, here you can see a lot of things. You can do a lot of things. You know, you have a name attribute for a you know name attribute uh, for a what we say for an element. You have a tag element for a tag name. You can just you know just directly choose a tag name if you have made some you know uh, some custom tags. So you can just access them by using the get elements by tag name, or you can get elements by tag names. So it will uh, select a lot of them. Well, actually, you know, query dot query selector does all of the things. But if you want to be more specific while you're doing something, you can just go around these stuffs. Only they're, they're not much of a thing. But there's a get element by ID, get element by class name, by name, by tag name, by tag names. So this time we're gonna use get elements by class name. Now you might have here, you might see here, they're actually saying get elements. That means while you're doing get elements, you're also you're going to get an array probably in return because you might have a you know a lot of what do we say? You might have a lot of uh, classes in there. Let's say heading heading one, right? Getting the heading one dot inner text like I mentioned before. Now we're gonna uh, save this value inside a variable constant heading is equal to this, alright? It should make sense. Now we're gonna say console.log heading. I'm console.log in the heading. So you can see they give me undefined. Why are they giving me undefined? Okay, so I sh like I told you before, while well, we're getting elements, that means we're not only getting a single element. So whatever we're gonna get, it doesn't matter if there's only one. Uh, it does if there's only one element with that class it will get you know it will add this or whatever value is gonna get it will add it inside an array so when we're getting dot in a text it's gonna get uh, we'd have to get we're only gonna get the elements inside this one so you can see we have an HTML collection that means we actually are you know dealing with the DOM so what we're gonna do what we can do now you can have a heading you can select particular whatever whichever you want to so select like let's say we want to select the first index that means this one. Okay, so now you might be here. You can see that while we are using the document dot like get elements by class name, it doesn't matter by using class name. You can only you can also get the same thing while you're using the you know while you're using the uh, document dot get element by ID or query selector or query selector all. It's all work for the same. You can see we can actually update the things because we're actually you know actually editing the uh, the estimate in itself. You can see we have. All of that we have a heading we have all of our element that we has the heading one and you can have another element we can add this heading one to this this element also heading one so you can see now if I go like heading one so this is a heading now we are selecting h1 okay so actually it's h1 one second let me just take a look at that so we have a class heading one
Okay, so now here you might be a little bit confused about like why are they showing us like this one? Why are not they? Okay, so the thing is that before you saw we had only one element. So while we were accessing that element, they, are, they were directly, you know, showing us the heading of that element. But now when we have added the class to another element, like we have added the class here also. Now if I remove this class, they are directly going to show me one second. They are directly going to show me that thing. But in the case well there are two or more than two, they are not actually going to show you like that. They will not be showing you element like this one. They're gonna show you h1 dot heading or h1 or your element dot whatever class you have in there. So you have already realized that. And now here you can do like inner text. You only want to get the inner text of that thing. You will only get the inner text, and there's not only inner text, there's also a thing called as inner HTML. The HTML should be in capital, okay? So inner HTML will probably return you the same thing, but 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 by using the dot inner HTML, you can actually change the HTML of the elements. Now, if you want to change, you, you can use the dot inner HTML. You can just you know be like, I'm gonna show you inner HTML is it is it called to? different, okay? Different. You can see we were actually able to uh, change the uh, text of the element, but using the dot inner text. But by using the dot inner text, we can actually change the HTML of the element. Let me show you dot inner HTML. Is it called to? We can make it an A, A, something, something. All right. So you can see here we are getting A something. One second, where did it go? Let me just go click here. All right. You can see we actually added the A something inside this heading. So we are actually when we are dealing with the dot when we're using dot inner HTML, it will actually add this thing inside that uh, inside the class or inside the ID that we're dealing with okay so you cannot actually particularly change the same you cannot you know change this one because it will create a, a, a mask car now let's suppose you're having you're selecting a heading one and in the HTML you have added like you know a and there is no heading one so it will become confusion and the JavaScript will not cannot deal like that so it will just you know by using dot in the HTML you can actually add the elements inside this one and by using plus is equal to sign you can actually do what you can actually add multiple things you know by using plus is equal to look by using equal to you are actually saying that this something should be added inside the HTML itself okay but when you're doing plus equal to that means it should be added inside the HTML just keep the old one and I'll add this one also you can see we have the old HTML here this is what heading and we have the new we have the new things here that we have added just right now we have added this HTML and uh, what if we do the thing inside the inner text let me just copy this thing. I'm going to show you this. You cannot add it inside the inner text, you know, inside that. You can see here we have this A and A tag inside a text. It's not and it recognizes it as an element itself. So for adding something as an element, you need to use the dot inner dot in an HTML. And if you're using the get and get elements by class, you need to you know get the index like that because it's an array. So you have already familiar you're already familiar with arrays, so it should be pretty easy for you. All right. So while you're filming, while we got things till here, we're gonna move ahead. We're gonna say constant id is called the document dot get elements. Or you can say document dot get element by id. Okay. Now by when we're getting something by id, what uh, can we do? You know, let me show you that real quick. Let's say we have an ID of someone, right? Now this uh, second heading has the ID of someone. Uh, this uh, the ID things is a little bit you know cool thing if you actually even understand how the ID thing works. The getting the element by ID will give you more control over uh, an element. You can change the value, you can get the value, you can change the text of that. But sometimes when you have a lot of uh, classes, you cannot actually do the things using the uh, get elements by class name. Because it will become a little bit hectic process, but the element because the element is specific, you cannot have multiple elements for multiple you know things that will cause errors. So when you are doing like document dot get element by ID, we're actually getting that only. We can only get let me show you ID. In the console, we are actually getting that element. It's just a much of a, a different thing. You have the same things. You can if you want to put click dot, you can see uh, get attributes has attributes. You know, let me show. Uh, there's a thing like call as get attribute. You can just like get attribute and uh, okay. 
you can now just name it as ID. I want to get the attribute ID, so ID doesn't have anything. Okay, qualified in a string. Um, so we have we haven't added any attribute. Let me see. Has attributes. It's any function, so I'm ready to implement has attribute. All right, guys. Never mind. We are not going to do with this stuff with the hat and get attributes. I will just talk on the end of this, you know, I know this tutorial. We, I'm into this tutorial, okay? So you can see we have the elements. Now, what you can do, you can see, you can, we have, I already told you about the inner text and inner HTML, and we have a few more things. And just check that. You can actually say, you know, id.hidden, if it's hidden or not, and input mode inner text. There's not much of a thing that you will be using, and I'm not going to mention all of the things. You can check the last uh, child by using last child. Last child. You can get the next sibling, which means the next uh, ID. That's uh, there, and uh, I'm just checking if there's something cool that you, you can use. If you use the on click, uh, on click. Right, so we're, we're gonna talk about that in event listeners. All right, guys. So this is the we're gonna you can do the same thing by the get element by ID. There's not much of a different thing. And then we have what? What are we talking about? Document dot get element by tag name. We're not gonna mention tag name because it doesn't make sense. Okay. Now let me ex let me mention something cool about ID. Okay, the cool thing about ID is that. If you have some ID, you know how you have some unique ID, you know, with the name of something cool, cool, something, and inside the JavaScript, you have not defined any variable with that cool something name. What you actually can do, let me just show you. You actually can do, you just like cool something. You can just you know, you can access the cool something directly in the console or directly into your inside your uh, JavaScript file. Because the ID has a prop has a cool property that you actually don't have to define the ID in your JavaScript selector, but just make sure to if you are having any other you know variables with the same name as the ID, you have to define the ID inside any variable. Then otherwise you can access them directly without writing the long code document dot get element by ID or document dot query selector blah blah stuff like that. You don't have to do like that. You just go like in a console log your thing, or you can have like. You can do so many, literally so many things by that. You can even change the inner text of that inner text. So the thing is, is that when you're, you know, getting the ID like that, they will not actually show you the functions of it because the JavaScript doesn't know that what is called something because it doesn't under, it doesn't, it thinks it's not defined. But the browser will does know it is not, it is defined actually because the browser will check, you actually check the HTML and the see and the whole website. But the JavaScript has only access to the JavaScript itself. So. You're gonna say inner inner text is equal to someone. Alright, now you can see it actually changed the inner text. It changed the inner text to someone. While we are not defining it anywhere, we can still access it. That's the cool thing that I like about IDs. So we are we talking about this one. Now let me just talk about the query selector in brief. Because query selector is not only limited to getting the elements. We can use the query selector to get the to you get the classes. We can use the query selector to get the IDs and we can use query selector to become most most specified. Like if there is something in an H in in your HTML doc in your HTML uh, elements, or if you want to get more specified, you have not defined any ID or any class. I will always prefer to define any ID of class. Or if you have not, you can use the selectors. I mean, I'm gonna explain that well now, right now. But for now, let me just say how we can access the class in the query selector. First, we need to add a dot and then into add the dot, uh, class name. In our case, that is heading one. We're saying constant text is equal to heading one. Okay, now console. Okay, console dot log test. This is a heading. So by putting the dot means we are actually defining it's this as an heading. This as as this as in class. Now, what if we want to access? Uh, you know, let's say we want to access an ID using query selector. You need to put hash. And then you need to put the name of the ID selector. That for now we we're using the cool something. We can do the same thing, and this is a second heading. The cool the, the second heading had our ID of cool something. So you can access IDs like this using the query selector. And uh, let me mention. 
something that's going to actually you know make you feel good. So what do we have? We have the H1H1. Now well, let's say we have a div. Inside the div we have we have a span. Okay. Yes. Okay. No mind. We have a span tag. Inside the span tag we have another div tag. Inside the div tag we have some heading. In our most heading, all right? It's gonna show up here, but we know that this is a lot inner. And uh, how do we actually access this uh, inner most heading? Well, you can do the thing. You can just give it an ID, and you don't have to worry about that. Or you can give it a class, and you actually don't have to worry about that. But what if they, we don't, we will not give it an ID or class? Class. How are we going to access this? Because this is a lot deep inside. Well, all you have to do is just click here. And click on your elements and right click on the on your element and click copy and just copy the javascript path okay just copy the javascript path it's a cool step it's a cool thing that i really like about the javascript you just, you just need to click on the copy javascript path and it will select a query it will have a query selector by itself let me just show you you're going to paste them here you can see this automatically the documents are autom automatically getting the query selector because the query selector has only this ab ability to select the elements like this one it doesn't have any class it doesn't have any ID but it only has elements so you can select elements like first of all the body inside the body we have the inside the div we have a span inside the span we have the div inside the div we have h1 you don't have to be so much specific you can be this much so much specific only if you want something you know to be more secure or otherwise you can just you know you can just define inside the div there's an h1 and you want to get that h1 and you will still get the same thing let me just show you okay we're gonna have it as constant test is it called it like that Okay, innermost heading. We're still getting the same result while we are selecting only div and heading. But in your in your website, they can be so many div and headings. Uh, div then inside the div, you will have so many h1 tags. So you can be more specific. I can be inside the body, inside this thing, like inside this, 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 this. We have this. So this is the advantage of selecting a query selector. And not only that, the query selector will only also give you an advantage of. Let me show you. Now let's say we have a class of uh something uh something underscore cool because it will it will be read as a single class so a class of something cool now we have the same class for the this is paragraph okay now if we want to select uh, this one uh copy javascript path okay now let's go back in here yes like that constant test is equal to now we can see we actually select the body, div, span, div, and h1. But instead, if you don't want to select the h1 tag, you want to select the, the tag which has that class. What you can do, you can just directly, you know, here, go like what I added here. What's the name? Something cool. You can just now add like dot something underscore cool, and it will work the same. You see? You can also, you know, if you have some ID after this one, you can uh, have a like, let's say. Now an h1 tag okay let's say we have okay we have a div inside the div we have an s2 tag which has an id of cool cool okay we have id of cool so you can actually select that thing right okay so let me just show you something that's something that's cool now we have the id of cool the class actually don't matter but when there's id of cool because we know the id is only unique throughout the whole document you cannot have two ids in any element inside the whole document it's only specific for only one element the website does know that but when you click on the call and you right click and select and you select the copy javascript path let me show you what do you think they're gonna show are they gonna show you like body div span and then add the end hash something cool or something cool well no you're wrong if you think about that because they're gonna only show you hash cool because the query selector does know that the id is unique you don't have to get all of you know has just like all of that you know document where it's located because ID is unique and you only have one ID and that's why I'm saying don't have to ID mention the same ID two times it will cause errors because it's not how JavaScript works it only has one ID so we need to use it as a single particular ID okay so you understood the things till now now let me show you how we can make your website be like more like dynamic so making website dynamic is a literally good thing that everyone likes to do so how we can do that make your website dynamic so let's say let's suppose okay let me just say something 
Let's say constant score, we have a score is equal to 15. And constant name is equal to Eldonin. Okay? Constant name is equal to Eldonin. Now let me just, no, let me just delete all of this stuff because we don't actually need this one. Uh, I'm gonna say select a tutorial. All right, we have the selected tutorial. Now let's say we have a S3 tag that has an ID of check. Now here in the check we don't have anything in the in the text. Okay, we're supposing that we don't have anything in the text. Now what should happen while well, we don't have anything in the text? We want to. We want our oh, we want ourselves to add the text by ourselves. Okay, now we're gonna add constant incoming incoming val as as check. Okay, it doesn't matter. We can use it without defining this check because, as we know, we have the trick. We have, we can just directly show the ID. But only for you guys. Just to not to confuse you guys a lot, we can just like that. Document get element, get element check. And now, if I want to create a const final version, is it called to what we can do here? We can go like incoming val plus 15 plus incoming val plus score plus name. So we can actually have a name like that. We need to have capital name probably so capital N with the name so I wanna I'm only showing you this to show you that how complicated your code can become and how to fix the complication now we have your soft stuff like that actually we need to get the dot inner, inner text so we can just define it here okay oh dot dot text text content well dot inner text and text content is the same thing so you can either use the inner text or you can use the dot text content it doesn't matter okay you just you know different things okay so now here you can see we have 15 elderly well it doesn't it, it didn't have any text uh, this incoming well value didn't have any text so it probably didn't matter it a lot but 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 we are not actually going to add the thing inside that what we're doing in the final version we're going like is equal to this and then we are what we are gonna say we're gonna say incoming val dot inner okay inner text okay we can see this incoming val is equal to final version and we can say incoming val sum into a variable okay it's a constant sorry let's make it let okay so now you can see we're actually uh, changing the text we, we need to use inner text to change the text content dot text content is equal to that and you can actually incoming value is equal to the final version and then we're gonna okay so we actually changed the, uh, the incoming value to this one Otherwise, we can actually do one thing. And one cool thing we can do is just, just like you know, text is equal like that, so it will be more specified. Okay, now we can see we have the value here inside the hash check. We have this thing like that because when we're changing the inner text, we need to get the inner text here. I can just get the text content. Okay, that was the problem with the text content. Okay, you might ask. Well, there's no problem with text content, so you can just in a text or text content, whatever you suppose you like. All right, now what we actually did here, we actually had a constant that was the final version in which we added the score with the name. That means we had 15 elderly, and then we got like incoming value dot inner text. Well, actually we defined the incoming val as this ID, so which means it can actually control the element. You don't have to define the document dot get element by ID anywhere. Well, you're you know writing this. That means you're actually calling. You're writing this thing. So when we do that, then we click dot uh, dot. It's gonna show all of the functions that you have access to for the to either that HTML part. So we are saying dot inner text uh, the text 
of that this HTML of this ID should be the final version. The final version is having the score between 15 elderly. And when it comes to the login, the income in incoming value dot text content, and we're getting 15 elderly, 15 elderly here. But the issue is we need to mention the score. We need to show score is the score and name is name. Normally, if you're gonna speak speak as normally, what we have, what we will be doing, we can say like you know, score is this, and then name is this. You can see score is this and name is this. And I think you might don't you think that this is a lot. This is a complicated stuff. Who will do, who will be just you know doing stuff like that? Well, you don't have to actually do that because we have few you know cool things that we can do. We can use backticks instead of doing. Uh, like stuff like that, just like that. Just, uh, no, make it go away. Let's just uh, just go like that. Now, if you wanna say con you, if you wanna say constant final version is equal to, what we want to do, we need to just press the backticks that will be located on the on the top of uh, the tab or on the left of the number one on in your numpad or on below the escape key. Just click on this and now here we can add name is like that it's gonna be a string and then you can add you need to add you know dollar and the cover brackets and the dollar and cover brackets now here you can add actually add your variable we add it like that so name is actually the name and then it's like you know you're writing in a string but the thing is using the back ticks you can actually add a string inside this one this is cool. This is actually a cool thing. Let me show you. This is cool. Then we have a score is equal to dollar. This here we have a score. Let me show you. You can see Aldani. This is cool and score. While using the back text, you can also use the single quotes and the double quotes. But when using, you're making a string inside a double quotes. You can actually use the double quotes inside your string. So that's the advantage of using backticks. I will always prefer you to use backticks. And you, if while you're using backticks, you can also add the variables inside. You can actually define variables inside a string. While inside a normal string, you cannot define variables. It will just be, you know, it will just be you know, showed as you know name is equal to dollar uh, the cover brackets and name in here. It will just show like up like that. It will not actually show the value of your uh, of your variable. So this is the thing that I wanted to mention before, but I thought we will talk about this thing while we are actually dealing with the selectors. So I hope you can actually got the point. And e e while here, you only don't get the, uh, get the you know power to you know define the element to any show the elements, but you can actually do whatever you want with the element. You can change the way I send the element. Let's say name is equal to someone. While you are doing this, okay, you actually cannot. What is assignment? Token. Okay, that's a constant variable. Make it let. Okay, now we can see we have the name someone. So that means while you have inside a dollar sign, you can write JavaScript code here. And it will just show you whatever variable you have here. It will, it's, it's, you know, for the uh, variable, or we can also put the if else statement. If this happened, then show this. If this happened, then show this. Okay, so also have to mention, I want to mention you something about the if else conditions to make your if else condition a little bit more faster and a little bit more cooler. All right? And I hope you got the selector part, and I will. Well, never mind. I will add that part later on inside the if else condition. So you can see we have the name is equal to someone, and this is a cool score, and we have the score there. Well, I hope you understood this really well, because we're gonna talk about this stuff in the future a lot of more, lot more times. Well, now we have done a lot of things right now, but 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 the selector part is not done yet. We also gonna deal with the form. Well, what are we going to talk about this after this one? We will be talking about arrays, then function, then asynchronous function. We don't have a lot of things to cover, but we actually covered a lot of things already. So it's going to be easy for our journey now. Now we only already did a lot of things here. We saw how to use backticks. Let's just you know commit them out, and uh, now let's here. Let's add an input. Let's add a form. Form. That has no action, okay? It doesn't matter. Now we have an input. Input. So input type is equal, going to be text. And uh, this is input. 
So our input can have a default value or it's gonna have a placeholder uh, type something type something okay now here's the thing that you can actually use JavaScript for something cool like you're typing something inside in uh, inside your input let's suppose you're typing something you know uh, my what's it like this is saying uh, what is your name uh, type something my name is Eldani and uh, when you click on some button it will actually you know register the name as Eldani it will show it somewhere but we are not going to talk about event listener right now because I mentioned event listeners Oh, a long way after. I don't think you need to know the event listener after that much time. We will put event listener just after the selectors so that you will be up, up to date with the event listeners also. But actually, what happens? The Eldani value is being stored inside a value. Let me show you what do we mean by a value. If the, we will give something, uh, some ID to the input, that means we give the ID of name. And if I'm going to say document, oh, I'm going to say name dot uh, value. Okay, so actually, we're going to be undefined because get element by ID. We need to do like that. Inside the console, we, can, we cannot do stuff like that. Okay, so actually, the document was refreshed, that's why it happened. Uh, something. And if I'm going to say name.value. Okay, it's not about like that, like I told you before. So, while you're defining document get element by ID name dot value, so the value is going to return whatever we have inside the value. Now we have something a. We're going to show the value of something a. So this is how we can get the name of the user when he's a summit or while even if he's typing or while he, if he's doing anything cool like that. So we will be now we can see actually how we can get the value if user is typing something. We're actually going to multiply that. We can make a calculator or thing like this one. And that's gonna be a really cool stuff that we can do without a lot of tension, a lot of uh, thing like that. So, guys, that is for the that was it for the selector tutorial. In the event listener tutorial, we can we'll be entering a lot because in the event listener tutorial, we will actually make our website come live. For now, this is like a more like a dead website that doesn't do does much of a thing. But while we have event listeners, we can do a lot of things. I promise you guys, you're going to love watching the tutorials. And uh, yeah, while adding, having the headings, you can actually, like I mentioned, you can add uh, the variables, variables inside it, and uh, you can add a lot of things. You can actually add HTML with the variables, something specified like that, and you can add a blah blah stuff. And that's gonna be really cool. So I will meet you in the next. Hey guys, and welcome to this uh, another tutorial video. And uh, this in this video, we are going to learn about event listeners. Well, event listeners was always a good thing that you should be learning. But uh, I got I got a you know thing in mind that I think that I should first of all talk about the functions. But because in the event listeners we will be dealing with the functions, and I don't want to be you to be confused about you know what we actually going to do. So let's just talk about the functions. It's gonna be fun, I promise. Let's make another file. We can make it as learning function JavaScript. Now in here we're gonna connect this one to. Uh, learning functions we will be using the console this time because you need to understand JavaScript so we will not probably do a lot of things with the DOM but you can do uh, a lot of things with the DOM if you want to okay so let's talk about what actually are functions so in the function we are actually having a code that's gonna do something that we want that thing to do now let me take an example let's say we are making a uh, making game that's gonna be a function uh, function for adding the score function for checking user function for actually you know uh, 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 let's say updating a uh, score okay it's a function for registering user now we can see we have a lot a few functions here I'm just taking an example we have a few functions here now we are we will be writing some code for the registered user let's suppose we have wrote some code for the registered user and we're gonna say if the user has a you know uh, has registered in our website we just want to run this we want to we'll be writing some code for that one and we're gonna do the stuff for that or otherwise otherwise if this the the user has not run has not done something like that we are not going to do this one but the thing is let's suppose 
that we have to write all of this in the code whatever we have in the registering user we have to write it all just after you know when the everything validation is done we are gonna write this one and that will make your code much much bad because the fun while well, without defining the function somewhere else we will be writing all of the code on a single place and you know how bad that impression will be and I'm, I will be showing an example right now. now let me take an example so the example I'm going I'm taking right now is you know something like you know we are having a function uh, let's say now as let's say actually we are having something we have a uh, let a is equal to 1 and let b is equal to 2 and uh, let c is equal to uh, 3 let d is equal to 2 we have an a b c d now what we actually want to do what we actually can do right now is you know we can have a, we want a let final version is equal to we want we want to get the function a we want to get the variable a and we want to add that variable with the variable b now while we after adding the variable with a with a variable b we want to divide the, both of the variables with the variable c and after dividing the variables with the variable c we want to multiply all of the thing with the variable d so this is going to be all the code that we're going to have inside the final now we're going to console the log of our final thing we're going to have c now you see that if you want our final to be another time to you know to be run to run another time let's suppose this time we're not we're having let k is equal to 4 this time we are having the like final two is equal to we need to run we need to copy paste all of this code you can see how much hectic is being when it's writing d we need to write k and we're gonna say final two now we're getting four but if we're gonna run this thing another time with the different variables we need to actually write all of this stuff you can see we need to write all of this stuff and this is this is a small example because well in real life examples it will become much more complicated to copy paste a single thing again and again how we can simplify this thing well we actually can simplify this thing by using variable by using functions so there are types of function well what there are two types of function one is a normal function and another one is an arrow function well people mainly prefer to use arrow functions because arrow functions are the AS6 version of JavaScript that's been the latest version and arrow functions are actually you know more clean than using functions because in function you need to write the function name itself so let me show you while you're making function what huh you can just you know get the function like that so you have to write function and after writing the function you need to write you know some name for the function and that name can be uh, anything you know, let us say uh, you know for like uh, final we can have a name for the function that's being final and then here is you need to provide the arguments or the uh, patterns that it's gonna contain and then it's you know it says like an if else condition we have a curly bracket you're gonna open it like that and what do we mean by you need to have some arguments or some patterns well probably while we're going to run the function we're gonna run the function like we're actually gonna delete this one we are actually gonna run the function like you know we're actually gonna do the same thing what I did here but we're gonna do that thing inside here okay like that we're gonna do this thing inside this one well now here we need to have some patterns because actually these are the global variables so we will actually have probably have access to them but let me show you that thing real quick and instead of writing this one we can write oh the final it's not actually gonna do anything right now you can see we have undefined because we should we only should not you know uh, add the things together we actually need to return them we actually need to return them back so while we're returning something back from the using a function the return the while to value we're returning back will be uh, returned here and in the final two we actually can do this but the thing is you are we're actually not accessing the global variables variable, variables normally but what happened what happened is sometime you're not actually you know you have you're not talking a global variable you're talking to some some you're not actually you don't actually have some variables let's say you don't have any variables suppose you don't have these variables okay so now what's gonna show a is not defined 
but we want we want to have something that we can you know give to the argument and that's gonna you know work like that let's say we have four elements we have a b c d none because the we are not passing the property in, inside the file so we need to give the values the a and b will add them by themselves and the c will divide it by uh, with that and the d will actually contain will actually multiply the numbers so what we get we actually get 7.5 but why how is this possible because the one the first one is going to be equal to a and the two is going to be equal to b and the two is going to be equal to c and five is going to be equal to d it's all like you know from the left to right from the left to right that's how we assign variables and if you're not going to define d it's going to show none or undefined or if you're going to define d or you're not going to mention that here it's going to show none because you cannot multiply something by nothing it's going to show nothing but if you're not going to define two that cannot be possible because like i told you before it's not going to it's going to read the code from left to right it's going to you know ignore it's going to say like okay you have not passed the last digit then because you should have passed the last digit that's how it works now let me show you you can see like that and you have you will be returning the whatever value you're going to come back get back from the, we are running in the function we'll return back to the final two and we're considering the final two so the final two has this thing you can see now we're making the things much more easier for which of ourselves to handle and you can make this thing much more complicated now let's say we're not actually passing the number five sometimes we forgot to pass the number five something happened that user wasn't able to do pass the number five in that case what we can do we can have an equal to sign and we have a default multiply by one so by default if the number if the, no number of the no number has been passed or no no text or something nothing has been passed in, inside the org in, in, into the for the argument of d or c or b or a it's gonna have a default one it's gonna have one now let's say if i added five here it's gonna use it's gonna you know actually work on the five one but if we did not pass any arguments it's actually gonna show it's gonna actually gonna you know detect it as one so this is a thing that we need to keep in mind once so i hope you already did understand this concept and what you also can do you can probably you can just you know this is actually a perfect example and to mention another thing while you just return something you return this thing now let's say you want to return something else you want to return something with this one but the whatever the code you're going to write after return it will not work because the return actually means okay let's just take this back thing back to the you know let's just give this thing as a result to the whatever who, whoever is calling this function it will actually not work like that okay it will work no nowhere like that and it's not only your functions are not only limited to the return and the to define some value to the final to, to, to define some value to the variables but you can do a lot of more steps now what actually can we do with this thing just commit them out so the double commit okay now what we can actually do with the function let's say we have function uh, test we are having a console.log testing but the testing is not going to be shown in the browser because unless center we will not call the test itself it's not going to show now we're calling test function like that and it's going to work so that's how we can actually you know run the register or test users and we can pass it some user details like register and the name and the id as an argument and here we can update the variables that we are connected with that one we can actually send it as uh, things to the uh, server api using the uh, fetch uh, methods that we're going to explain in the future you can see we have a api integration which means fetch we will be talking about that one in the future so this is how we actually use the functions you see using the functions are not a difficult task they are much easier to use the functions so that was it for the normal functions one we're going to talk about the uh, you know async uh, we are we're going to talk about the uh, what we say we're going to talk about the arrow function right now so the problem with the functions is that there are two things first of all you need to mention the name or you need to mention the function itself and you need to mention have a name for the function you cannot add a function inside a variable normally you can see we're going to say constant something uh something is called a function test well you can see they're saying test is not defined okay it's not going to show that Let's say console.log something while we're running console.log something you can see they're actually showing us test Okay, one second. They're actually returning us the function that is test. Well, if we're gonna do like that function, they're actually returning you the function. 
they are not actually running the function or doing something with the function. So one second. Well, the actually problem is that you you have to write this function thing inside the function. You have you know inside the variable. You ha you have to you know if you wanna have some values to define something like well let's say we're returning something to the something we're gonna say return one. Now we have the return one here. Okay. It should have worked eleven as let one second so guys now we I was like I was talking about the you know uh, this kind of uh, error functions now actually the something is a function itself like it's not some variable we're not defining some variable okay let me, let me make the things much more clear like you're saying something is it called the function and the function is something you can see in here we're getting the function because something is actually a function now if you're running the function like that we will be getting 11 okay so we're actually saying something is a function. Now we actually we probably will be saying it as in constant because functions should be constants. And then in here, let's say we have we take a and b, and what we return back is we return back a plus b. Okay, we're gonna show none because we have a plus b. Then we have we're gonna give it one and two. So we're gonna have three in return because it's returning a plus b. So we have giving it uh, uh, the arguments to arguments, which is a and b. Now, what if we want to do the same thing in an arrow functions? What we will be doing? Constant arrow func is equal to. Here we need to just you know have a bracket like that, an equal to sign, and uh, is uh, should be smaller than. It's like an you know, arrow, just making the arrow, and have we should have you know curly brackets. Well, let me explain much a uh, little bit about the curly brackets. Well, there are some situations. We will be using curly brackets if you want to return, you want to make your function more than one line. So, if your function has like you know something like let uh, the incoming function, let's say we are getting a and b, I'm gonna do the same. Let a is equal to a plus one, or you can say let a plus plus, or you can say a plus plus. Or B plus plus B plus plus A plus plus. We can do them in the same way if you're using the semicolons. Then we can do like you know, return A plus B. Okay, like I told you about the semicolons, it's gonna make our thing much more easier. Now if I do like uh, console the the log arrow function, and we have one and two here. We have one and two here. What we get? We get five. Why do we get five? Because one will be converted to two and two will be converted to three that means two plus three gives us uh five and you can see we're using this uh, you know arrow this, this this bracket here because we have more than one lines so you might not think we are we are putting every single single thing in the one line but the semicolons is detected as one line it will you know cut the line right there but what if we only want to return a plus b what to do in that case let me just duplicate this thing and let me just you know uh, like that in an arrow function you can only do this thing is in the, this thing in error function if you only want to return a and b what we can do we can remove the curly brackets and we, we need to also remove the return function because it will while we have only one line it will automatically return whatever we are doing here so you can see how you know clean our function becomes now you can see like constant arrow function is equal to it having, having two arguments first of all a and b and then return this thing it will automatically return this you don't have to put any return statement if i just return a plus b whatever it was we're gonna have that here and this is another advantage of using an arrow function and let me mention another thing now let's say we only have one argument okay we only have one argument let's say we are what we are doing we have an argument and we are multiplying the argument by two using that function we're gonna say a uh multiply by two Whatever two, whatever the a is, in here we only need to give the a. Okay, we only need to give the a. So in our case, the a will be one. One twos are two. But while we only are giving one argument, we also don't have to mention the brackets outside the a. We can just you know. You can see how how clean this looks. You will not even think it's a function. You know, you see here how many things we have to write. A function, then this thing, then the bracket starting, then start. But instead, of while we are writing, you know, arrow function, just mention the a that the argument that we're getting and then the arrow function and then this statement and another thing if we're getting nothing we want to just you know 
we want to just return five back to the you know thing we want to get we are getting nothing back so we can just you know run the function empty we, whatever arguments we're going to give it it will not matter we can just run the function like this one and you cannot actually get rid of this one because it will create errors it will not think, take it as an error function because error function should have something here uh, you can blank it will work fine so this is the smallest version or you can go in you can use in an error function you can just have like you know an error function that's returning something you can have some function that's return some var variable so function it functions can make your work much more easier and uh, I promise you guys we'll be doing a good project I don't want you guys to do any projects inside the console that would be boring I know that so we will be doing projects inside the website itself so that will be much more fun fun for you and me and I hope that you got the knowledge about the arrow functions that the functions because because we will be using these arrow functions inside of our uh, event listeners and there's not much of a much uh, more about the thing that you need to know uh, about the error functions. You can put if else condition. You can have so many return statements, but the return statement should be in the if else conditions. Because if one return statement was called, your whole the code below that return statement in a function will not be read. It will be, it will be just you know ignored. Okay, so you need to just keep that in thing mind, and you need to have a return statement only if you are giving back if you if you want that function to you know have some value to give some value back to the thing or otherwise you want to have some you know register like well we're giving some uh, uh, arguments to the uh, server we're giving a name and email you don't have to return anything back you can just know just break the function we will automatically get to know that the user has been registered we can know we can say if this function has been called then that means the user has been registered then we don't have to return anything there can be condition like that like I told you before here in the condition like we we're running test uh, what is that where is that where is that okay I don't know where that did that go but you know that was a basic thing that was like you know we are having a function or we can have a uh, you know error function also uh, we can have we can it's not important to have constant but we're making the functions constant just to make sure you know that they don't get changed in the future constant test is a call to something we're going to like console the log uh, test now if we want to run test function here we can see where console the login test and this is a uh, arrow function, and this is very cool. You can see we have to run a lot of things while before we're not running any function. This arrow function is the ES6 version of JavaScript, while the arrow, while the normal functions are the ES5 version of the JavaScript. So you can see this is how we can directly run the thing. We will not be getting any return, even though if I'm gonna put you know uh, console the log when console the log this thing. Look, we're getting undefined because the text is not defined. If I want to just uh, come to log this thing, it's gonna you know return me the function. Whatever the function is there, okay? It's not gonna return me something cool. So well, yeah, that was it for the function spot. Okay, I hope you got the functions really quick, really uh, better. And now we are actually going to get started in the fun part. That means the event listeners. So I hope you guys are really excited about the event listeners. So am I? And I'm um, really, I was really you know thinking about. I'm talking about event listeners from a long time because event listeners are a good thing. Well, guys, we will be getting we will be getting started with the event listeners now. So now let me just delete this one real quick, and I'm gonna add another file and here in the JavaScript folder. I'm gonna save it as event listeners JavaScript. And at the end of this video, we will make something fun. We will make a few fun things so that you will be also you know you will get your hands a little bit inside the JavaScript thing so I will also show you a structure how to make a clean structure of your code but well, probably we're not talking about the backends right now so I don't know if that's probably needed okay, event listeners no JavaScript now with the, while we're dealing with the event listeners what are we going to have yeah first of all we're gonna have a form that's not gonna have any function I'm gonna explain the function ah I'm gonna explain the function kind of stuff while I'm, I'll be making a video about the Node JavaScript, the backend language. We'll be dealing with a lot of stuff in the Node JavaScript tutorial. That's gonna be fun also. Inside the form, we'll be having an input. Input is gonna be text, and the name is going to be nothing, and the ID is going to be name. So we can have a name, or we can put a label, and you can have this name here so that. 
going to work fine, okay. Okay, so one second, we have some issues here. Okay, we don't have an issue. Name, we got the name here. Now let's have a let's have email and uh, let's have a password. Okay, email password password and this is going to be email. Now we're gonna add a button here. Button type should be easy to call to summit. Summit. You can also use Bootstrap in this one to make the things much more better. So for now, we're not using any Bootstrap. So we're gonna use this BR tags. It's not a good practice to use BR tags, but and this is not a HTML CSS tutorial. This is just a basic tutorial. So we will not be looking at that. So we have a basic here. You know, name, email, password. We have emails. We have a password here. It's gonna be encrypted like that. So we are having the button, so that's all we need, okay? That's all we need. Now let me just talk about the how do we actually use the event listeners. Well the event listeners is you know we are having some ID. We are messing around with the ID. Let's say we have the ID name. So uh, we can just you know write the name here, but like I told you before, it will not show you the function. So I, I don't want to confuse you guys what I'm actually doing. So for now I'm gonna have a constant name is it called document dot uh, get element by id and the ID name was name okay we're getting the name of the id we're getting the email and we're getting the password also password also and we're getting the email also okay so we got the few things here email password stuff like that all right. Now, what we are actually going to do? So you're gonna do like console the log name dot value. All right. So I'm gonna do. We're gonna do this. No, do console the log the value. Like I told you, dot value is a function of the input that will show us the value of that thing. Email dot value and the password. Okay. Password dot value. Well, for now they have no value. And the values are not going to update because we're not do we are not actually doing something cool here, so these values are not going to update. But how we can make them update? Like you want to check these values after every single time something happened, or you can want to check this after every five seconds. We use set interval thing. So the set interval once we read the JavaScript code, it will not run again if the value is even updated. So we can use a set interval. Where we can uh, you know read whatever statement is given here uh, after every five seconds after every second so you can see it's been read like that if I'm gonna update it it's gonna have a new value elderly is gonna have a new value and that's gonna be elderly and this is set interval okay yeah I didn't mention set interval before but now I mentioned set interval you can, it's, it has an error function you just you know you know set interval is just like an error function that has a condition and at the end we have a comma of the statement we have how many we might have like uh for how much uh, uh after how much time you should you know you know run the statement again this should be in the milliseconds so that means 1000 means one second okay we have a set interval and we have another thing called as set timeout so that's the time will have any time let's say we have all the two seconds two two seconds just run this th just run this thing okay it's gonna run this thing all the two seconds no matter what happened okay one and two okay you realize something happened here well because it was random statement okay we have something here after two seconds it ran the statement and now it will not run it again because it's set timeout it's gonna wait for the particular time and after that time when the time goes it will run the statement once and it will not run it again but the set interval will keep running the statement again and again and again unless until you will put the break in there or unless until you will clear the set interval okay I'll show you something if you're gonna put a break that, that it will probably not matter okay you cannot break it like that but if you want to know remove the set interval what you can do you can just do like uh, set interval interval all right what the hell dot clear 
Okay, no, this not like that clear. What was that? Clear in total function. Okay, it's gonna be so just clear in total. Nope. One second, let's take a look at that. One second. Okay, guys, so I'm back. Okay. So we were talking about the set interval and in set timeout. Now we see while well, we are console the logging the values, it doesn't really show us up as anything because we don't have anything for now. But when when we'll we will be using you know the event listeners, we're gonna see how actually we are going to get the values here. So first of all, we will be running an event listener for the uh, you know variable name for the document dot get element by id name for me this element. So how do we actually do that? Let me show you. I'm gonna do it like that. I'm gonna do it like. Uh, right so now let's keep a thing clean now here first of all you need to type the name of the thing you want to have the event listener on then dot you want to have you want to type dot add event listener here you can see now you want to select uh, you know start the bracket inside the bracket you need, you need to have this string so inside the string you can see a lot of functions you have you can add both animation uh, blur can play change click uh, uh, close composition add can play so you have a lot of options but mostly what we will be taking a look at is you know just just the change the change what what will happen when we are gonna add the change uh, image listen on this one so when we will be putting a change image listen on this one whenever we do something whenever we type something we go backspace something it will run this event listener and in this event listener will have a function okay so this event listener will actually have a function the function can be defined as an arrow function. Probably we will not be using old, uh, old uh, normal function, but we will be using normal the new function. So we will be having a change event listener, and now after this string, just have a comma, and then we need to run. Our, we need to have our function. So here we have two choices: either we can have the function here itself, or we can make the function somewhere else. Like you say, constant. Uh, you know, we can say name a uh, function. Then we can have a uh, you know. Like I told you before, we can have the, the function here, we can do something like that. We can make it like console.log name, name value. okay? Now here we can have this function, we can run this function directly here. So it can save a space, you can see. Now we are typing something, it's actually not working, one second. Give me the issue, okay. So we are console.logging these stuff here. Name dot add event listener get the link by the ah oh. one second maybe I might be getting I might have been okay we're getting a lot of errors should have so it doesn't matter this is not an error okay guys. Can you see? It's actually taking the function. And also, we don't have to mention the function like this, okay? If you mention function like this, it, it, it will not work because it's not. it doesn't take function like that. Just, you know, just name the, have the name of the function and it will automatically run the function right here, okay? You can see? Now we are typing something. It will not change directly, but the input will change. But the function will only run while we are going outside of the element, like choosing another element. It actually uh, run whenever we change actually anything. So the change, what do we mean by change? Change means when we type something, we go back, there is a change. We go back in, we tap something, we go back, there is a change. So that's the change for uh, event listener, okay? We can have it, something like that. That's ha what happens when change. Now, what what if you want uh, to uh, you know update our results on basis of the user typing? We can use the input event listener in that case. So whatever we are typing is being shown in here. That means now they are listening to the events on basis of the inputs on whatever we type we go back it's gonna go back we go back we go front back front back front back you can see it's working because this is called the input event listener so 
we can we uh, can also use the email, input email listener and uh, the another one we can be we can use is called as the click event listener that means when we click on this element something is going to show up okay we click on this element something is going to show up we click back it does it will not update but when we click on this whatever value is going to have where it's going to show up you can see where are actually console the logging the value whenever we click on it so it's going to show like click click update back and click update okay so the click one is working fine we have here another mouse enter i don't i'm not sure about this one but okay we have the mouse enter one so that means the mouse enter one event listener will actually do what whenever our mouse will hover over the uh, element over the area of that element okay you can see we're getting going out coming back in the uh, value is being updated going out coming back in the value is being updating it's not only you need to have console the log the uh, value you can do literally anything you want to do while your your mouse is being hovered over that element you can do literally a lot of stuff you know so that's all about you or uh, you can say answer or you can say how mouse uh, exit maybe I'm not sure about that one no most exit is not a function so you can ch check the functions by you know having the string empty and we have close click change copy uh, the dbt main double track uh, double click and drag you have a drag over drag leave drop duration empty and did focus so the focus means when you're focusing on that one if you will not focus it will not work so well yeah you can also use the focus one I'll just mention that very quick so the focus one means when you're actually working in this area that means you know sometimes what happens the user will leave your website you know he will go work on another websites and he will actually know not will be focusing on your website so what you can do in that case you can have a focus out okay so this is a quick uh, tip for you guys like if something happened the user you know you're having some time running on your website and user is on a website is working on a website so you can see we have focus in here we're gonna have an arrow function that's gonna look like something like that and we're gonna say just we don't want to return anything we just want to say like you know also the log focused okay now we are focused in we are focused on that particular thing now we are doing something here so what actually is going to happen we are no let's say we are having the event list on our body and we are having some timer so we just want the user to be on our website on our you know okay and when he's not in our website I just console the log user left the website okay so we can pause the timer when the user has left the website just like this you can see you might have seen this before that the timer gets paused uh, when you're not on the website so that's how they do it they will just get uh, run a have an event listener on focus in and focus out and they can know when the user is on the website and when the user has left the website so that's happened with the focusing and with the focus out so i know this was a cool stuff and right and right okay so let's take a look at mm, let's, let's see a few more options that we might have here okay load load data mouse down mouse enter mouse the mouse move whenever the mouse will move around with here you can also have an event listener pause play paste if something okay so we can have also have an you know event listener for the paste and copy i, I you might have seen, saw copy before so if someone copies something you might want to show something to the user let me show you okay copy and uh, another one is the paste image listener so these are you know good things that you should probably have information about pasted copied you can see i i did the same thing i pasted and copied so uh these are really i really like these thing image listeners because they will help you a lot to make a better website well at the end all things matter is like you have a better website no one else care about your thing you can you have a point remove uh you, you can reset if someone resets the thing you can uh run some event listeners something progress uh, scroll someone scrolls 
and some select and blah blah stuff you have a lot of stuff and uh, the update we will be also using the update for summoning the you know uh, for summoning the uh, form okay probably these were the uh, things that you will be uh, using and I promise you guys you will never use anything more than this okay you might even you might use the blur might use the blur well I told you you will definitely never use this I guarantee you this one okay so just trust me on this one okay so now you can see you might have seen a lot of things that we are actually having a lot of fun here so now let's actually get to you know actual business now let me do one thing we have a name fun here Oh, I'm just you know, gonna do like that. I'm just gonna do like that. So what actually are we gonna do? We have the name, email, and password. So now let's actually be a little bit serious about this thing. Let me just do like that. Do like that. Do like that. Do like that. All right. So this all is done okay so these guys should now be here okay now let's actually you know let's actually make uh, our form work okay so once we're gonna submit the form we should have something in the console or we're gonna show something to the user back using the alert function okay we also have the alert thing it's not much of a thing I didn't mention this before before because it's shit thing hello there okay hello there and we also had another thing called as prompt message in the string okay so the prompt will have a value but we know why did I much mention these things because you know probably see hello there my user a variable of let's see let something uh, console the log something so the website will not load hello so we got undefined uh, maybe string ah yeah sorry Can just consult the log with this thing right there, or we can put it inside a value inside, inside something. Okay, you can go like. Uh, let me just show you actually how do we use the prompt before. Uh, we don't know. We don't need to use the prompt now. You can say constant. Let let value is called the prompt. And whatever the value was, we're gonna show that. And this is the worst thing. You will. You should never do this. And checking. Okay. Now we got the checking. That means the prompt return it returns some value. So it got the value inside that, and we return the value back. Never do this thing, guys. This is the best, worst thing you will ever want to do to a user by showing this thing. It looks like you know all the website. So value is not defined. Okay. So like we know now. Now let's actually make our website validates some stuff. So for validation, what we can do. We already have a form. Now, if you click on submit, you can see the website is reloading. Okay, so there are two things to fix the website from from reloading. Okay, let me mention all of the, both of them. So first thing is you can get the you can have a you know ID for the form. We're gonna say ID is equal to form ID, and here we're gonna just uh, directly go like well, like form ID dot add event. Listener, we're gonna add an event listener submit. So once someone will submit the website, submit the form. What we wanna run here? We wanna go like you know. You can go like. You can run an if else statement if name dot value smaller than. Okay, name dot value dot length is smaller than 10 it's smaller than 2 so then you need to you just have to return nothing just don't return nothing just you know 
just uh, stop the function right there it just means stop the function okay and otherwise if else if email dot value dot length is smaller than 10 then also return this in here these are like a basic validation I'm not sure if they're gonna work probably they should work and else if I'm running else if because I don't want this function to you know run if one of them got you know if one of the return statement got called so that we don't have to run them again. Otherwise, else if password dot value dot length it is smaller than two and also return. So for now we have a lot of things, but so that means by now we should be fit and fine. Now what we can do, what we can do what we can do is just you know do easy step is like console the log name Email is password is password. Okay, so this will only work once this form has been submitted. But you might realize some issue when we click on the submit. This form is actually being submitted. You know, it just got like okay. The form reloads. It doesn't matter. It doesn't care if we have entered some value in there or not. So how do we make the form actually care? I would make it you know listen to if the forms are yeah, are actually being filled or not so we can do that thing okay so we have a form id is equal to form id da -da 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 -da. we have all the things inside the form all right so we have two solutions one solution is we can give it an e so e means so here e means that the element the element will have the ID of the form the element will act is actually the form itself like the form element itself so E will be the form element itself so we can go like E dot uh, print default this is a function that will stop the form from loading on clicking submit you can see it's not reloading the form now you can just like type anything gmail.com Submit. All right. Name is object, and the email is object. Object. All right. We need to have dot value here. Sorry. Email dot value. Email is already available. Name is this. Email is this, and password is this. This is how we actually submit our form. But 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 instead of doing the e dot premium default, there's another solution. Okay. And that's not much hard you can do that also but you can do this one also so what we gonna do we're just gonna you know do like that you don't have to mention the e here or if you actually mention the e here you don't have to mention you know that thing here you can just be like clean as this one you feel me you can do something like that so now let me just come back and let me show you actually how we can do this another way that's also easy we can have an on submit here so that's gonna return false okay we're gonna have an on submit event listener here that's gonna return false warn this on the position or no whenever it's going to be called i'm gonna go like when the form will be submitted just return false so it will never return true the form will never be submitted but we will get the form data using javascript we don't care if the form has been submitted or not we're getting the data using javascript so that means we're actually dynamically doing steps we don't have to submit the formula have you know go like load I want to say like, oh man your form was blah blah stuff like that you can see the same thing it didn't load here I've committed this out and uh, well yeah this uh, this is working fine okay so that means our form has been loaded we can uh, send this to our database send this to our backend send this somewhere we have whatever we want to send the values only if the, the things are similar we can do something like else if and return if something is not similar just return okay just don't run in the Summit form, but I read, but at the end, if something is correct, just don't return to this. Okay. 
So I hope that was a clear explanation. One second, we were talking about the selectors, and probably I mentioned. Oh no, we were actually talking about the email listeners. Well, I mentioned every single thing about email listeners. I don't think there's anything else that you need to know about the email listeners. And uh, email listeners is a good topic, and I probably like it. And you should these email listeners everything that you can do uh, to you know integrate you know to chat with the form, and you can have you can check different things like. You might have an options select options inside the in inside the form that has an in some options and you, you need to see which one the user has been choose you can get that value by uh, having the dot instead of using dot value you can use the dot selected dot value that means you can get the value of the selected items so you can check documentation because these are you know these are not good these are not stuff that are worthy to be told here I just want to say I just want to clear your basic doubts about the web development and I think well related to this one to this uh, form part you are really good about good to go with this one okay now we can really make it good something cool that you might be thinking is cool and 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 guys there's not only this thing there's only this thing you don't only you cannot only you know have a mental listener like this but you can also also have a mental listener in the element itself you can know you say we have a function create a function uh, constant let's say the function name is uh, name French is equal to we're gonna have an arrow function of course and it's gonna return it's gonna go like constant the log name the value okay now the name printer we're gonna go back here on the name we're gonna have an on change function on change is equal to name printer okay I'll change this name printer function it's actually a function so okay now the HTML do give you this properties to have a function to have a email listen on the uh, on in itself on the element itself and you can just mention the name of the function and this will also make your HTML code a little bit you know more readable readable but I will probably not prefer you to do this. But you can do this, you know. I'm not saying I'm not, I don't prefer. You can do this if you think it's good. You can do this. You can have on change. You have all. You have the access to all of the, you know, on change, on submit, on installed, or oh, you can say, mm, yeah. You don't have much of a things here. You just have few, you know, on reset, on uh, play, mouse, keyboard, empty. Oh, you actually do have every single option. So well, yeah, you can also do this thing also. So it's not bad, but I don't know if it has the input one. On input, yeah, it does have the input one. Ah, it does have the on form input, on point the input. It does have that one. So you can also do this method, and it's actually really clean method to do this this stuff also. Okay, you know, instead of on chain, you can have it on input. We type without mentioning a lot of stuff inside here we just mentioned this little uh, function or you can make it a good function you can get at most out of it so it's only all up to your imagination how much you can extend yourself to you can do that that's all fine so i'm trying to tell you to notify you about the latest javascript code i'm not saying about any old ass code i'm really sorry for the language but i'm not talking about any old code so I hope you guys like this one tutorial. So next one we're gonna talk about arrays. So we're gonna learn how we add new values to arrays dynamically, and uh, how we remove values from arrays. And I think the asynchronous function. We're going to talk about the asynchronous function after the API in API integration. I'm gonna say we need to talk about the asynchronous function while talking about the API integration, which means while talking about the fetch uh, functions, fetch modules. So that will all make sense when you will uh, you know understand the basics so you are probably you're really good to go right till now so well what what will happen now i will see you in the next video because not actually next video this is a whole one video and i'm really sure about that so well let's begin with the next one okay so now we need to know about the arrays okay first of all let's do one thing let me just go up here let me just do everything like that so that it will be much easier for you to go around go around things okay now let me go in the javascript now we have learning arrays.javascript 
in here we need to get rid of these things uh learning areas okay now we are back to the area part and uh, we left it before but this time we're gonna do this stuff, some stuff in the in this part okay now let's get started with the areas so basically let's have have an array let a random array is equal to this okay this is an empty array okay now what if we have the value let value is equal to 10 we want to add the value 10 inside the array so how we can add the value 10 inside the array you might ask well you we can do that we'll make another one final array is it called what you don't have to make another value for that otherwise you can say uh, random array dot you will here you have so many methods here okay this is the all methods or uh, all the functions for the uh, array so we have concat entries fill filter find find index flat fl flat map for each index of includes join keys last index of you know these are like you know string uh, mostly are the uh, you know string things so we also have the sort one and sort one is pretty good I personally like the using the sort method I will be talking about the sort method within few uh, some in some time but we can also use that we have the pop and push so pop the pop method will actually delete that value from the array whatever we were selecting whatever index we're selecting but the and the push one will actually push uh, a new value to the thing so if you have a push and we have a function so it will accept any uh, any elements or any 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 anything like whatever you're gonna push inside it. Well, let's say we have wanna push value inside of our array, random array. Now let's console dot log our random array. Okay. So what we have here, we have here ten. Now let's console the log it before and after. We can see, you can see before we didn't have ten here, but after running the random array, we have after running the random array dot push value we have here random array we have the here 10 now if you're gonna say random array dot pop okay I'm not sure about that one second let me just console, console the log I'm, I don't know I know this one is not will not work like that so we need to have pop uh, alright so you can see we popped one of the arrays and by using dot pop it will if you you're gonna use the dot pop like this it's going to remove all of the entries and now let me show you we have value one or with the value of one and two we have pushed that we're going to push the one and two one also we want to push the value one okay now while we're using okay now while we use the pop method okay you can see the pop method will remove the latest okay, okay let me just, i can explain you this inside a page so what actually happens here you can see okay so let's say this is an array okay this is an array and we keep pushing the things inside this okay we keep pushing the things inside it okay now first of all when we put the first value that goes here and then we put the second value that goes here and this is with the help of you know with the help of the push function okay with the help of the push function but when we run the pop function what will happen it will remove the top you know top element that was recently added that was the latest word the latest one we're gonna it's gonna remove the top one only one of the elements if we're gonna run the pop one time and like you can see we have removed the elements right there now if we're gonna run it another time you can see an empty array because it also removed the another another one so you can see we had a 10 and one and two we ran the pop one method once it removed the latest one it was the last you know it removes the top most thing like here you can see the pop one or uh, remove this one it will just remove that last one and the push actually keep pushing the things inside and the pop is taking the things outside okay you know push means in pop means out okay that's all how it goes it's like a uh, bucket and that you keep pushing things in and pushing things out but you might have got an uh, idea about how do we actually push things inside the array and how do we actually uh, remove things out, out from uh, from an array Okay, now let's say we want to remove some specific parts from the, you know, uh, from these elements. So, right now we're just popping out every single thing and that doesn't make sense. Because we're removing only the top one. So now let's say we want to remove some specific things. So, what you can do, you can have a for loop. And inside the for loop, you actually have the access to the indexes. 
now we can run an if statement if the index if the element of the on this index is equal to this i just want to remove that index it's like you know you have a username in inside the uh, uh inside the array we will not actually do that because we have databases but i'm just taking an example if you have the username students and arrays and dummy json files so probably what we will we, we'll do is just you know we just remove that thing using the splice method of the random of the array so we're gonna have array method dot splice so the splice has first of all the uh re the f the number that we want to delete that means uh, at whatever index we have so for now let's say we want to delete the number uh 10 so we will like we use the for method this one we want to remove the number 10 and the here we're going to say delete count how many numbers you want to remove from zero to how much now let's say for now we only want to remove the number 10 so you can see it's removed only 10 now let's say we have 0 comma 2 that means we want to remove the uh, arrays where you know having being from is 0 to 2 that means we removed both of them now let's say we have array from 0 1 to 2 that means we're removing the index uh, the array the elements starting off from index 1 to 2 well actually there is no index on uh, 2 but that's the that doesn't matter it's not it's having the starting point and the ending point so you might have got the idea now we have a small array right here and it doesn't actually make sense to have the small array so okay one second let's do like we cannot just be we cannot be just cannot just be pushing around things like that all right so let's do one thing let's only let's only push one thing and let's say we do have something already in here okay so we have here 20 50 0 73 5 25 okay now we can see we have a lot of stuff here we have console the logging a few times so this is the first this is the first area that we have and this is the let's let's not surprise right now okay now we are pushing the value 10 to this array okay like i told you it will add when we're pushing something inside the bracket inside the bucket it will add the value at the end it will not add the at the starting point okay you need to understand this when we're adding something inside a bucket it will not add the thing in the, on the downside of the bucket it will add on the top of the bucket so that's how it works now if you run the pop method it will only remove 10 let me just show you because here this thing is more interesting random array dot pop it will just remove the topmost one it will remove the 10th okay now we got the point but i want to miss here so now if i run random uh, array dot splice I want to remove the first array with the first index so I will be removing 20 you can see the 20 was removed now let's say I want to remove uh, okay one zero one two I want to remove the zero so over here I'm putting is two to three it's gonna remove zero from the array okay One second okay, it's gonna have two to two okay we're not actually gonna have two to three because it's gonna remove uh the two and the three but in this case we only want to have uh two to two so it's gonna only remove this uh variable uh, you know look at that uh, index zero uh, index two and what we, we add so we have we have one zero one two three four five five let's say we want to remove the 424 okay we got the rid of 424 so we want to the first index the first index we can remove the first index uh, like this one so first index to remove the first index you need to mention at the zero starting from zero and going to one so that means it will end at one and this doesn't mean like uh, let me show you if you're running uh, in this it doesn't matter so okay it doesn't matter so you can see we have we're removing the two from this one but if you're going to run one and one you're going to remove 50 so the rule is for the first one you're removing for the the first one you cannot run just zero comma zero because it will not work like that so first for the first one you just have to mention zero comma one and if you want to remove any any other you know variables inside the thing what we can do we can run a uh, one comma one that's gonna remove that particular thing and i'm gonna make an uh, thing exactly thing right now so that we make your concept more clear and uh, you can actually understand that what i'm just trying to say i'm not just crazy stuff i'm not just saying some crazy stuff and now you know the splice thing now let me show you some random this sort method okay it'll actually sort your array so it'll sort your array according to 0 10 24 30 
and 55, 25. Okay, I know there's some issues. One second. Okay, compare number a and b. Okay, we can we need to have a function in there so that function is to determine the order of the elements. So it's expected to return a negative number if the first element is less than the second argument, zero if they're equal, and then positive in the value. Otherwise, if minus one. Okay, it doesn't matter. So one second, let me just check the sort method. Okay, so so okay, so for running this uh, sort method perfectly, because for now it's not uh, running perfectly, you need to give it some value. So here we will be using the arrow function. We will we we'll just need to give it the a comma b, and we'll go like a minus b. So this is how the sort method works. You just need to provide it this little bit detail. You know, just remember this as we are putting the first the you know it's just you know sorting the method, sorting the arrays is going to check the one element with the second element. And then it's gonna do what? It's gonna minus the first element, do that element with the second element, and that's it's doing something, you know, some logic running behind this one. But that's the basic code. You can see our element is array is not sorted 0, 10, 20, 50, 73, 4, 24, 5, 25. And we can run a random array dot reverse. So, what is it going to do? It's gonna reverse all the things. Reverse doesn't need any sort kind of method like that. You just need to uh, have dot reverse, and it will have the first the bigger number, then the smaller, smaller, smaller. In that inside the descending order, and this one is this one was the ascending order. The sort makes it ascending order with this function, okay? With this uh, little bit of uh, arrow function, okay? So I hope you got these basic points with the sort and uh, that one. Random array dot. Let me just take a look at that, what else we have. Sort splice and shift values log. Concat open with entries fil filter so filter also helps you to remove some specific things. Okay, what we have? We have the predicate value, index number, and the array. So it's gonna like you know filter dot filter is gonna run a kind of like a small function that's gonna filter the uh, things out of your way if you don't if you don't want them in the array. So probably the filter will actually do what? It will filter is now is is actually actually have something. Let's say it will have a number. It's gonna, we're gonna have a function. So the number will contain the element of that, you know, uh, element of the array. So filter actually removes the things if the condition is met. Well, the splice directly removes that thing. The filter will remove the thing without you running the splice by yourself. You can see like in the filter, you're going to say, uh, you can, you know, kind of like a, have a condition by itself. You can say filter the uh, the number if uh, number is greater than hundred, okay? The number number is greater than hundred. Second, so wait, one second. So probably uh, the thing I did was correct, but we need to assign it to a new variable. So uh, let filtered array is equal to this. And now I'm just console logging the filtered array. So here you can see. Okay, so if the number is greater than zero, then it's gonna filter it out. But I'm saying if the number is smaller than, just only show the numbers that are smaller than uh, this one. So you can see it's gonna keep the numbers which are smaller than hundred, and it's gonna remove all of the others. So this is a filtration. You can have your own condition. You can have different things. You can have, we can make some logic here, so it's gonna be much better for you. It's gonna be easier for you. You can see we have removed successfully all of the and uh, digits containing more than hundred. Uh, what we say, hundred uh, value. So that was the filter method, and we have random array dot. I'm just gonna take a look, a quick look. So we have another thing that's called uh, the map. So what the map actually does, the map will actually run. A, what do we say? Uh, it will actually run. You know, it's actually like for each thing. So it's gonna have. Uh, let's say we have an x, and we're gonna just console dot. Just to make sure things clear, the x, right? So the dot ma the random array dot map will actually run a loop through uh, the array. It's gonna have a function, so the function is gonna be x. And here you can also put some condition, and you can do your stuff. While in the filter dot filter, what actually happens? It just removes the thing. You only have a condition. But in the dot map, you don't have to run in loop while you're you x. You know you're dealing with the arrays using the dot map. You just have to mention you know anything like it's not about x. You can say number you can see here number okay 
and like number number is gonna we're gonna console the log the numbers i'm gonna say otherwise we can do what we can do another cool thing that you might not know about this thing okay we can say let total uh sum is equal to zero okay let's see we have total sum let's see we have something like total sum okay now we want to add or we want to add all of the numbers together and we want to get add them and save them inside the total sum uh, variable so what we're gonna do we're gonna do like total sum plus equal to number okay where plus equal to okay i uh, i didn't actually did mention the plus equal to means it will add and equal to it will add and e be equal to the thing that we are actually doing right here that we actually are adding in with this one let's console of the log total sum okay probably this is none right now because we have to mention it zero okay we have to mention it as an integer because we if we had to add a number to an undefined number it's not gonna work okay what they are showing 1102 is that true well 525 plus this 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 it all returns 102 so you can see you can do you know quick things like this it will help you a lot by using dot map you don't have to actually run a loop you can actually you know Get your elements like this and you can do like stuff like that and you know, actually can have run some if conditions if uh, the number is equal to something particular then do something particular so we can see these actually these little little functions help you a lot while you're coding in, in javascript it, you trust me or not but they do actually help you a lot so just trust me guys just keep these in these, these things in mind uh these are not much of a thing these like you know the splice the sort the reverse the filter and the map and the pop, you will not actually use the pop. You will never use the pop. I just mentioned the pop there, okay? This you never use the pop, and you're gonna use the push. <laughs> Probably you will every every time use the push. And uh, one second. All right. So I want to mention something. I thought I will be mentioning that inside the what do we say inside the ES6, but we are actually on the ES6 part. So well, let's also conclude the ES6 part right here. So what do we have in the ES6 section of the JavaScript? We have these spread operators, like I mentioned to you about these spread operators. Well, what do spread operators actually help you to do? Let me just you know, remove all of this stuff. We're not going to do any push this time. I'm just going to do like that. And a slash like. Slash. Okay. Now, let's actually deal with our stuff. That we, that we want to do here okay now let's see what actually the spread, spread operators helps us to, us to do so the spread operators will actually we talked about a lot of es6 uh, uh, properties before so i i should have actually mentioned the es6 like this one but anyway we are we are going to talk about that one so let's see spread operators now let's say i'm constantly logging my random uh, random array okay let's see what we get you see we got the array as an array we didn't got the elements what if you want the elements you want the elements to be displayed in here you want 20 50 0 233 73 525 and 424 to be displayed well what are you going to do in that case well in that case we're going to use spread operators. i mean triple dots so you can see we have all of them here you have the elements you have the access to the elements and what i actually can well, how can this thing help you in doing something particular so let me just show you let's say we have another array let another array is equal to in this array we have first of all we want okay another array so in this array we want all of the values that are inside the random array and we want few more a a values that we ha will be having here so let's say are we are we going to do like a random array uh, zero then random array one like that no you're not gonna do that you're gonna use a spread operators i mean one two three and the random array then we're gonna have 52 let's come to the log this thing another array okay we actually have uh this 52 as an another array okay my bad i don't know how that happened okay you can see we got all of the items all of the all of the you know uh indexes that we had in that previous array we don't, we don't we even didn't have to mention them like we didn't even have to call them we just have to use the spread operators these three dots does our work fine and you can see how much of a time it can save yours by just putting 
the three dots there you have to put dot 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 and random array and then you need to put the 52 or whatever you want rumble you want to be pushing there i can say we have this random array right there i'm gonna go like another array dot push on actually the push method pushing 52 inside it and you can see we have 52 inside it how how my own is like how cool is in this, is this thing don't you think it's a really cool thing well i know it's a really cool thing and uh, that's all for the es6 part you know we'll be using the spread operator spread operator actually helps you to get all of the all of the uh you know array without actually running a for loop so let me also mention the follow parts that i was talking about before so the follow part actually what happens we need to have for i is equal to zero or whatever you want to have and i should be less than your random array dot length and then we're gonna go like i plus plus it is like you know old method that we used to do and you might do this or uh, i don't know i don't think you have to do this by all after knowing the map methods and the filter methods but still if you want to do this if you have something some you're running some making some conditions that kind of stuff like that so you can just do like this and what we have here we have your console.log you can just do like console.log random array and that index so you can see where we're actually running we're having the i is equal to zero that means we can access the first index then we're saying unless until the i should not is equal to is smaller than the uh, random array dot length you just keep running it okay just keep you running the loop so we're uh, running the loop again and again and again and again so unless until we got to this point well here you can uh probably do something you know you can say like console the log random array or you can say like random array i you can also do this thing you know in uh the map one but i'm just saying uh if if i is equal to zero then what we want to do we want to go like a random array i should be equal to uh 10. all right now you can see if we actually this little code did actually what it removed the zero from this index uh, from our code and made it 10 so you can see how much big of a code this was now let me show you how we can make it much much uh, no much smaller okay using the map function like i already mentioned map but i'm still going to mention it again so random array dot map i'm going to have our first number let's say is there's an x i'm going to say if if i can if x If x is equal to zero, then x should be equal to what we say, what we say, what we say, what we say. Then one second, we have some problems here. I expected this one. Okay, my bad. We have an if condition. So in the if condition, if if condition is in a one liner condition, so we cannot do like that. I have a console the log random array we do the same stuff okay we actually if x is equal to zero then the if x is equal to zero then x should be equal to 10 once all right guys so now here we have to mention a variable that you new know, array is equal to like that call the array undefined 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 okay one second map if x is equal to 10 then the x should be equal to undefined undefined so i'm not sure about the issue if x is equal to undefined. Right, one second okay so the issue is that it's should undefined is because we need to actually return the things back to the thing. Okay. While we're running if condition, now let me show you. We're running if condition. Let me show like you know, if uh, this is the this thing has been met, like if x is equal to zero, then return ten. It will return ten for that thing. Otherwise, normally it should return x back. It will return all of the properties back. So like this, what's going to happen? Uh, we're just going to know. Uh, remove the thing uh, from. We say what we say what we say from the array so 
we, is, is, this actually uh, this method actually makes a new what we say this method actually makes a new array but if you want to actually change something inside an array itself without making a new array what we can do we can do the same thing but instead of doing that we can do like uh, random array dot for each loop like I told you before for each loop it has two things it has the element at the index but we want just the elements so you can have uh, the elements like that we want to say if e is equal to if e is equal to 0 then e should be equal to 10 new array might not be defined because we need to print random array ok one second if element is equal to 0 return 10 one second all right so if you want to actually change the value we cannot change like e is equal to this we need to define which index of the e is which index of the array it is so we also need to get the index we'll get that using i so we like if index with the element of i then replace okay one second which which we're actually going to do what so probably we are going to do a little bit more long way okay guys just bear with me okay now until now we actually learned what you can see the value has not been changed yet because I'm going to explain why the e gives us the element the element available in the value available in the array that means the 20 itself we cannot change the 20 here if we're saying if 20, if uh, e if uh, you know 0 is equal to 0 then 0 should be equal to 10 it doesn't work like that because we're in a for each loop we cannot change the values like by you know having the access to the element what we have here we are, like i told you before for the uh, for each loops i didn't mention that part we have the uh, access to the element access to the index and we have access to the array itself well yeah we have access to the array so what we can do by mentioning these three things here instead of being like e is equal to 10 we can do like a with the index of i so i will be having the index where we are right now where e is equal to zero we can do like a in the index of i wherever the e is right now so we can just you now replace that with 10 we can do the same thing in the map one also like you can see i did a, a bit long way in the map one but we can do the same way because map also gives you the property of element and index and array but in the map the problem is we need to have assign the value to a new array but in here you can do the thing inside the same array so that means well when e is equal to zero then remove one from the i and then we're gonna uh, you know actually have that value change to 10 okay now once we do this you can see we're actually beginning in the stuff you know we're actually beginning in, in the technical stuff so now once we do this what we can do okay we can uh, do one thing one more thing one second okay let me just think let me just think of something cool okay let me just say if uh, if but well, actually they have a lot of kind of like it makes sense but I was just trying to do something okay now we can you know try to delete something like, let's say we want to delete the 525 particularly if element is equal to 525 then we have the array already we have the array okay okay then we're gonna go like random array dot splice so here first of all we'll be, ha we will be having the uh, starting index whatever we want to start from so probably we will be starting from the uh, i minus one it can be the first one so let's see i and i let's see. okay we remove a few things we have to remove from, start from i minus one probably If e is equal to 525, one second, how many it removed? It removed the 425 also, okay? Oh, minus one. One second. Uh, why is it removing the 424 one also? Well, you should not remove that one. One second, guys. All right, guys, you might have noticed that we have something like this here, but once we are actually dealing with the array inside a forest loop or some, some loops, what we all have to mention, you know, Okay, we actually have to just mention the A, that means the array itself, and now here, 
we have to mention something like i minus one we have to mention that how many digits we want to you know delete after this index in our case we don't want to delete any other digits after this case okay that means it will delete it will delete none of them okay let's say we want to delete one index after this one so they will delete one one if we want to delete two indexes that it will delete two including first one first one will be included by the index itself that means first one is the 524 itself and if you want to delete two of them it's going to be removed 424 also but if you're going to say we're going to remove three of them it's not going to affect anymore because this is the starting point this is the ending point so it will start from uh the 525 it will have it started from one that and if we have one here it will remove it if we have two here this will remove 525 and 425 it by itself if i have three here it's removed 525 425 424 and the element after that one so it will be continued like that so for now we're gonna have it i comma one that means index comma one so it will remove that right there you can see we don't have 525 in our code and if we are removing 525 from our code what we can do if element Is equal to 525 a dot push 500 okay now you can see we are actually removing 525 and we are pushing 500 you can see how cool is that we actually also remove the 525 and we also push the 500 here so this uh, looks uh, pretty much clean pretty much fine we can also saw this not saw this thing at the end of our for a forest loop we can have I know Array dot salt inside the salt we already know that we have a comma b and that's going to be a minus b. That's the all sorting thing that happens. Now we just comes to the random array and it will sort the array like that. You can see. Well, guys, that was for this uh, arrays and ES6 tutorial. So I hope you already enjoyed this video and you're enjoying the video till now. And uh, and now I'm gonna go a little bit way, way higher and we're gonna talk about. Okay, I'm gonna talk about. It. Let me just close this painting. It was a good painting, to be honest. Don't save it. Now we need to go into the API integration, and we will be using Fetch API, guys. We're actually reaching there. We're actually reaching the point where you will understand every single thing. And I promise, at the end of uh, this, uh, we, uh, at the end, we will be completing every single thing. Well, we are not so much so long to be to, to, to be the success, and then. I will give you some projects. I will give you through projects so that you can do the projects and we can actually, you know, go off the duty. So now what's, what we're gonna do? Let me just first of all uncommit all of this stuff so that I can give you code and uh, there's not gonna be an issue in the spot. You might have an that there yeah, alright. Okay, perfect. learning api dot javascript okay now we are actually dealing with the apis learning api so guys this api is not you know this is the fun part of building a website because this is where we actually you know do the many the get requests the post requests but mostly we'll be dealing with the apis while we are dealing with the backend i will have and make a video about backend rails rails soon i will explain every single little detail about backend but for now we are dealing with the learning api and we are dealing with the fetch api so we're actually going to use the fetch api itself so what actually the fetch api has we have the fetch api okay we can see we have the fetch api right there it's just a normal api it's nothing cool i know right but 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 it does have a little bit b one second okay so what we're gonna do we are going to be go here and we have a fetch api so do 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 uh get api for testing on a rest api for testing so here we can see we have few apis that we can use to make a get request you can make a post request so it doesn't matter so we're going to just copy the link address 
And now here the fetch API has you can see there is showing a few things. It it will contain the URL of whatever of wherever we are just making the request to. So it will contain the URL. And then we, it will return us the promise. It will return a promise back to us. Okay. Uh, you might be a little bit confused about what do we mean by returning a promise back as? So that means that means once we are have we have you know it got to this URL. Let me just show you. It got to this URL. Here is a JSON. Okay. Here's a JSON. It will get to this URL. It will read a JSON, and it might the server might be a little bit down in this one. So. Uh, we need to wait for this, uh, you know, fetch API to do something. So we need to wait for the any response uh, further. So well, then we will use we can use the dot then promises. So dot 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 then promises actually helps us to uh, you know wait. We you know actually get the response from the uh, from whatever the fetch API got. So whatever the fetch API is getting going, here you can see we have this might be actually get request in the network section there might be something like a get request okay we actually have a get request get request okay we're actually getting in this response you can you can see in this response they're giving us this this json file okay they give us this json file so that's what we will, we will be getting here all right now here we will get a response we can call it whatever we want you know we can call response we can call it risk we can call it r and we'll use the error function for this one we'll say risk is equal to now here are two things that we can use. Either we can make it response.json, it will uh, convert the file, it will uh, accept the uh, response as a JSON, or we can have a response.txt, it will get the file as a text. Well, if you're fetching on any API or any, anything that's returning you any HTML codes, you should use .txt. Well, if you want HTML, full HTML, whole HTML, you, if you want to get the whole HTML of a website, uh, using the fetch request, using the requests, like you mean, use a login. in uh, you want to use it using the fetch. That's not a good thing, but I'm just supposing you want to do something like that. Well, use the text if you want to send uh, some response from the back end to the front end to the user, like hello. If you clicked on this, use the dot text. You don't have to use a JSON. But while you are de dealing with JSON files like this one, we have to use response to JSON method. Okay, the JSON method. So you might, be a bit, you might be a little bit confused. Like I didn't talk about the JSON yet. Well, I did not. I didn't talk about the JSON yet. Well, I didn't talk about the JSON yet only because of this thing. We are going to talk about JSON in the local storage. Okay. So guys, just don't worry about these parts yet because we're gonna cover each and every part step by step, so that you don't you don't miss anything. One second, guys. So we're using uh we're gonna gonna get the response in the response.json. I will explain to you the JSON right now. Okay, I will not explain the local storage. I will mention explain the JSON and how we actually get the JSON files in this video. So JSON is not much of a thing. Now, JSON contains a bunch of arrays, something like that. You, you can see here. There's an uh, like an array like in, uh, it's actually actually JSON thing. Wow, how I'm gonna explain this one? JSON contains a lot of stuff. Okay, it contains objects, and the objects can also contain arrays in itself. So JSON is a is a what we say. One second. So JSON actually contains uh, uh, attribute value pairs, and it can has the a uh, lot of array. It can contain a lot of arrays. So you can actually put a lot of data into JSON. You can put user login information, something, so many things like that, and you can, you know, get the things using uh, JSON. Okay, you actually get things like that, and it's pretty basic, pretty easy to do things like that. Okay, so now what we're actually gonna do? One second, guys. Okay, now once we get the response, we want to have the dot then another dot then. That means now we are actually getting the response in this dot then promise. You, you know, you do one thing, just, you know, read, you know, learn this thing uh, as a copy paster. So later on, you will understand this thing by yourself. Now you can see we have here anything. You can write your data or whatever you have, you know, you can say it. You can call it a response, but just don't call it the same as we got outside. We're going to say it has data. It's also an error function. So we're going to say console.log, whatever data we get back from the thing. Okay, what do we get here? We get that. Okay, we get an array. 
the data is empty and then meta we have few things we have the total page so you can see actually this all happens uh with the help of the fetch request you can go to the network you can remove every single thing you can refresh you can see we have fetch using the po on the post one all right so if you open this one here we can see we have got a get request we have add, have a we had a get request right there okay one second we had a get request on the on this url this the request method was get and the status code was okay there was not a problem in the status code and then we have few of the options that we can do we can use the get request or post request and the content and coding was easy that doesn't matter so the content type by default was application slash json all right so that means the application the content type was ap application slash json i mean to say the get request type was application slash json and uh, then we have few things right there and there and here and here and there and we have the origin in the preview you can actually actually check whatever response you get from that you know page the preview you can actually check the response and here it is actually the response that we got from the server back back to over here now that's all we have inside of this one inside the fetch request but 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 you can make the fetch request a little bit more better so how do we do make it a little bit more better you can uh, put the fetch request inside a function let's say we're putting the fetch request inside a function let's say constant uh getting underscore info is equal to a function this is going to be uh, no this is, this is going to be a function so i'm also going to cover the asynchronous function right there okay now you can see this is a normal function and uh, once we do go to console you can see it doesn't work right there because we need to call the function only then it's gonna work okay now you can see right now the function will this all worked perfectly all right it's always working perfectly now let's suppose that we are saving like like when we call this get info we want to have we want to get you know we want to you know whatever you can see let's suppose that we have something uh, something in this uh, array something in this function now we want to get this data we want to say save this data inside a new variable let's say let some var is equal to this data and console the log somewhere so it's not going to show us anything right now because it's going to be undefined of course here we want to define nothing so we're going to go like this data or we don't have to only even mention that okay now we are doing something like that well what we can do we can just go like we get the data and then we need to just return the data token return just return the data back to here so you can see we have undefined but 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 why do we have undefined you might ask this question well we have undefined only because the data we don't have the data yet okay we need to wait unless until we get the data because the data can take a second or a half second or a few seconds we're not sure about that and how we can be sure about what we did we are going to get back from this server like how much time is going to take all right guys so now we are getting something like that so now it's time to for us to actually use the async await functionality so now let me just explain something to you what actually happens, you can see I'm actually constantly logging the data, but we don't want to constantly log data. Okay, we're gonna go back like that. So we're gonna say data is not defined, right? Data is not defined, okay? You say data is it does data. It doesn't have to do anything else. Uh, we're just saying data is is called data, okay? Now probably you can see we have undefined. Well, the, we might ask, what's the problem? Uh, because this should return something specific. Well, yeah, it will return something. Something if we're trying to have some constant here. So we have a constant result here. And when we're calling the function, it will automatically return this thing. So we can either have the return here. Okay, it will, it will actually automatically return this. We can have a, a return like that. Return result. Okay, now we're actually returning the result that is equal to whatever value this one is having. So probably we don't have to mention the data, whatever stuff. 
So actually, what happens when we are you know allocating you know, defining uh, some variable in this fact fetch function? We have to define you know the data is equal to that data because whatever data comes in the JSON file will be stored inside it. Will become in the JSON or the text will be stored inside inside this you know result variable or whatever variable you want to have. So we're actually returning that. You can see promise pending. Well, because I told you it this uh, action is not being getting will not be getting it will not work immediately when you're running so it will return it will need to be run asynchronously so how do you run this thing asynchronously here we need to have a thing called async and here we need to mention await okay so now we're when we are mentioning async and await that means probably what we are actually doing we're mentioning async and await one second guys Okay, when we're mentioning the async and await, so asynchronous function means this will actually know let will uh, let the browser wait until unless it's gonna get any response, it's gonna run asynchronously. That means it can wait unless until any response is back. So this will make the function asynchronous. And this await function, await method is like a little small method, will actually you know let the result wait for this whatever promise you're gonna get from it. It's gonna help this result to wait for whatever result we're gonna get from here, whatever we're gonna result whatever promise or whatever you know response we're gonna get from fetch it's not directly going to allocate whatever response we get because we cannot get response that much quick we need to have async await here so that while we are having async await that means whatever request whatever thing we're getting back from the fetch will be stored in the result and we're gonna return the same thing from here to here well the problem is the, with this we're still getting a promise pending is because uh javascript runs reads the code immediately it will read the, all of the code it read let's me some error is called get info. It will not wait for actually. It will not actually wait for any you know results or response like that. So what we can do, we can just have you know an uh, undefined variable like let someone, and actually we can have call a uh, function like that, and we can have a dot then uh, option. That means we're actually asking for the dot then means like you know we actually asking for a promise because we our uh, function is returning result as an Await as in as in is an is an asynchronous function, so it can it does have a promise of dot then and dot this dot then will actually return on it, or this result. Let me show you. It's gonna have any like you know let's say it's have a res response and the sum var is equal to that response. Okay, we still have undefined because I told you this always being read uh, so quickly. So if we will have a set timeout of about one second, if you wanna read this after one second. Okay, you can see, just because of waiting for one second, ha actually got us the data. You can see by using the getting info, and this is the function. It, uh, the function uh, has been, has a uh, no promise. That means dot then. Whatever promise we got from the uh, function back is this response. This response will actually know. This actually the response is actually the result. Whatever we are returning from this asynchronous function, and then dot then will actually only work on the functions that will have an async. And this await you cannot use await unless until your function you have not added a async before your function. So we need to ha have something like that. You can see actually we're actually going somewhere. So we got the data, and that's really really good. And now we learned how to do this. Now let me show you how to make a post request. And the fetch function is not only this one. Okay, let's say. And the function, fetch function, let's say, let's find. Post API for testing. Online API testing to test your API online. Register successfully. API slash register so we're gonna copy this address and we're gonna paste it here okay now this time we're gonna have a we need to have a post request okay and in the post request what we need to give we need to give this thing to the you know what do we say to the what do we say uh, da, 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 to the server so how do you do that you do the same thing no actually you don't do the same thing you need to show you know specify the method that we're using by having a comma after the URL and you can see here we have some thing like that we have some functions like that and you need to have first of all method you need to mention the method we're using a post method so we have to mention the method as post and uh, we have also to mention the 
body. Now here we have to mention the body. Like the body will contain anything. Uh, the body has will only contain anything you know. Anything, any variable you want to con to contain. But probably if you want to have a lot, so many data, to, you want to send a lot of data to the server. What we actually do, we actually have like you know, constant test data is equal to. It is equal to that. Now we're gonna send this constant test data using the body. But we need to send it using the JSON dot stringify. I didn't um, I didn't explain to you about this uh, stringify stuff yet, right? Yeah, I'm sorry, but I will explain that thing to you right uh, after this thing. Now here we need to send while we were making a post request using fetch, we have to mention the method. We have to have we have to have a body uh, object so that it's it's gonna contain the body, and then we have to have the headers. Okay, the headers are must headers will actually you know uh, specify that what we have instead of headers so on the headers we're gonna have the content content type whatever the content type is going to be in our case it's going to be application slash json like before we saw before that in the website we're actually sending the json file right here you can say application slash json but if you're sending just a text just a normal thing and it's just a variable you can change this thing to uh, what should the content type be in case of text fetch API so if you're using the fetch I'm just gonna look at that content application slash JSON okay this is a JSON type okay you can you can use the content type as an text slash pane plain if you're just you know if you're just sending the what do we say it's just sending the text so that was easy now we have got uh, pretty fine till then now what we're gonna do I'm gonna exit this one right there we're gonna have a dot then function that's gonna have a response and we're gonna do with the response in a JSON file because they're giving us a response like this and for now, for in this case we're gonna have the response to be pasted on our website console console.log Show the data okay you can see we actually got the response that means our post request was successful and um, let me show you in the netfolk you can actually record your uh, response by clicking here okay refresh uh, we have a uh, you can see you have a fetch request that's a header with a post okay we're actually posting to uh, this URL and what we are posting with the application slash JSON is the thing and we are in the payload we're posting this thing to the URL and in the response we got this thing from with this thing back from the server and this is actually how we you know talk with the database talk with the backend so that's how we do post requests get requests send requests well now what you can do you can actually just also put the same thing like whatever response you get you can put that response is inside some variable and you can you can check if the variable is something equal to that again but you need to always make sure while you're working with fetch well, if you're working fine with fetch like this, it's all okay. You don't have to mention uh, any asynchronous function. But if you're defining any variable, if you're putting the resp you know, uh, any, if you're putting the uh, response, if you're putting the data inside any variable, you know, like I did here, so you have your function has to be asynchronous function. And I didn't mention JSON yet, and I'm pretty sure about that. I didn't did that. So one second. Okay, so guys. I guess I will meet you in a few minutes because my PC is beeping really badly. All right, guys. So now you might have already got the idea that how we can use the fetch method to post steps and get steps. Well, while you're getting anything from the you know fetch API, you actually don't have to use the you know have to mention the method or something like that. But you have to mention these things only while you're you know pay posting something to the uh database or to the you know thing like that and the headers this is must and the method is must and the body is must so i didn't talk about the json yet well now let's talk about the json what actually do i mean by json so uh, let's talk about the json yet okay so guys so I, this is me from the future i just want to mention something about the apis like while using the fetch api 
Well, the fast GPA is not only you know limited to the URLs or something like that. It can also read you know it can also read to the files that is present on your directory on your own website. Like in, like you can see right now, we don't have any file. But if you're gonna create a file, let's say name as uh, fetch me .json. Let's suppose here we have some uh, some data. Uh, first name uh second uh password okay now you start with something like that and I know it should not make sense. Okay, this is like you know, kind of like a JSON thing. So now we have the fetch me, fetch underscore me dot JSON. Now you can see we had the fetch before. Now let's make a fetch now. Here you need to type the well, wherever the address is, wherever the fetch me underscore me, me or whatever you want, whatever JSON file you want to get access to, or the text file. If you can read the data only then. Well, for now we have the fetch me now JSON uh, available on the same directory where we are right now, so it will work properly. Should work properly fine. Okay, so there's an error that uh, fetch underscore me now JSON is not found. Okay, so first of all, let's get then spawn star JSON. Okay, we will. We will uh, let me just take a look at that. Uh -huh. Okay, so fetch. Okay, so we need to go like it's in the JavaScript folder, so we need to go like slash JavaScript. Okay, so sorry, we need to. I need to mention the you know folder where it is located. It's not located in the current directory, it's located in the JavaScript folder. So we need to go inside the JavaScript folder. Inside that, we have fetch me underscore JSON dot JSON. Now let's get the data and after getting the data I'm gonna go like console.log our data alright you can see we got the data and that's really a cool thing because we actually do have the fetch on us we have actually do have the same data on uh no actually JSON file so it was kind of cool to let you guys know first dot first you can actually get the data like that you can you know access the data so Fetch is a really powerful tool with uh, API function so that you can also get, uh, you know, it's not only about fetch, you can also use uh, uh, Axios or uh, Ajax, something like that. But probably the fetch is a really clean one, and I personally like fetch one because it is good. So I would prefer you to use fetch, and you can see we can also do use get the you know, JSON file one. But I'm not sure about the text file, now let's take a look at that. Uh, random dot uh, txt. Uh, this this is testing, all right. All right, it's not JSON, it's text. So undefined, yeah, because it doesn't have any properties. Okay, so this is testing. So we can actually also get the text files, but the, the method is a little bit different. Instead of getting JSON, you get the response as a text format. So you can get like that. And yeah, you, you can get the text and you can get the JSON also. So it was pretty cool. And uh, I know that the course is going to be really happy for you and you will definitely enjoy it. So guys, I will see you in the next one. So JSON is basically like what I told you first of all the about the variables. Another one what type was JSON type. Let me say constant JSON is equal to uh, it's gonna have something that refers to nothing, okay? Something is refers to nothing, alright? Now I'm gonna log JSON. I'm gonna go and live server. Sorry, my bad. Actually, my PC was turned off, so it actually did not show well. Let's go here. You can see we have a something 
that is nothing. While we're running JSON like this, you can actually put particularly uh, JSON dot something. So that's how actually we can uh, you know refer to something inside a JSON. We can just go inside something by type by writing JSON dot something, and we have nothing. All right, uh, I I think that's pretty clean already. Otherwise, we can have JSON here. I'm gonna get this uh, JSON type here and we have some few prototypes so we, it has few things you can use the to string value the value of and uh, it has some constructor the, the constructor we're not going to talk about it that part has own uh, property we're not going to talk about that one also is prototype now to string we can convert it to string probably so now let me just do one thing let me add another thing that's going to be an array one and two and three is going to contain one, two, and three. All right. Okay, one, two, and three. Okay, we cannot uh, have something like this in JSON. We need to have, you know, array is equal to like that. All right. And inside the JSON, let me, you know, predefine this one. It looks like something like that. So we have something, and we have an array. So we have something right there, and then we have the array. And we can actually access the array by typing dot array specifically and we can exit the index of array by typing the index of the array All right we can do something like that so now the question is that can we just use json in any like if we want to put the json in anything like let me just say we're going to put double dot triple dots it's not going to work because this is not a uh, array this is the json file json can contain arrays it can contain uh, anything like that it can contain variables also let me show you that test is equal to this is test and we can have a testing and this is important to have arrays like you know you know in this form it's not important to have them in a string form you can not have them in a string it's not a mandatory part okay you just have some like something like that you can you just give the test is equal to test you can see now if I'm gonna go like testing based on the testing you can see this is test so we can actually access literally anything inside JSON so with the JSON we get few options okay we have few options while which we can do with the JSON file that is we can use either JSON the parse let me show you what it actually does when we do use JSON the parse one second JSON the parse okay now actually pause I'm gonna say JSON dot stringify all right okay stringify when we use JSON the string file, you can actually see you might notice that it actually converts the JSON inside into a string. Why we use this JSON the string file here? Because we cannot upload a JSON to a, a server. We need to convert it to a string because it's still in the JSON file, but it's right now it's in the form of string. We can add the, this the, the, the JSON the string file, and you can add this to anywhere, and it will be re still read as a JSON if we're gonna read it as JSON. Okay. Now let me. How do we clarify this thing? Okay. Let me say that string JSON is equal to that. All right. I want to We're gonna do console dot log string JSON. So what we get here? Okay, we get this JSON and string. Now let's say we want the JSON to be converted back to a JSON form. I'm gonna go like JSON back to JSON. Is it called? We need to use JSON dot. You can see we have few options here. We have parse and string if I only. We need JSON the parse, and here we're gonna add, add the JSON string JSON thing here. We're gonna go like uh, console dot log back to JSON. All right. You saw like what actually we do with JSON. We have only two things. Either we can uh, convert that to stringify, and we can parse the thing back to. We can you know use JSON the parse to convert that string into a JSON again. So yeah, we convert the JSON to stringify just to make sure that we don't get any errors. Like, if we are, we want to, you know, just pass the thing inside an, to an array, into a variable, and we and then we will later on see how we gonna uh, read the JSON inside the variable. For now, for temporary purposes, like for sending something in a, a website data, we can use like you know JSON the stringify and JSON, so we can put the JSON stringify whatever we wanna stringify. So it will just you know convert this thing in, into a string. You can you don't have to mention this thing like this. You can also you know we, if we have some kind of strings around it like that, probably it will not work like this because we have some spaces here. We just have to remove the spaces. 
I'm gonna show you. I have to remove the spaces, and then it's gonna work fine. Okay, with that. Okay, so probably the issue is. Okay, we have to remove the spaces. Okay, never mind. Uh, I'm gonna explain this thing to you like this. All right, I'm gonna do this do like that. Here, I'm gonna do like that. I'm gonna do like. I'm gonna count all of this to a string. Now we don't have to, you know, actually use this uh, string file. Okay, JSON string JSON. Okay. Now, if we just go like that, you can see we have some string like that. Now, if we say JSON the parse. Okay, we we need to remove all the spaces from here because while we parse we don't have any spaces so unexpected token add token s okay I want that they do something like this maybe they do something like this nope let's let's go back all the way and let me just check how the format is done okay so they go like do 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 Let's say we have the duplicate of this one. It's going to be called like that. Back to this instance. This one. Okay, it's a string. Okay, you can see now when we when we write JSON the parse, it actually worked. You can see that we just had your text. That means actually it's all nothing. It's all you know. It is converting the JSON into a string by using the JSON the stringify, and then later on, while after using the JSON the stringify, we are converting that to string for a contemporary time so that we can do some stuff. And after that, we can get them back inside the JSON, like in JSON form, so that we can access the objects. Otherwise, in a string form, we cannot access the objects like that. Now, when we do JSON the parse, the whatever we want to parse, or we want to convert whatever JSON the string file we want to convert into a JSON again, and then we can actually access the uh, access the elements of that. Let me just show you an example. Let's say we have dot array here and dot array here. On the first time we have undefined because there is no dot array; it's a string, and none of the time we have that dot array. So that's how it goes. I hope you understood this uh, very well. Now, uh, let's take a look at that one second learn uh, javascript uh, where we go okay we talked about the api integration we talked about the es6 we talked about the async uh, runners functions and we need to talk about the local storage okay local storage is a fun part so you will also enjoy local storage so i hope you understood the json part because we will be using low you know this thing while dealing with the local storage okay let me just do the same thing that okay learning local uh, storage dot JavaScript all right so this one is going to be pretty fun learning local storage we will be making a project on learning local uh, on the local storage so what actually is local storage local storage is located on the here on the application form and then we have local storage and then we have this so you can see there are a few local storage but that's actually nothing okay so this is where we have, we have our local storage here there will be nothing there if there's something just click here and we will delete everything from the local storage so the local storage here in the local storage let's see the user has has given the you know user has given some password that password matched your javascript you have and has a value had some uh, you had some variable that had a password, a secret key, and the user had gave some input and somebody that form and the secret key match with your you know JavaScript secret key that we don't prefer to do you to do something like that because we will be using backend for that purpose. But I'm just you know saying suppose like that something like that is going to happen. So then what are you going to do in that case? All right. So what are you going to do? Well, for that you don't want if the user is going to refresh the page, he's going to know he is going to be going to ask 
to do the login again. Otherwise, you can have a key here, and you can have it. You know, have you know, you can in the key you can say, uh, if user is logged in, and in here in the value you can have anything like you can say true. So you're gonna check whenever user comes to the website, you're gonna check if uh, the login in, uh, value is equal to true. Then what you have to do, you just have to skip that part, and you're gonna go move ahead. You don't have to let the, you won't ask the user to do this thing again. We're not. I'm not telling telling you to do something like true or false. Well, if you're making complicated website, we will not prefer you to use local storage at all because the cookies do do the thing. Because cookies can get expire, but the local storage doesn't expire. So that's the thing with the cookies and the local storage. Here are the cookies. All right. So the cookies. We'll talk about the cookies as uh, something different. Else, because but I already mentioned the cookies in my last video. That was making a login page in Node JavaScript and MySQL. So we can just watch the video. And that will be pretty fun. You can also have a, a value of false, and you can mostly what we have here is a JSON file. We have a JSON here, okay? So now let's see how do we actually access this thing. We can access this part by typing local storage L is small and S capital local storage dot. All right. We have here a few options. We have first for local storage dot clear. Local storage clear will actually clear every single thing from the local storage. So whatever we have here will be deleted. Let me just show you that right now. So we have here something random. Now we are doing logo storage dot clear. We need to have it as a function. So you can see it actually deleted every single thing from the local storage. So then we have the local storage dot uh, get item. For now we don't have any item in this one. So we we'll, if we were gonna use the local storage dot get item, it will actually ask for the key. Let's say we have item. All right. Now in the console, we should be having an error. Okay. Now get item. We I wanna say console the log. Get item. Null. All right. It showed us null because the, there is nothing like get item. But but if you're gonna store something like here, let's say we have some item. In the value there's cool thing okay now let's refresh the website so you can see we actually got the cool thing because we selected okay let me just stop recording because we actually selected uh, the key and it's gonna get the value of the key by using the local storage get item, get item whatever the name of the is the key whatever the key name is we it will show us all of the value that it has it can has multiple values it, it can be in JSON format that doesn't matter because the the text here is saved as JSON dot stringify if it's in JSON format or normally save it as normal thing as you might have understood already so you can see we got something like that now we can do like json.key now in the json.key we can have a uh, index or a number written the name of the nth lay key or null if greater than well it, this thing particularly doesn't make any sense so still say cool thing I'm not sure about this one probably never use this one cool thing is not defined Okay, so what actually happens when you use the local storage key? You're actually you not know, checking that whichever, uh, whichever you know key, ha whichever uh, key, whichever key value. This is the key value. So whichever value has, whichever key has this value, they're gonna return as the key. So we don't like sometimes you wanna find the key, you wanna get the key. So you're just gonna keep put here the value, and you're gonna get the key by itself. Let me just show you another thing. Testing a, a double A, okay? Double A. So, probably it doesn't work. Okay, one second. A key, 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 key. It doesn't work like that. So, I think it is just returns. One second, let me just think it can, what it actually gets. Index number, string, return the name of the nth key or if key slash value dot key item testing uh nope testing screen testing one item two no zero testing oh okay i i understood this one <laughs> sorry guys it took me a while so Actually, the key will, you know, it's like an array. So it's either show how what is where, 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 what is, which key, which key is where. So 
on index 0 we have testing on index 0 we have testing on index 1 index 1 we have items so it's it goes on forever we can have index 3 do 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 whatever and we can have, that means index 2 actually so we have save it as item oh it was saved as 0 you can have 0 it should do 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 do. okay now let's run over this thing again okay now everything is done now let's check uh, the uh, the set item option so the set item is actually gonna let us set the item so the set item has two things first thing it will ask for the key and second thing it will ask for the value of for the key so what you can do so in this case what you can do you just you know set the name of the key test and the comma then the value of the key uh, test one okay now if you refresh this unlimited time the uh, test one is not going to be become test two test three or test four but you can see we have this value here right now all right now what if like let's say let's suppose that you want to do some like, like that you want to add more tests to this test one in that case what are you going to do we're going to get use that dot get item option probably so for now we have the test one as a normal text so that it's going to be like true or false or something like that but what if what if we have json file what if we have an array so what are, what are we going to do in that case now let's actually without talking let's get started json is equal to uh, first json array one to four okay we have the json and if we let me show you an example if you're going to put the json right here it's, it's going to show object object so that's why we need to put the json as an stringify method we need to do like json stringify and like that it's going to have our json here right i hope you got the point already that was that's something that i was trying to explain to you before now if we're going to do console.log local storage dot get item we're gonna get the item test so the console we can see we have this test right there so we need to also parse the thing so what we can do we can do like we actually let me just make it a little bit more clean okay let me say let incoming is equal to this and the uh, console.log json.parse incoming okay now we're gonna get this thing as a JSON file. So you can see first of all we console the log the set item, but it doesn't make sense to making a console log set item because set item should not be logged in the console. It will show nothing, okay? And we don't have to set item every single time. You set it the item one time, okay? When you refresh the site, it's gonna be there forever, okay? Unless until we will not use this local storage or clear. Now you can see we have the access to the first and array stuff like that. And let's suppose, let's say we want to add something more to the JSON. What we are gonna do okay, now? Let's say here we actually going to convert this to JSON. The pass right there, okay? Let's, say, let's suppose, okay? Now we want to add something more to this JSON. And what we want to add? We want to add an array. Let new array is equal to uh, five six six five sixty seven. Okay, we're now going to go like incoming dot push. Actually, it doesn't let us push like that, but I'm still showing you. Let me just show you. It's going to throw us an error because it's not going to work. Okay, incoming dot push is not a function. While we're dealing with JSON files, we will notice that incoming dot push is not a function. So what we can do actually in this case, well, if you want to actually push something to the JSON, what are you going to do? You're going to do what I'm going to say you to do. Well, in that case, we actually need to mention this thing as an array. Okay, you're going to mention this thing as an array and you're going to mention every single thing as a JSON. And here we're going to have a no top like uh, main is something like that. Ah! Incoming dot main dot push main zero dot push probably gonna say like that. Okay, I'm gonna probably have zero. So one second. 
Let me run my brain. All oh, right. Well, we need to set the item. Main. Set the main. We have few options. Incoming dot main dot push. All right. Now, once we do incoming dot main dot push, all right. Now we can see in the main we have two arrays. The first array was this first one, okay? In the first array we had some few things. Now he's gonna make another array, alright? I know, look guys, I know it's a little bit more complicated stuff, but if you wanna add some values to the JSON, you need to do this. You need to have some, you know, main uh, object. Inside the main object, you can you can make that object, you know, defined as an array. And you can add multiple arrays inside uh, the single object, like you can see. This is the uh, object. This is the array in with index one, and then we're gonna go like a uh, comma here inside. La let me show what actually happens here. Okay, when we do the push method, what actually happens is it creates another object like this, and whatever we have inside the object is gonna like add that here. Let me just show you that. If you're gonna say we're gonna add a thing to the here JSON. If we're adding something like you know, uh, uh, first is it called? First is it called? Uh, I'm just doing a testing test, All right? Okay, now we have first is it called a test? So let me just first of all. Clear every single thing now. If you want to refresh the browser, okay. What do we have here? We have here three items. So, in the first one, we have our normal one array, and the first and the second one, we have nothing. And the third one, we have first that is test. So, actually, we don't have to mention it like that. You can just mention something you know. test okay in the second one we have test and the first one we have nothing we're just parsing we're just setting the item we're just doing the argument okay I'm just giving it empty one my bad so you can see here in the first one we have first item and in the second one we are only having the test but instead what we can have we can have another you know you have another similar thing we can have yeah huh We can have here, you know, kind of like some error, some variable, like test. And we can have array five, six, two. Now let me show you that. You can see in the first one we have something like that. We have the test, blah blah stuff like that. So one second. I know this thing might have been a little bit complicated for you guys. So what we can, what do we actually need to do? We'll actually make it just like that. Okay. So actually, guys, I'm sorry. We don't have to make it string, stringified. We have to just make it uh, just a normal object, just an object that's gonna be added in the next, you know, turn. And that means we can push unlimited, huh? Achaos. So, so here you can see we have added this thing in, inside our JSON, and here in the application you can see we have only one thing because we're setting the item before, and it happens now when we are pushing new array. Instead of a G in incoming dot new array dot push incoming is equal like that. Da -da 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 -da. Now what we can do? We can do like the set item stringify. Now in this case, we're gonna stringify the incoming because we're gonna set a new item also. Okay. I see. There's a lot of complicated code right here. You might be seeing here and there. We got there and here. Now let's do one thing. Let me just remove all of the code, okay? So all we have here is just a lot of code, so right, my bad. Now here we have this main JSON, main JSON file. So we need to put you need know, to do something like that. If you want to push, you want to add values inside this one. And what we can do, what this can be, if we make a node taker website. Now let's take take a say example. We are making a node taking website that's gonna take a notes. So what we can do. I'll, I'll make that project. Don't worry, guys. Only for you guys, we're gonna make the project. So, 
I will explain you how everything is gonna work. So for now, just bear with me. Just please understand, try to understand the basic steps because we're gonna enjoy a lot when we actually get to do some same things. All right. So now we have this constant main, blah blah stuff like that. Now we can do like, uh, let's say, uh, we wanna push something to this area. Now let's say first of all, let's say, uh, let incoming a incoming is equal to local storage dot get item. We're gonna get the item with the name of. I'm actually gonna we're gonna actually wanna set item. So that set item is gonna be not defined in anyone in anything. And is that item? And we're gonna have the JSON dot stringify main. Not actually main. We're gonna stringify JSON. All right. So it's gonna be there. All right. Is there on our page? So now what we can do right there? Now we have said that we can. Now let's say we want to push something into inside this one. So what we can, how we can push something inside that one? Well, to do this, we have to go like let incoming is equal to local store dot get item. We want to get the item of item. So we're gonna so go like do like something. Let new uh item let new value that wanna we wanna add inside our you know, JSON file we're gonna add a new uh JSON object so we're gonna have it's gonna have the first name first name is going to be Eldonia it's gonna have an array I I'm just gonna example doesn't matter okay now we have this thing now what we're gonna do we're gonna say like Incoming dot main dot push because we have a main at this one here, so we're gonna we need to go inside the main incoming and we have a, this main as an object, so we need to access the main and we can actually access access the push option because the main has the access to the you know array it main is in, actually contain the value of array, so we can actually use main dot push, so we can actually push something inside the array. And what we're gonna push, we're gonna push our new value. After pushing a new value, what we need to do, we're gonna go like local storage dot set item. We're gonna set the item, and I'm gonna do like JSON dot stringify incoming. Okay. Now we have some error here. Now let's see what's there. Read value of undefined. Incoming dot main dot push. This is console the log incoming of undefined. Okay, main dot push. All right, so 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 my bad. What we need to do? We need to convert. Okay, so actually the issue is we need to convert the incoming into an in JSON first of all because for now. This is a string, so we need to convert inside a JSON. So we can just do like you know JSON uh, dot parse. And we can do something like that, and now we can go to the application. Now we can see we have few things right there. Okay, we have this thing. Now if we, if we're gonna go like local storage dot item. I'll get item. We get the item of item. So you can see we have this item which is in the string format. So now we can do like uh, let something is equal to local store dot get item item. But we're gonna do like all of this should be converted inside the JSON dot parse. Uh, JSON dot parse. Yes, we need to convert this all into a JSON format. So now if I go like access something dot main. I'm gonna access the second index. I'm gonna access the array. And access the first index of the array. You can see we actually access this part. You can do a lot of stuff like that. Go inside, inside, inside. So that was the this it for the local storage part. There's not much of much about the local storage. That's it we can do in the local storage. So now we need to talk. We will be talking about the CSS and the attributes. All right. So 
So let me just first of all real quick do something like that. Alright, so now we're gonna add learning CSS. Okay, learning CSS JavaScript. Now we're actually gonna learn what we are gonna learn in the learning CSS part. We actually are going to learn how do we actually edit the CSS using JavaScript. Well, this is just basic, okay? This is nothing to add and I don't I didn't want to put this thing, but it's you know it's important, so we have to put this thing in there, okay? Let me say H1. This is a heading and it has a class of Header. Let's see an example, okay? There's a class of header. Now in here, we can say like let heading be equal to look or uh, local new document dot uh, query selector dot header. Okay, so if we're gonna do console the log that heading. Like I told it before, it will return something like that because we're only selecting one of the uh, elements. If we're selecting two, it's gonna select you know show like h1 dot header. All right. So that means heading has been selected. Now what you can do with the heading? You can have some options like heading dot style. But probably you're gonna have the options. You're gonna they're not gonna show you options like this one right there. Okay. So to get the options, what you have to what you can do. You have to know directly if you want to get the options right there. It will still work. Let me show you. I want to show you like heading dot style dot heading dot style dot this place is called to none. Okay, this thing still works, but the JavaScript doesn't require recognize this thing like it's something happening. So we just there's a reading this uh, heading as an and variable and I don't know if maybe in the future update they might actually get to know that we're actually exiting the style of this thing but this thing actually does work like this one but you will not recognize it now let me just work it this way we're exiting the, exiting the dot header now we can see here if you're gonna click on the if you're gonna type dot style oh okay the issue is it it is some you know you, you don't see that uh, you cannot actually uh, they actually don't let you access the style in the in the class because there can be some issues with this, that one or maybe the issue is that we are using query selector like I told you there are a lot of issues the things will still work but they will not show you in the what do we say uh, uh, in the in the normal one so you can see now well I'm just mentioning the header I'm not mentioning the dot header now you can see if I do like Adding the style, they'll actually let me do a lot of stuff. Okay, so these all are all CSS. If you know CSS, you can just put your CSS here. Now, what's the difference between putting CSS inside the CSS and the normal one? The difference is like if you have in the CSS, we can we have some like background color, but in here, instead of you know putting this uh, dash here, we need to capitalize that uh, letter that comes after the dash. Let's say background color. Background color is equal to uh, yellow. All right. Can I read properties of no? Okay, we need to have this one. This one should be H one. Okay, so you can see the background color has become yellow, and uh, that's now that's pretty much it. You can do using uh, you know this uh, uh, CSS selector. You can select something, anything using this uh, selector or whatever you can use. I will probably man make sure I will probably tell you to use the ID or use to get get, get in an elements by class name something like that you can also use this one but you saw that what was the issue so it's all up to you what you want to do so you need to check you need to see what works and what doesn't work so we have like background selector we have a lot of things line breaks background backgrounds you can have a display display is equal to none and when something happens you want to make sure the display be block and blah 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 stuff you can also change the color to yellow change the color to brown brown color to uh, red Ooh. you can see uh, that's all we can do using the CSS so here are all, all the all of the CSS properties whatever you have learned in CSS you can apply that here and you can use that by using your elements select your element selector and dot style and dot whatever we have you want to do so that was it for the part of CSS and now let's talk about the attributes 
Okay, one second. Okay, so okay, that's that's gonna be pretty much fine. We're gonna talk about the attributes now. Learning attributes. Uh, JavaScript. Here, he, he, okay, never mind. Oh, what happened? Okay, learning average to be attributes of JavaScript. Now, what attributes do I mean to say? You can see we have this heading, okay? And let me say, let Okay, let's say document dot get document dot query selector. We have the h one in this case. Now we can say has attributes. We can say get attribute. Get attribute gives you the attribute of something. Like let's say we have it has an attribute of data check. It's now a random attribute. You can put whatever, whatever. Doesn't matter. You can put something random in the in the attributes. So then you can do like get it like there, or maybe you can just like also the log it if you want to. Okay. So by using the by using the whatever selector dot get attribute and whatever attribute you want, it will return the value of the attribute. You might not realize that a lot of a lot of times, you know, in many websites they have kind of like a thing like. Uh, data check or whatever you can see, but there are no custom. That doesn't make any sense. They actually do. So you might have realized that a lot of apps that have you no know, kind of random attributes. As you can see, if we're here, I'm gonna put Eldoni is equal to whatever, and here I'm gonna say get attributes Eldoni, whatever. So you can see, we actually can do this stuff, and this is really cool stuff. You can have uh, some uh, elements. You can have something inside your custom uh, data, your custom attributes, and you can. Uh, set some values into that so that you can check on your server something that you want to check okay it does make sense like that so attributes is that it's not much of a thing so there's another thing we can do is that you can have document dot <coughs> so document query like dash one dot <coughs> dot set attribute and the set attribute will take uh, the first of all the attribute name and then the value you want to change it to. Let's see, we're going to change the uh, Albany value to someone, okay? We change this one to someone, and first of all, it was named as this. Now, after making that someone, we're going to do like console the log. Actually, we're not going to do console the log. But when it set the attribute to someone, we're going to go here. We're going to click on this one. You can see the attribute elderly is has been changed to someone. So that's how we can actually set the attribute to something. Let's say sometimes you want to have some hidden values to uh, you want to pass some hidden values to a uh, input so they can actually check something, you know, something you can do with something in the server, something in the that you want to make some logic off. So you can have set the attributes like this, you can get the attributes like this. And you can also check the if the document has attribute dot query selector h1 dot has attribute you can check which attribute you want to check if there is and it's actually going to actually going to return you through all forms let me show you that console log let me just go back to console okay so you can see true that means this attribute this element does actually have an elderly attribute now let's say elderly one false because it doesn't have elderly one attribute it only has elderly attribute so that's how we can check the if the element has the uh, attribute or, or attribute or not so uh, dot query selector. Let me just see if there's anything else. Okay, remove attribute. You can actually actually remove attribute by putting remove attribute and just tab whatever attribute you want to remove. Let's say we want to remove uh, the elderly attribute. Okay, you can see the elderly attribute has been removed successfully. Oh man. Okay, never mind. So you will not realize because this process is so fast. Okay. Now let's say we have we don't have this thing here. Oh, what I did? What? 
in the world. Okay, so we have something like that. So I'm gonna do like that. So we're gonna have. Okay, so actually we need to go live again. Well, guys, that was it for this tutorial. Probably, you can see we have the Elden header again. So we completed this playlist. We completed all of the other things. We learned attributes. We learned every single thing you need to learn throughout this course. I will be providing all the link, all the you know source code somewhere in the in down below. So now. I hope that you really enjoyed to be with me throughout all of this course and now this is the part that I will be giving you some projects and we will make some projects together. So the project we're gonna make first of all is the note taking web note taker website and this project is going to help you understand get a better understanding about JSON and get a better understanding about using the uh, local storage so you can have you can add a few you know you can add a new what we said to that uh, new notes to the local story so they don't they don't go anywhere uh, you will get better better understanding about you know removing some uh, what we say uh, removing uh, some items you know removing some particular elements from the local storage so I actually meant forgot to mention you one basic thing well I will mention you that oh while well, we're talking that course well actually I didn't I, I would have already mentioned you because I'm gonna trim this video so I would have already mentioned you that thing so guys I will see you in the project hey guys welcome to our project so now we're gonna make a project like I told you that I promised you we're gonna make this project and this is going to be an interesting project for you and me both of us so without wasting time anymore we're gonna start get started with the project uh, web development and uh, project so let me just drag it down from here to here well, there are two ways you can make files into inside your VS Code. You can just directly open your VS Code. Uh, otherwise, you can do what? You can go to CMD. Here, you can type new item, and after that, you can type the name of your item. Like that means your file. For now, we will have an index.html. All right, the new item is not defined because this is not <coughs> PowerShell. We need to open this inside of a PowerShell. Oh, this is not PowerShell. New item index.html. All right, I'm gonna have new item, and that's gonna be index. JavaScript. Actually, we have the name as you know main. JavaScript or something like that, but for now, we don't care about that thing. Let's just name it as main. JavaScript. Probably we will have a structure, but for now I'm just making up this project. It's not gonna be much more, much of a cool stuff project because we're gonna be using Bootstrap this one to make things up much more faster. Now let's say no taker uh, project. All right. Now we're gonna be using Bootstrap. So we're gonna go to get Bootstrap. And copy this real quick. I'm gonna be pasting this one inside the header, and uh, I'm gonna go like search for a navbar because navbar will be pretty cool for us. We need the search option. All right, now we need to go now. We're just gonna remove. This one and uh, this one. This one, this one, home, and this one. All right now, no ticket project and the search option. So that's how our website is gonna look. Okay, for now, one hundred. It looks like that. This should be on the right spot. So. First of all, let's make this dark. Alright, looks pretty fine. And it should happen. Alright, so this one. 
me try to do like load right. Okay, so it doesn't look, I know that. Uh, let me just try to do display flex. All right, I'm gonna go like that. Space between. Hash important. All right, oh, come on. Come on. There's only one thing I can try to do. Because I'm, I don't have a lot of time, so I'll just do like right zero person. I mean, it's left zero person. Well, that's why I hit the bootstrap. Right. One second, let me just reload this. Let me just make it position absolute. Now, hope. Right, zero person. Let me say one person. Yeah, one person will do it. Right. Perfect. We got the uh, basic things. We got these things aligned here and there. Uh, and I suspect they should be pretty much. Well, yeah, it's a pretty responsive tool. Okay, so this button doesn't work because uh, we also need to include JavaScript. Oh. Um, that doesn't look great. I don't know what the hell is this, but... <laughs> is there something nice than uh, this one? Because, uh, person... Oh, okay. That's just, that is something that I was searching for. Did I actually waste my time just fixing a few things? Oh, okay, so they, they actually don't have that stuff like that for a nav bar. Okay. So, yeah, we need to change the light to dark. Now, let's quickly make a whole project because we don't really want to waste our time on this website. So, now we're going to do what? Inside here. Uh, we wanna okay. We might have to give it a class of container and inside the container. What we wanna have first of all let's say we wanna have a uh, note taker. We wanna have a card. Alright, so hundred person. There should be no subtitle. Oh, sorry. And we're gonna add a MY5 is gonna add a little bit margin on the top. Okay, seems fine. And instead of having something like that, we're gonna have a button. We're gonna have a class of BTN and the BTN primary add note. And in here, let's have something like a uh, 
foam. All right, we need something basic. Let's type email, let's say type text. Let's say this one as a title. I got described by nothing. Alright, so we got the label and this should be leave it as a note title so the user can put the note title in there. And then we want a text area. your note note actually the note okay uh, let's see here your note and the, your note text add the note so it looks pretty fine so we can also add you know so that user cannot resize but it's okay if you resize but the resizing is not a good option while you want the good stuff because if you gonna resize then this is also gonna resize and Maybe it can create some issues, but I don't know. I think it's okay to let the user resize. Well, it's up to you, but well, for the sake of this thing, let's have a style of uh, resize none. I just don't let the user resize. Now we need to add uh, another card, okay? Now this card is going to be the, actually the no, the notes that I'm going to show down below. They're going to show that uh, what the note they have added and blah blah stuff like that. So okay, so let's go uh, outside the container. So probably we don't have to exit the container totally. We just have to exit the first card there, and this is is having a card title. Let's keep the card text and uh, let's add a button with the with a class of BTN and uh, BTN primary. Delete note. Okay, now it's not gonna be primary. It's gonna be probably danger. Maybe. Yeah. Delete note. Class MY5 and uh, let me just take a look at that if I add another one okay it's adding it down below we want this thing to be responsive so what we're gonna do do fix Okay, now it's fucking fine because deflex means deflex, and the flex has default prop uh, property of flex direction row, so it will add the, every single thing in a row. And let's have a little bit of spacing. I'm gonna say um, x of five. I'm not sure about that. Oh, that's bad. How about two? Yeah, two seems to be, seems to be fine. All right, so the car thing should be working fine if you had a multiple one. It's gonna add like that, and if we add more, oh, okay. So we need to add another thing here. Now we have a deflex here. Now let's add a 
style of flex flex wrap uh, it's gonna be wrap all right so yeah now this is gonna wrap up over cards so it's, they're gonna look pretty fine okay so the card thing is done probably Mm -mm -mm. Can we add some uh, more width of the container, like ninety percent, maybe? Yeah, important. Ah, we can't. I don't know what's the container made up of, but uh, container doesn't seem so good in this case. Oh, so well, these little things that don't have to have M Y five. That means margin of five. And my kids, I mean this one. I need to add MY5 in here, right? Uh, note description. no title all right so our front end part is done let's do our uh, I'm gonna say this also front end but let's do over this job as you understood already now we didn't give anything any properties something like that so Let's see. I'm not just going to have an ID of add note. Text area is going to have an ID of note. No title. No title and uh, add note and uh, we have a delete node option also so we can add this id we don't have to add this its id actually so probably we cannot so in the id we'll, we'll be actually doing something dynamically because we can add the pro id because when we have a lot of cards there we don't know which how to delete and which one to delete so that's why well, now let's go to main javascript we're going to create a few functions right there let's create a function for Add the notes. Uh, let's create a function for delete notes. And the function for show note, okay? And uh, show show note should be working every single time whenever we run our thing. Okay, so while we add the node, what we actually gonna do? We actually gonna get. Okay, well, let me define the variables. We actually don't have to define because. Add the node, okay. So we here we have the node title, okay. No title, add the node, okay. For running the add node, I'm gonna do like uh, I will have a event listener for this button, so I'm gonna go like add node dot ah okay okay so we have a same name with the same function with the same same name for all the IDs. So I'm gonna go like 
ah we already defined this one as a function uh, note as a variable now nah. add node function okay and let's have a add node dot add event l i s t e n e r listener of click it's gonna be a arrow function now like that now here I'm gonna say if no title and uh, note if 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 no title dot value dot length is greater than two um Oh, this is easy, easy thing to do. This we can do like it's not greater than two, and and uh, let's say r r note dot value dot length is greater. It's not greater than at least ten. Then just return. So this is the easy format you can easy thing you can do it we can just you know have an illegal check like if these two are not met or are not you know met then just return otherwise we're gonna run the thing and if you do something like this one like if you have a if statement like this you don't have to mention the curly brackets because when you're returning already the function this will not actually do anything so now whatever we read before here that means the statement was uh, proven negative so now we can do this stuff right there okay if these two didn't work, what we're gonna do, we're gonna have a node add function and it's gonna have the no title the value and it's gonna have a node the value properties. Alright, it's gonna get, have that value. And uh, in the node add function, we have actually having the title and the text and the let's see info okay in the note uh, add the note function all right so add note function we will be copying this and we're gonna paste it inside a variable uh, Note card is equal to inside the Right, we need to do something like that. Uh, maybe not. No, we need we don't have to do something like that. But for now, let's just keep it there, okay? We I will be deleting this variable right now after some time. Now, once we do something like that, okay. Now, how are we going to actually just store the notes? We're gonna store them inside a log in inside the local storage value. So we're gonna do like first of all, let's suppose right now we have something in the local storage, okay? So what we're gonna do? I'm gonna do like uh, let get uh, you know get notes is it called the local storage get item? And I'm gonna save that as notes. All right. If get notes is equal to null.
Uh. We probably wouldn't have it. We cannot do so. I don't think we have to do something like that. Um, it's not equal to null. We don't have to re return the function for only this thing. No. Is equal to null. If it's is equal to null, then we're gonna create a uh, let's say let uh, nodes object is it called an, an empty array we're gonna be pushing the nodes inside an array okay and then we're gonna say if it is called a null then um, let's just only define the node subject and the node subject should be an empty array all right uh, otherwise else if gets node Otherwise, the nodes object should be equal to get nodes. Alright, that makes sense. Well, yeah, it does make sense. Okay, now we need to have it like, you know, JSON dot parse. Well, this is because uh, inside the local storage, the JSON will be set it as a stringified in, in a stringified way. So, it's not able to parse it and convert it inside a JSON object, so it's gonna be like a normal JSON. Okay, now we have this thing. Now what we have to do when we have got the nodes from the thing, I'm gonna say let HTML is equal to do 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 Car title should be equal to title and uh, this should be equal to the info and uh, this one the button should have a on click you know image listener all right one second that's gonna run the function delete note delete note and it's gonna pass this like I told mentioned about this we can use this dot id so it will only pass the id of whatever the the note is being run on so in the distant delete note we can access the index and we can probably delete the thing all right and we need to set the id of this one oh no of this element so the id is going to be the index uh, i'm not actually the index i'm going to say one second. no okay guys so i have a very great solution to add the notes so we while adding the notes we don't have to you know uh add the html inside it okay so we have only to add the HTML inside while we are, you know, showing the note. And this trick is really great. I told you it's great. So actually, what's my solution right now? Like what I'm actually thinking, uh, we should do and how it can be done. So the thing is that I'm thinking is that you know, let's just put this thing inside here. All right. So. We have to something like that. We don't have to get the title of the info. Neither we have to pass something to this one. All right. One second, not bad. All right. So we we'll do something like that. When we add this thing, all right. So when we add add note function, we actually checking the values. So now here, what we can do, we can say let uh, upload data is equal to uh, JSON, something like that, and we can have a title. That title is going to be actually the no title the value, and we can have the text, and the text is going to be 
no dot value so probably we'll do something like that and then we're gonna do like upload data we can actually not upload data we need to have notes object dot push we're gonna push uh, the upload data to to it and now we're gonna say local storage dot set item and we're gonna set the new item that's gonna be notes all right now we do something like that and this should be pretty great good to go okay so in the show notes what actually are we going to do we're gonna we're gonna uh you know that knows we're gonna do the same thing we need to do the same thing there we need to get the thing in notes uh here now here i can just do like i don't have to you know mention it, like let HTML is equal to because I need to have a for loop. Let's say uh, for loop i is smaller than uh, notes object dot length. So notes object is actually you now kind of like an array and stuff like uh, uh, like JSON and array. It's actually an array. So now what actually are we going to do? So we have access to a lot of things like we have access to the title and we have access to the uh we have access to the title and uh, we have access uh to the what do we say uh to the text so first of all what we're gonna do we're gonna say let html oh you can just, can just copy paste all right i cannot Okay, let let HTML go like that, and uh, the ID. Yeah, well, like I was talking about the ID, we need to have it's some ID. <coughs> We're gonna have the ID. As the <coughs> index, all right? <coughs> In our case, index is I. So we're gonna have the ID as I. That means the first node is going to ha going to have the ID of zero. The second is going to have one, two, three, four, like that. Because this way we don't have to do a lot of stuff. It's gonna be pretty clean, and we can pretty much, I uh, know, do a lot of stuffs in our work actually. All right. And uh, we need to define the HTML. Uh, let HTML is equal to an empty text. Uh, probably um. Da -da 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 -da, what we can do here? What we can do here? We don't have to define HTML, but we can say html plus equal to so that means we're just adding this value inside the html variable so once the work is done here we cannot have the directly title we need to have node object uh i dot title okay the same with inf uh, info what we have here i dot text this dot id okay now once we are outside the for loop, what we need to do, we need to access this one. Um let's give it some ID. Notes container, alright? Let's go back. Notes container dot inner HTML plus equal to HTML. We're gonna add this HTML inside the notes container all right not actually plus equal to we just have to make it equal to like that because it's gonna be pretty fine like that show notes are we should I should run in the show note before we, yeah mm. let's have something uh, perfect if uh, HTML It's not equal to empty string. Then we will be doing something like that. Otherwise, inner HTML should be equal to no notes added add some notes you should add this like you know as an inner text but 
we're adding this in as an HTML because just in case if the HTML was still there, the HTML is the old HTML. So we need to have make sure to remove that one also. So that's why we're doing this. No notes added, add some notes. And uh let me look at that. Do, 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 do. We have to do right there. Okay, we have to actually we have to do any, any pushing like that. So um No no to do like that. Estimate is equal to Well, I suspect this is okay. I'm not sure about that one. Uh, we got any error in the console? No we didn't we did not. When the application What the hell is that? Okay, I just have an old array. I have testing my uh, first note add note all right side out of my studio but only one present oh 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 so guys if you are in the side item we do have not uh, added the value the value is notes object and uh, let's see testing testing add note object object all right object object why is that object object no title no title dot value oh I thought this is going to work, but it did not work out like that. Okay, here in the here in the you know object well, the, the thing is in the object in the when we're adding something in the object, we actually need you know some specific variable. We cannot just you know have like okay, I want to define the variable, but you can find it by yourself. It doesn't care here in this case. JavaScript doesn't care. So let's do one thing. Let's say constant no title is equal to document I'll get element by ID no title and constant note is equal to document dot get element what the hell is a dot get animation okay and when we will be adding the note at the end what we want to do we want to show the notes again so that it's going to update the things Okay, object, object. I don't know what's the issue. Uh, let's go to console. Let's take an O in the JSON position Notes. One second. Um, why is it, are we adding object object here only? This one is working fine, but the dot value is not working fine like that. So we just we'll just remove the dot value like from there and add it here instead. All right, let's go back there. Let's clear old one. Okay, object object. What the hell, man? Yeah, uh, okay, so the text title. I 
be the note idle. Okay, I got the thing. Let me just go back all the way. I know what's the issue. Okay, we need to add this in a stringified method, man. Alright? Let's see, let's see now. Testing. Testing, testing, testing. Okay, we have the title, we have this stuff like that. But. Why don't we have it here? Alright, so something. So this is not right, alright. Reading push undefined. It's undefined. Where? 17. Get notes. Um. Okay, one second, what's the issue? When you're parsing the value, Testing right now. Test dot test dot push. I'm next to the identifier. I'm not sure about that one. But let's go back to OBS code and uh, Oh, for real. We are just you now having a condition here. We need to have the values equal to that. Okay, come on, man. Condition. Okay, it's actually adding a few more things here. But we are still not showing that, you know, in this area, right? So, show note is actually not working. Alright. No, show note like that. And the show note that's here. Cannot access show note before initialization. Alright, I want to check it Let me see what's the issue. An access show note before installation. And then, yeah. Trying to read properties of undefined reading length. Oh. 
Same mistake. Alright, now we have something here. That's a lot of difference. Otherwise, we're gonna have here. Well, let me just remove the testing one. Is instead of MI5, let's have uh, like you know. Let's have nothing in here. Let's have a. Nose container is not defined. Alright, when I remove the nose. Oh, Alright, sorry. No taker, and this is going to have a class of my three should be fine. Oh, I see what's the issue. I have that equal to this. Let's say plus no taker. Ah. Uh, It's a deflex all the way. Maybe we need to do something like that. No ticker. Okay, so cards have MY. So I'm going to have a little bit of, you know, top margin. And my three should be fine. And this should be take center. Yep. Looks pretty fine to me. If I clear the values, refresh. No notes added, add some notes. Well yeah. We can make it H1. I'm going to say you can make it as 3 also. Maybe as 5. Color should be silver and uh, how about that? So now we can probably make it S3, add some notes. Ah, I see the issue now. Would I have to do plus now? It's adding perfectly. Unlimited ones. Now we can add some different, you know, height bytes by your own self. You can add MY1. Well, I'm not having a perfect tutorial here, but never mind. I'm going to add a MY1 uh, to the cards. So let's say we have a deflex. And uh, in the style, we have wrap. And we, we end up here. We have probably MY1. Something like that is going to work fine. Now let's work on the de delete portion. On the delete one, we're gonna have the same things. After that, we're gonna have a for loop i and array should be notes underscore objects. And instead of having okay, so this is going to take the id, like I mentioned before. We're gonna have the id, and uh, now what we act actually are going to do. In the here objects dot length. Now here actually we're gonna delete the thing from here. Okay. Let's see if uh, notes objects. Okay. If I is it called ID, then I will do 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 do
we need to delete that one. The nearest object dots push dot splice the index including one. Not actually including one. We need to delete the index. One means only that index. Okay. Need to put this inside something like that because we also want to return it after the thing is done only if ID is called like that. And we can also do some easier way as we are known about the latest techniques. We can do like notes object dot for each loop. We we'll get the element and I. Da -da 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 -da. Here we also can could have done that, and we are going to do that because it's pretty pretty easy to do something like that. See something like this. A, B, C, D, E. We roll everything that I see. We can do like E dot title and the E dot text, and here we can pretty much that's all we have to do. And I suspect the delete note one should be working fine. I'm not sure. Okay, we have some issues. E is not defined. 37. Ah, E is not defined. What do you mean by E is not defined? E means element, right? Illegal constructor. It's not a constructor, it's just element, right? Element is not defined. Oh my bad. Oh, while we are passing two uh, th two arguments, we need to put them inside bracket. Oh, right. now it should be fine. We have a lot of things here. Now let's try try deleting some of them. And after deletion is done. Delete or no, just do 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 This already we will console the log real quick inside. Inside, so we are inside actually, but it didn't delete anything. So let's see the issue. Um, nodes object is an array. It should be an array. No splice. Why doesn't we? Why don't we have access to the array components? All right, one second. Let me just think about that one. What we can do right there. When we're trying to delete some notes, so all right. So what we have to do is that um ah I don't think we have to run any uh we don't have to run any loops. So we don't have to also give have any if condition. The thing is simple. The thing is that we know that the ID is equal to whatever the index is okay we have said it, it like that we have said it, it has an index so 
we can just do like you know remove that ID that means the index uh, from our here nodes and once we do that we need to set the new item set item as nodes new item is going to be nodes object right let's see about that uh-huh 27 show note And if this bar, oh. okay, we do have some issues. It all became object, object. Why? Ah, we need to add it like this. No stringify. My bad. I messed up all of them. Test one, test me one one, test two, uh, test three, three 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 three. Now let me delete this three 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 one. All right, so it actually deleted, uh, probably the long wrong one. It deleted the three 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 one. Which index was not? One second. Uh huh. So probably should I remove the index? But what I did. Uh, 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 uh. All right. So it's not deleting what I want. Is to delete. If I click delete here, let's see the issue. ID is equal to zero and ID is equal to one. All right. Yeah, that's right. So now, what's the issue? If I click delete here, I should delete the I with element item with the ID of one. Uh, test four. It actually did not delete that one. ID all right it's not showing me the ID okay so the issue can be it's doing something wrong and something wrong means it's deleting the first element every single time I click on it the ID is not being passed properly and uh, Let's see why not. Mm. Okay, we don't have to give the ID to the div, we have to give the ID to the button. Alright? Testing one. Testing two. Testing four. Let's delete the testing one. Is the only one? Yeah. Let's delete testing four. Testing four. All right. It's actually deleting the stuff now. You can add more notes. You can delete the notes. And if you refresh, refresh the website, it's still they're still gonna be there. Delete. Delete. Add. Delete. All right. So that was is it for this tutorial. And I hope you will have probably enjoyed a lot by watching this video because yeah, I know it's pretty fun watching the tutorials online so guys that what is for that was it for this video and let me just see the about this thing cannot access note show note before initialization okay probably we're getting the issue because we're running it as an arrow function but if we are gonna make it, I show this show note. Let me just show you. We can actually run this it like that. If we're gonna make it 
a normal function. Everything, everything is gonna run perfectly fine. Okay, I actually delete the things. 32, 3 to 1, 3 to 1, 32. And you can see everything is working fine. So you just have to make it like function like this one. Because like this, we're defining this as a variable in the con in the function as in a uh, as a variable, and the variable is having a function. So what I'm going to call the variable, it runs that function. We're defining it like that, but you can make it like a normal function, and it's going to work perfectly fine. Well, I hope guys you already liked this video. It was about a six-hour video, all about JavaScript. So, well, it was a great time that I spent with you guys. I will see you soon in the future while making more tutorial videos. If you like this so that would be pretty much great just like the video subscribe share this video as much as possible comment down below how we like this series and i will be making more videos in the future bye bye and i will see you okay so i actually forgot to add uh, the search functionality now let me add the search functionality actually so in here we have option for search and that's have blah blah stuff like that now let's add the uh, this is the input for the search actually i'm gonna have an id of uh, a search in it and in here what we are gonna actually do we're gonna go like search dot add email listener of input one of our user will type something it's gonna have like that and we're gonna have an error function what we actually want to search is the <coughs> is the node title so what are we actually gonna do? Going to do for the note getting the node title is that we need to actually find the node title. So all right. So now what we have to do is that in the search option here in the cards we're gonna put us uh, another thing called as node card. So let's add an additional class here. And to actually I didn't mention this point before, but if you wanna you know access some of the ar some array. Let's say we are using get element get elements by class name, and to access that element like inside of for each loop, you have to actually use array dot from that array name like the elements get element by class name that name, and then you need to write dot for each. Let me mention. Let me show you that actually what we are going to do. Let's let note card is it called the document dot get elements by class name. So this actually is an array. Okay. So it actually is an array. We want to say node card. Well, now we need to use array dot from because if you're gonna not gonna use it, they actually are not going to going to get the array. So actually, when you're actually you know doing something inside a DOM, and if you want to run a for each loop, you can do this thing normally without running a for each loop, without while running a normal loop. But when you're actually running the for each loop, you need to use the array dot from and whatever you want to access inside the loop for now we want to access the node card so we're going to use the node card and then we're going to actually have the for each loop okay and for each loop inside the for each loop what we actually want there so we only we want the elements and inside the elements we want something like that so now here what you actually want to do is we need to like let me show you something if you're going to console the log the element i'm going to come back here so I was doing some testing actually. So test. All right. So I'm doing some testing. You can see when, now when I press test, it showed me a lot of elements down below because I have three elements. So I press uh, type four things. It showed me the elements a lot of times. Well. Now what actually is we are going to do is that you can see we have a lot of elements down here. That means we do have access to this element, but we actually don't want the element card itself. We just want the a paragraph, actually the title. So that's H5. We want to get the access to the title. Let's suppose we are searching for the in you know as for the title. So how do we actually do that? Well, I'm not sure about that one, but probably. Uh, that should be. Um, let's go back here. What we what we actually gonna do? <coughs> we're gonna do let. 
uh, title is equal to e dot. So before we were doing document dot something get class elements blah, blah blah stuff like that. But right now we don't have to, we don't have to do any class elements or something like that. One sec. Okay, so actually now we need to only get the classes or whatever we want to access the element. We only want to get that one, you know, the elements one. We don't want to get uh, no something uh, that the element doesn't have. Let's say we are doing actually you no know, document dot get element by class name or uh, document dot query selector. But right now we only want the query selector to be applied for this element. So we have the element now. What we actually are gonna do? Let me show you that real quick. Uh, what do we have here? We need to get access to the title, okay? To the class title. Uh, I'll get element dot query selector. Uh, dot class title. All right. Bidibidibidim bum bum bum. Okay, where's well, some title? Is equal to like that? So now, actually, we want to get the dot inner text. All right. Inner text. All right. Now we're gonna say we need to use the dot includes. We need to say if the value whatever the search input value we're uh, searching for okay we also need to get the value uh, let's get get the value let's say search let value let uh, text is equal to search dot value right okay now we can say if if not this is a quick statement we're saying if if text is equal to and uh, title so this actually means that if not if it doesn't equal to that just return we don't want to do anything but if it is what we want to do no actually we don't want to return anything okay we don't need the statement then because well if the search is not equal to uh, anything like that what we want to do we want uh if it's equal to like that uh let's say where did I go? One second. Okay, one second. All right. So what we actually want to do, if it's equal to like that, we want that element dot style. Okay, dot style dot display to be equal to block. And otherwise, if it's not equal to that, we want that element style dot display to be equal to none. So this is a for each loop, so it will run. Uh, throughout all of the elements specifically so it's gonna make them display none if they're the value is not equal to the text and uh, it's gonna make the display block if they're equal to like that okay so now let's go back here let's have something in the search so we're we gonna do test okay, cannot read reading uh, inner text Cannot read properties of null. So actually, this is some something. Okay, we have the ID search. Let me just come back here. Okay, search the value. Search dot value. Let me actually get the document. Okay. Get elements by ID. Test. Test. We are having some issues right there, so one second. All right, guys. All right, guys. Now we need to do a few things. First of all, we're gonna make it uh, a text is. In our text, and now here we're gonna say it as H5 because we're using query selector, and we only have H5 for you can see here only for the titles, so we're gonna have it as H5. And uh, another thing is that we don't have to actually have to do like that and say like search dot value, it will work fine still. And these things are perfect, and you can see you will uh, notice that actually the the display is not going none because we have a deflex that means it will have a property of flex with an important tag and if we're gonna put hash important in here it's not gonna work as we are in JavaScript so what we have to do in let's go back here all right now let's go back here we have a deflex property here 
uh, let's just remove the deflex and in the style let's have display flex all right as per my assumption this should be working fine hey okay all right so we're doing something like that and we also can do something like if text uh, title, title. What do we mean by title? If title dot, you can see if title dot includes. If the title includes the text, then we just want to get the results. And like this, if you're gonna type only one a, one letter or one character, you're gonna get the you know result actually. You can see hey, if I type T, uh, check. Check 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 check. If I type C, H, okay, C H E C K, it's gonna work fine. Okay, now you can see everything is working fine, and that's what we want, right? And we have here a display block, and we don't want the display to be block. We want the display to be flex, actually. Test. Check. Hey. Okay, we also have a hey here. <laughs> That's why, okay. You can actually do this one. It's gonna remove that one. So, well, guys, probably that was for this tutorial, and that was it for this video.